Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on your YouTube, join our cult. Hello and welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. You're listening to us at Tones of Mafu, his friend Jack, and his associate, Mr. Tom Campbell. I, I, why did I get a bigger intro than Jack? Have you guys it's, had a full with no, one just, functioning leg? <laughs> just standard procedure on this podcast, I'm afraid, Tom. Oh, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm off the subs bench, which really I should be staying on the yeah. subs bench, to be honest. Are we going to explain? Because I was there um, when this happened. Uh, I, I, do you know what? Should we, do we explain it now or do we get straight into the wrestling news? Go on then. Go on then. We can always talk we can, about it we, later. Can, we, we can, can duck back about, to yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll duck back to but this. But Tom's injured, unfortunately. Yes, yes. Well, if you're part watching... of the wrestling news with the rumble and everything big, else. Big and then wrestling. It's Tom's... Yeah, you know, we'll end with Massive that. Massive wrestling news. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, you may notice that I have a, a wooden cane with me today, <laughs> which I will explain in a little bit. It looks a bit phallic, I've realized, when I have it there. So that's a nice little treat. It didn't until you said that, yeah. Tom. Thank and you. now it does. Please let me know. Setting the tone, as always. <laughs> and Jack... My friend and associate, how are you doing, Paul? I'm not too bad, Matthew. I'm not too bad. Not a lot to report, really. Um, no. How are you? How are you? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Keep having this recurring dream, actually. Do you? Yeah, and it's weird. Like it's it's. I'm always at school or uni, and I've got exams coming up. Yeah. More school probably because in my head there's a few subjects. I'm doing A levels, and I'm I'm ready for like two of them, but then there's one that I just know nothing about, and in my head I know it's like three months away. But I've got like a year's worth of stuff to cram in and I don't know anything about it. And I get really stressed and then I wake up and really feel relieved that it's not real. I don't know what it's about. I keep, it makes me think that there's a task Ooh. I've forgotten to do and then I'm just like, yeah. With how busy you are, all the other things you have to cram in, all the different shows, wrestlers and periods of wrestling you have to cover, it's not surprising you have this. Maybe, but... Sorry to be the bearer of bad news though. I'm older than you. I still have those dreams. Oh, good. They don't go away. Okay, fair enough. Well, how are you anyway? I had a dream last night where I was getting ready for my exam. And you know what? I've done two of them. All right, whatever. Uh, <laughs> grand, with my weighted blanket, it's helping me. <gasps> me and my new tag team partner. It's not going to be like uh, Michael's. Oh, sorry, go on. I haven't talked about your weighted blanket yet. It's, it's not that. It's not like a... I'm really intrigued. We have to talk I'm, about I'm the really weighted blanket. I'm really intrigued by your weighted blanket. But I've been putting it on, I had a duvet, and then put that on top. And it wasn't quite working that well. Now I'm just doing that, and then put a duvet on top of that. Oh, it's great. I'm a human lasagna. <laughs> it's really helping with sleep now. <laughs> okay. Too much sleep, so I woke up a bit late because I just don't want to get up. But no, so happy. That's good. Con- Conquering sleep like Alexandria. Alexander, no. Alexander? Alexander was named the city. Alexander, can whatever. <laughs> See how it's awake now. I am. I don't know what. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a strong start, this is. It certainly is. Let's go for a strong news while we're at okay. it. Okay. Lots of news. I may or may not have heard about, yeah. Uh, there goes the money. <laughs> oh. So we start off the week with. We'll get, the, we'll get the Rumble a bit later on, the week of wrestling, but the Rumble happened. Uh, some surprise stars, some people want to see, some people we didn't want to see. Yes, it, it, it's great as is having Tom here. God, it would been great seeing Salty Ross and then <laughs> Happy oh, Ross. Oh, yeah, that's because true. Because Man returned and he was his own, uh, you know, God, I'm in my 40s, sweating like a knackered fridge. Uh, I'm going to take on Matt Riddle. Great. Cool. Yeah. That's exactly how I remember you being. That's why we like you. <laughs> and then it was the, we saw... Like the next day, report Shane McMahon versus Lashley at WrestleMania, perhaps. Uh, Shane McMahon doing something else at WrestleMania. Rollins. Blah, blah, blah. Rollins is one, yeah. And then the next day, unconfirmed reports via Ringside News. It was Ringside News. It's suddenly yeah. become a source. Yeah, yeah. I thought they weren't. Are they just like leveled up now? The, apparently, yeah. They've, they've, um, They've they've been promoted. I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah. John Ross. I was even like, I went, I'm not trusting this. And then John Ross was like, No, no, I've heard it's not been confirmed yet. But Ringside News has been right in the past. And then he went, Yeah, that's been confirmed. Went, I'm assuming mm-hmm. that what happened was, yeah, Ringside I, News reported it, and then like the traditionally more reputable ones, like Meltzer and Sean Ross Sapp and stuff, then went, What? And then rang up and were like, Oh, okay, then fair enough. Mm. So wow. I think that's yeah. the big news, to be honest with you. But, but there was uh, first reports that Shane had heat. That's how it started. Everyone mm-hmm. backstage was annoyed with the way he handled the rumble, and that he was. Trying to like get himself over to the rumble. rumble, and yeah, literally how he handled people's faces in the rumble. And then I thought, oh well, yeah, I mean yeah, that makes sense. But then I didn't believe it at first either when it, the news that he'd been let go or released or whatever. He was never on a contract, so 
It's like he's just been, ah, get out. Oh. It's like Judge Death from Judge Death. Ah, fool, you cannot release who was not contracted. <laughs> <laughs> he's been involved in the Rumble for the past two years behind the scenes. And uh, he's won a lot of friendship because of the like the cons- the, the consulting stuff he's done. Uh, but PW Insider uh, and Pro Wrestling Torch both said, like, creatively, he's a little bit spent. And a lot of ideas, he gets they get laughed about behind his back. <laughs> Um, so well, that's a good start to, to what's going down. <laughs> uh, and then, but this year, because of a lack of certain key players, he was put into a more senior role in putting together the Rumble. And this was like, right, this is my time to shine. Right, hear me out, lads. What if I am in the final four? What if I go toe to toe with Riddle? Yeah. What if I k- take two super kicks from Kevin Owens and then chuck him out? Yeah. And and, and so all the, the, the stories from different sources all kind of have the same message in mm. them that Shane was running a big part of the Rumble but was more concerned with like how am I going to get me over in yeah. the Rumble yeah. uh, he was belittling some of the other producers that were working on the Rumble Ooh. Uh, Jamie Noble in particular was one I that kept saw getting that. named apparently yeah. buried Jamie Noble yeah. out loud well, you can't do that Jamie he, Noble he, they, Vince had kind of instructions given to producers on what to do in the Rumble and Shane just kind of kept pulling the McMahon card according to sources saying no I want to do this and I'm a McMahon and that's what I want to do and so it was um, uh, there was some uh, frustration because Bad Bunny's role in the Rumble kept changing be- to sort of befit what Shane wanted to yes. do, uh, which is why we end up just getting this weird final four. So very good point on that Twitter or Reddit. I can't remember what it was, but someone was saying like, well, fair enough, you've got trained wrestlers who are trained to be able to adapt to situations. And even though Bad Bunny's very, very impressive, you don't want to mess about with a guest star. No. You want them to have a very clearly defined plan. On the few occasions when I've had to do something in the ring, and I'm sure it's the same with you, you've got a very, very specific order of how things are going to go. I like that to and be. If, it, with, if with half an hour to go, someone had come up and gone, we're changing this all around, I'd have been, I'd have been totally lost. I wouldn't mm. know what to do. So there's a lot about Bunny, but it's not ideal, is it? Really? It's not. It's not. And um, one of the funnier quotes that came from this, I think it was The Torch, um, they said, uh, Shane, according to sources, Shane McMahon was willing to put Brock Lesnar over. <laughs> so that's where... That's very, gen- very kind of him. That's very, very kind. That's where it's at with him. Um, he was going to be part of the Raw roster. There was going to be a push for him for Mania. <laughs> pa- plans were pitched for him to be in the Elimination Chamber. And he didn't like the plans that were set out. And then Vince just went on... Vince went earlier in the week just went, right, you know what? Forget it. Just just go away. We don't want you anymore. All like Because he'd been such a nuisance. They went, you know what? Forget it. Just just get gone. And we don't know if he'll ever be back again. And like Vamp oh, in God, Metal Gear Solid 2, Nick Khan carves another tally into his chest. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at you. Cheers. That's yeah. good, that yeah. is, mate. Yeah, thank 10 you. on 10. See, I wouldn't have, would have minded seeing him in the Elimination Chamber if they'd left him there. <laughs> but I guess we'll have to figure out something else for him. It's hard to jump off the top of the chamber. When oh, he would have tried. <laughs> he would have certainly tried. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine, I want, it, you can definitely tell he's definitely gone because already the PR machine is like, Shane was hard to work with. Shane had crazy ideas. Mm. Shane belittled Jamie Noble. You know, that's the full-on machine is taking place. Yeah. Thanks, Shane. It's weird because back in the day, Shane was really good at being cowardly. And running away and falling off high things. That was the things. appeal. He was a guy yeah. who couldn't wrestle. Shane's one of the best runners away in yeah. all of wrestling. I remember The Rock chasing him around yeah, the ring yeah, yeah. and Shane's proper like... And he had a great like out of nowhere flying chair shot and stuff. Yeah. But he was never like a hard guy. And then in real life he became MMA trained or whatever. And now he thinks he should be that in wrestling. Like the man, the myth. You know, Shane you know, McMahon. The first time like... I noticed like, uh-oh, was when he beat up Randy Orton mm. <laughs> on the ramp. No, but and it, they had the locker room on the front, and it's like, oh, no, ooh, Randy, ooh, you shouldn't be doing that. Only one man in this town, <laughs> Sheriff Shane, is here. Yeah, like, wait, what? Mm. It's, uh, so Adam said something. We did the news video um, yesterday on this about the the the, the releasing of Shane. And um, one of the things that he said was, like, like the whole idea of the Shane McMahon character is like he thinks he's the best in the world and he's clearly not and that's the joke and what's happened is it seems Shane McMahon kind of started believing his own press releases and went (laughs) well yeah I am the best in the world so I should be of course I should be booked to be competitive against AJ Styles you know (laughs) like of course I should be going toe to toe and fist to fist fist with Matt Riddle of course I should I'm the best in the world well no that's the joke you've now you've you've, you've now just taken the joke and you've meant you've believed it to be real I would have I would have loved to be a fly on the wall in these in, in when the rumble was being put together. I think it sounds bizarre. Yeah. He's and literally Bruce Pritchard's impression of Hardcore Holly. Hardcore Holly, do you have any creative ideas? Oh, yeah. yeah. How about I win the title? Yeah. <laughs> and then what? 
then I beat everybody. It's like, <laughs> okay, great. Cheers, pal. If you were, because um, because then the fun part of this was Dax Harwood put out a tweet saying, uh, hey, Shane, holler at your boys. Um, he does a lot of that, doesn't he? What do we think about? And it's so unlikely. On, yes, I want it. It. yes, I want it. Yes, I want it to happen. Because <laughs> I was making, on, on the night of uh, Dynamite, when like they announced what we'll get to in our next story, that there were some changes. Like, are we on the phone to Shane McMahon <laughs> at this point? Our Twitter was a hell of a thing last night. I don't, yeah, I think, would we bring, I'm thinking, do, do AEW, do we bear witness to Shane McMahon rocking up in oh, AEW? Yes. And I wouldn't say to have him as like a permanent fixture, a part of the backstage dichotomy, absolutely not. But what a metaphorical teabagging it would be for Tony Khan to have Shane McMahon walk out on Dynamite. My, like, as a fan, no worse than stuff that Vince and Co have done in no, the yeah. 80s and the 90s. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's his son, but yeah, you're right. But he let him go, so fair Free game. Free agent. I My, as a fan, yes, I totally want it, just for the ructions. Yeah, the but, carnage. But if I was an AW fan where I was like a really partisan AW fan and I just wanted what was best for AW all the time, not what was best for general drama, then I'd say no. Because I feel like... Having Shane there is already risky enough. Like, he's going to try and, well, what if I win that title instead? I don't know. But, yes, I want it. Of course I do. Oh, yes. yeah. We want the chaotic timeline yes. deep down yeah. <laughs> where all this happens. I thought you were going to say because uh, Dax keeps on challenging, you know, the Briscoes, Aussie Open. That he was putting out a challenge to the Mean Street Posse. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Get Pete Gas on the phone oh. immediately. Uh, or is this all a big storyline? No. And Shane turns oh, up. For f- Shane turns the, the, up. The contents of the box. Shane turns up <laughs> on AEW. Shane, no, Shane, but, but they play it straight. Shane turns up on AEW Dynamite. Says the deal is finalized. And the name on oh, the contract shit. does say Khan. <laughs> 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 dot, 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 dot. You're welcome. Thank you. Big That's story. That story. Big story this week. Um, oh, yeah, big. The other story is Brian Kendrick mm. ended up out, being out of the two biggest Wrestling companies of all of America in the space of 48 hours. Yeah. Finally given his release from the WWE. He's been requesting that since October of last year, according to sources. And get ready to have that match, him and John Moxley. I've seen quite a few interviews of Brian Kendrick over the years. He's a bit of a conspiracy nut. He loves the drugs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he is. I just didn't see the sentence ending that way. His Facebook thing is in a relationship with <laughs> the drugs. Uh-uh. I'm saying the drugs because I remember that people on YouTube do check what we say in the language. Hopefully, the drugs he's, is PG enough for he's that. He's gone on to interviews to say the uh, thing is with drugs, they're very Moorish. <laughs> yeah. They're very Moorish <laughs> drugs. Yeah. So, says a few things, thinks the moon is a space station. Harmless ones at first. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, silly Billy. Ooh. And then he's like, yeah, I saw David Icke talk. I'm like, ha, ha, ha. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, some other stuff about certain events in human history where yeah. it's like, oh, okay. And then the completely insane one about, well, they sent in um, doctors to Haiti to get people's eyeballs. Um, yeah. I'm like... Is there a punchline coming here? And I had never seen those. No. They were not on High Spots or any other streaming service like that. Uh, just back in the day, get a DVD hour of it, whatever. Him mm. and Paul London. Ha, ha, ha. Drugs, drugs, drugs. Talk, talk, talk. <laughs> this was a show. I was like, no, I'm going to just say these things. And I was like, oh, they're really far out. Even yeah. by the CTE-ridden standards of wrestling, they're really out there. And everyone was sharing them on Twitter. People were going, yeah, I've never even heard him say this. He's gone from harmless twink to... Okay, this is a dangerous thing. You need to like clarify. Do you still believe this? Because it was from, I believe, 2013 or so. Go on the YouTube clip. Uh, yeah, if you still believe that, then I don't want to say anything positive about you ever again. Tony Khan tweeted, "Yeah, we've seen them. Seen the statements. We think it's best that we cancel this appearance. It was only an hour uh, with change, I think, from when he was supposed to be there uh, on the show. Mm. So he was undoubtedly at the arena." Unless he's really late getting to his shows, which I don't think he is. So, I don't know what happened Gosh, there. Because yeah. he saw us from AW locker rooms all here. Maybe eventually, I hit Brian Kendrick checking his phone and going, oh, okay, bye. Uh, he did tweet out today, like, uh, very sorry. Actually, no, I'll get, I'll get the specific quotes he said. He would, yeah, it's, um, 
yeah, some of the stuff that he said, um, I mean, I, I don't really want to talk about them. They're pretty I was very vague about them because it's like, yeah, and they are because you know, we, we, you know, you might say, oh, some of the things you said there, they're not that bad. They're, no, we left up, but yeah, there yeah, is yeah, yeah. some awful stuff that he yeah. said, yeah. and yeah. it's uh, it's 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 not nice, and and I think Tony Carr made absolutely the right decision. Oh, he had to it, with with he the de- with the information that he had. What yeah. are you going to do? Put him out there with that out in the world? Yeah. Absolutely no. not. Uh, I apologize for all the hurt and embarrassment I've caused with my words. These are not my beliefs and never were beliefs of mine. I crossed the line. I spread the most vile comments about thinking of the damage it would cause. I will live with this regret for the rest of my life. I am truly sorry for the pain I've caused. So, well, I mean, that's all you could say. I mean, I mean, you said it at least. But yeah, I'm glad I clarified. clarified yeah. No, I don't believe this. I was like, okay. But the tone, it was the, it, yeah. to- it was the tone of it that shocked me because it wasn't like he was caught telling an offensive joke in private or having yeah. a laugh or trying to be as controversial as possible to rile people up. He was really calm and serious when he was saying these things, and I was like, oh no, yeah. that's even worse. Which is what makes me think. It probably is what he thought. That's what I mean. And like, I, you he's know. not saying it in like a lol, lol, lol. No, Aren't these no. some funny things to say? No, he's really in a like shooting like discussing it calmly. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. Su- he suggests he's very much of those beliefs. Hopefully, at the very least, I guess the only positive thing you say, hopefully, he genuinely doesn't believe those things or doesn't anymore. Yeah. But I think Tony Khan yeah. did the yeah. only thing he could. He did the right I thing. expect next few days we'll hear from him and clarify some stuff. Mm. Or, oh, no. Let's move on. Uh, WWE offered Nia Jax a spot in the Women's Royal Rumble. Uh, apparently, there was a phone call. It was like, hey, it's from WWE. He went, yeah, sure. He goes, no, it's an official call. Nia Jax says, I was like, F no, I am not coming back. I'm like, oh, well, we'd like to offer you this. And he goes, first of all, I already know I'm still under my 90 days. You're still going to be paying me anyway. So you're not <laughs> offering me anything. Fair no, enough. I'm not effing coming back. I was like, absolutely effing not. I was like, is this all this was? I'm like, yep. All right, okay, bye. <laughs> but the, the thing is you've, we've heard some stories about people who turn down returns like release stars who recently turned down returns and I think I know why because another wow. part of that call according to Nia Jax was they were calling up not to so much offer her a spot in the rumble but on a short list that Vince McMahon would look over and go, yes, no, no, yes, wow. yes, no, oh. no. So they said to Nia Jax... Oh, it wasn't even a guarantee. Yeah, you're not in the Rumble, but oh. we want to put your name on a list to show to Vince in case you do. And Nia Jax is like, you treated me appallingly. No, I'm not going to go on that list. Yeah, no chance. short list. Yeah, and which is why I think when we've heard a few stories about recently released stars saying no, that's why, because that's yeah. a real slap in the face. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, we'd love to welcome you out to the Rumble, but we're not quite sure if you're good enough to be in it, so we're going to put we you on a short list. We don't Yeah, it's just, yeah, I get Whoa. why she'd be very frustrated with that. Apparently, she wants to start a family next. She okay. isn't saying no to wrestling, but uh, in this interview, she says, uh, I've got to find me a man to pump out some babies. Really. Oh, lovely. So, right. that's, that's, I, oh. Look out. Was this the interview with Renee? Yeah. Uh, she oh. said some weird stuff about her vaccine status and why she was let go and stuff. So I thought, oh, I don't know that if I believe, was so I was like, I don't know if I believe then. anything she says anymore, frankly. But that sounds real. That sounds legit. That sounds like. Oh a, yeah, I'm not going to believe that. Yeah. Uh, so looking for a man. Mm. Uh, Davy Richards. Uh, uh, why is this in the news? <laughs> Davy Richards was not a bowler. The uh, Battle of Los Angeles. He was in a hotel room, uh, having a nice time with himself and a webcam. Uh, the video. That was released on a certain website with a certain description led many to assume Davy Richards was now a porn star. Uh, he was then asked <laughs> on Twitter, and he went, "Oh well, lol. The vid was supposed to be a private one for my wife. That apparently is now not so private, lol. Oh well, it's a wiener. They can look at it; it makes their day. But no, I don't do porn. Well, pro wrestling can be dot dot dot. Meh, never mind." I should have sold that to get paid. Wieners equals dollar signs. That's a really great outlook for a man who's accidentally put his pecker on the internet. Yeah, yeah. and then Bixen's man, who's obviously been having a very busy week, said, so wait, 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 <laughs> you're saying you went to a guy to get something shot professionally in, uh, for your wife, and then he released it to public. You should, like, sue something, Davey says. To be clear, you're saying you went to the guy to get to... Is it not a case of maybe the... Um, while she oh, go, I pasted the wrong one. I pasted this thing. While she going Big through, Big says one thing. Big, oh whatever. Well, well but he was like, ah, lol. It's okay. Life's too short. Wieners equals dollar signs. Is it maybe a case he was uploading it to a a a website and wanted to put it on private so his wife could see it rather than uploading? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we transfer. Do you get it? It's a little joke. Oh, that's um, whether you send something like that over that way, or whether he was, I don't know, uploading it to the back end of a private channel. I don't know. I think I've not done that myself. I think you just went, yeah, I think you just went, guys, click this. I'm sorry. Yeah. But you know what? I think the news here is Dave Richards is not a porn star, to clarify. No. There we go. There we go. Yeah, fair enough. Good yeah. to, it's good to put that out there. 
Yeah. Huge Shane news. Huge Brian Kendrick news. Huge Davey <laughs> Richards Davey news. Hey, hey, for a very different I haven't seen the video, reason. but apparently it was big news. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, Kofi <laughs> Kingston talks about that one spot. Uh, it's the first time Kingston has been made while attempting such a crazy manoeuvre that he's known for, the Rumble, where he's get eliminated and then does some sort of wacky way of not. And he says, last uh, couple of days on social media, I've got a lot of, why would you even think that was possible? Why would you even try that? The answer to that question is quite easy because of the potential reward. What if you were to succeed in overcoming what is deemed impossible? And there's a long list of things there basically saying, uh, yeah, I messed it up, but if I got the chance, I would do it again in a heartbeat. This is the first time he has messed yeah. it up. Of all the years that he's done it. like, And I like, why are people calling him out going, don't be stupid? Like he said every year, these things happen. And, and he nearly did it. So he nearly of course did it. Is, it. Of course it is possible because he nearly did it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. good I, on him. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know why everybody was doing that because if Just that could have happened any year it. well yeah true I remember watching that thinking oh maybe that scuppered some stuff they were going to do with him and Big E because Big E came in shortly afterwards and then having known what I know now the rumble it's like no 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 it was just a really badly put together rumble anyway <laughs> and they probably yeah. weren't going to do anything of any consequence I saw anyway. something <laughs> I Kofi should have said how do you know that wasn't the spot <laughs> yeah that's how what, do you know Shane wanted it <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Shane. Sh Sh yeah, everyone's just putting all the blame on it. Shane, yeah, Shane said, oh, "How about you mess it up?" Kofi was meant to. He as he was falling, Shane was meant to be. He, he missed his spot, but Shane was meant to be there and swoop like an angel and save him and go. <laughs> still in the rumble from and in then the kiss ring him on the forehead the and fly him back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always one foot off the floor. Yeah, but he wasn't yeah. quite there. Uh, Matt Hardy says Jeff Hardy passed a drug test. Uh, was offered to be Hall of Fame spot to come back, which he declined. Uh, this goes on and on for a bit, but essentially, so the uh, footage showed Jeff Hardy having enough in that tag match and just leaving the match mm -hmm. and then the ring and then the arena. People going, uh-oh, thinking the worst. Jeff Hardy insists that he passed the drug test. And he just said he was tired of worn out of the Dewey schedule. And he's glad that he's out. And he still hasn't gotten his drug test results. And that's all he wants from they had a, I think he might have now, but he, it oh, was really okay. hard to get them back. And he had to, like, threaten legal action to get them back, yeah. possibly. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, a couple yeah, of days yeah. ago, he got his drug test uh, back, and it was compliant. Everything was negative. He passed on all levels. The main reason he was so adamant about getting those is because he wanted to clear his name. Fair yeah. Enough. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it's like, hey, do you want to be in the Hall of Fame? Um, he said, no, I just want my drug test. <laughs> What a, do you know what? It's it's funny how like these things that WWE are offering is sort of weird, like damage limitation. I'm sorry we let you go like that. How about you are in the Rumble? Or no, 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 you might be in the Rumble. Yeah. You sorry like to, we fired you. Do you want to be on a Hall of Fame shortlist? Yeah. You might yeah. get inducted. You might get inducted. Sorry not getting your holiday pay, but don't worry. Today is Pizza Friday. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. Oh, Rise are doing a pizza event again. And I'm absolutely I think actually. I can't believe it. I think I'm, but I think if it's this weekend, I'm at home. It's my oh. grandma's 80th birthday, so we're gonna miss the pizza, the return of the pizza, and rise. Unfortunately. Oh, what a shame! How is that gonna work? It's already rammed. If Ant's gonna take, like, whoops, sorry, know. pal, let me sp spill your pepperoni, pepperoni everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when it oh, first happened, God. it was in Steer Gold, which is a much yeah. smaller room. So I don't know. I don't know actually. God, Can't smaller slices of pizza. Bigger mouths. Little... No, but there's like, it's like, it's like. Oh, I love this song. We are free <laughs> to do what you are. Oh, it's going to be great. We are free to do that. It commonly blasts out in yeah. my ears. Plan the pizza delivery Just around the songs. Yes. So make sure there's no bangers playing when the when the slices are being handed out. When it's pizza time, you've yeah. got to calm yeah, it down yeah, a little yeah. bit. Once everyone's eaten, teenage dirt bag. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Can, no way and own. Margarita. Ah. Veil, veil. Uh, nice. That's good. Sorry, Peter. Mr. No way and Margarita Veil. It's my impression of Austin singing, <laughs> singing Margarita Veil. That sounded a bit like Joe from Family Guy. Uh, there's always <laughs> wasting away. <laughs> <laughs> never been able to, I've never known I could do that before. Hey, Thank Peter. You, Say hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. <laughs> oh, that's actually wow. all right. Yeah. Um, wow. Thanks, man. That's amazing. Oh. It's a fun new, this is this a while away the hours. <laughs> 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 we go back into a lockdown, you saw yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we've come to the end the wacky long new segment lots of wrestling to talk about so let's go to the next segment everybody get excited for the cultaholic hall of fame ah, ah that's mm. that one's, that's ah. that. now it's time for everyone's favorite segment ah. Ah, the hall of fame and condescending order from last week the really really fat jack russell doggo on his mobility scooter in brackets bless him ross seemed 17 to have, ross seemed to have fun writing the things this week. He really did. Oh, I've just more, seen yeah, the one. Yeah, 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 there we go. Yeah, he had a lot of fun with that one. 
Yeah, I think we've hit the line there. A dog that's fat but can still walk around is all right. A dog that's so fat that has to have a mobility scooter. It's a bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. So the dog's fault. Says this after I was dying laughing at it last week, but that's whatever. Fat Oof, dogs. Thick. Well, got a kryptonite, right? Uh, Sammy Guevara's double ladder cut up from dynamite. Just 21%. Well, I'm surprised. But no surprise is the winner. Number one. Mathu deliberately taking long drinks to show his... Who wrote this? To show his disdain and contempt for the sound of Jack's voice. 62%. <laughs> Nice. One air. The same <laughs> contempt from Come Matthew. <laughs> it did get, they were right, it was quite Pavlovian because I wouldn't even mm. realize I was doing it, but Jack would start talking and I wouldn't even. And it was only Jack said, Are you drinking again? I'm like, No. No, it was Ross last week who didn't finally know. Oh, was it Ross? Because it was always me going, like, Stop it, Matthew, when I'm talking. Because you'd finish the drink and hold it there until I finished my sentence for some reason. I don't know why. Just getting the last of it. Never, no, you weren't. I've never known why, and you've never given me the satisfaction of admitting why you do it. But <laughs> Ross, is, is today the day that we... of drinking wine. Yeah. Is today the day that we get the answer? <laughs> no. Like, I can mediate this. No. no, no, no it's it's then, there. The, the disdain and contempt that but I'm then last, to show. last week, Ross noticed it and went like, what are you doing? And I was like, I think my response shocked Ross because like, he does it all the time. Ross is fine. And then Ross was like, what? So I made it my Hall of Fame nomination. And now people think this was I while do I was given my actual it's, nomination, it's and then I, I called an audible and switched it to that. So uh, I think people like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell myself that anyway. Yeah, that's so, what I want. Uh, mild congratulations for you winning. Thank you. Uh, what have you got for us this week? So I heard a story. Um, Jack's from funny story. My <laughs> funny story. <laughs> Jack's long story. I heard it from a friend, but I'll try and get the details right. It concerns former footballer. I think he's a coach now, James Beatty. Uh, he used to play for Southampton and Everton a bit. But anyway, Matthew, I get it. It's funny. But this is a long story, so you can <laughs> have to stop. No, 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 um, sorry. So t t James Beatty told a story from about 10 or 15 years ago, which my friend has heard and then relayed to me. But the story is so good that I have to tell it again. All right. So apparently they were on a footballer's Christmas party in London somewhere when he was with Southampton, I think. So they'd gone up to London for this Christmas party and they were in quite an exclusive place and Paul Daniels was there. I know. And they were buzzing because it was Paul Daniels, <laughs> yeah. right? He's a magician from way yes. back in the way, by the way, if the humans watching. R.I.P. Um, oh, he's dead now. Yeah, he's dead now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah he's But Paul Daniels was there messing about and stuff. He, he started doing a few tricks with them. James B, he's got this expensive watch on. And he was like, oh, I'll make your watch disappear and all that. And he puts it under the handkerchief, mm. hits it with a hammer. Then he's going to produce, obviously, the... But then he realizes that he's actually, he's actually like, smashed the watch with this hammer. And James B is like, oh, okay. Um, Debbie McGee apparently has to go over and be like, Paul's not what he used to be. <laughs> I'm sorry. And oh, then my God. To apologize. She, her and Paul Daniels apparently said to James B, like, in a few weeks or whenever you're next free... We want to invite you around to ours to say sorry and we'll like make you a meal and you can bring the family and everything. We'll have a proper dinner to say sorry. Fast forward a few weeks, he goes around with the wife and his kid and they're all sat there and it's lasagna. And as they're like playing up the lasagna, James Beatty looks into his and guess what was in there? The watch. Meat and cheese. <laughs> Come on! I've got them again! I've got them again! After last time. Do you remember the... <laughs> Do you remember the... <laughs> Do you remember the, do you remember the car one? I, I, was told, I told that one the other week. Have you heard this before? You told it me. You told it on the podcast. Yeah, thank you. And mate, I told it on Christmas. Yeah, 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 it's great. So I got these both from the same episode of a football podcast from this footballer called Matty Kilgallen. So I need. A, I did steal that again, yeah, it's like the last one. But yeah, I'm pleased with it. I'm pleased how it's gone. So what is going in the it's Hall good, of Fame? Um, the Jack's lasagna. Paul Daniels story. Jack's Paul Daniels. Jack's lasagna story or something. Jack's Paul Daniels story. <laughs> <laughs> Jack's Paul Daniels story yeah. of That's the magic. week. That's magic. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, all right. Oh, sorry. I thought I you were actually saying it was magic. It was magic. You know what? How bad was that? Because I thought that was a legit thing that Paul Daniels was just, oh, she's not as good as he used to be. Yeah. <laughs> when I said Debbie... He forgot how to do the trick in the smashable watch. When I said Debbie McGee had to go over and say Paul's not what he used to be, <laughs> and you went, oh, no. I was like, I've got him. I've got, him. I've got at least one of them. I've got him. <laughs> The thought of my admission. All right, you do that, and then oh, that's not right. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Oh, no. oh, I've done it again, Debbie. I've done it again. <laughs> it's ten watches. It this would week. be great if it was a true story, but I know. Oh God, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot. But I like it. Not a lot. <laughs> the Paul and Debbie twin. Bit. Yeah, that's. I know more <laughs> from Paul Daniels because of that. Because of than anything I've ever Warner. seen an actual skit with him. Nice. I like that. I'm trying to recover from that. God, I've been <laughs> smacked in the head. Um, well, I'm second, so I'll go with. I know it's very boring and wrestling related, but the state 
of John Moxley since his return. Oh, in a good what way. A... Sorry. Oh. He's just... <laughs> he looks awful. Yeah, no, I was worried when he's I've just realised on. the way I've said that is not yeah. how I meant to say that. Sorry. In a, good, in a good way. The shape, the size, the girth of the John beef. Moxie since he came back. Look at all that. More beef than that than freaking Paul Daniels lasagna. <laughs> he is just looking phenomenal. He's ripped. He's shredded. He's just got rid of all that negative energy. And he's kicking ass. He's beating, you know, he's beating Wheelie Uta. God knows how. Um, and all that stuff and the feud he's doing with Brian Danielson right now with Anderson's going this is a cowboy who's a champ <laughs> and Dinosaur's the tag champ this is ridiculous a guy who vlogs is a TV <laughs> cha- no 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 no. me and you we could run this town he's like have a think about it and Mark's like hmm I thought god this is good yeah and I realised there is a lot of stuff in AEW I go I can't wait to see this and most of the time for Dynamite sorry for Raw and Smackdown I'll go alright what we're getting <laughs> let's just see what this is all right watching this are we cool but like with that i'm actually there's certain bits yeah tony can't play with this bit i don't care um yeah moxley right now just the shape of john moxley look at him it's a good it's a solid pick he's back to looking human and just being mint and he's oh so nice and he's hairy and oh sweaty <laughs> oh 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 God. Do, you, do you need a moment <clears throat> chef by ID's overstuffed wrestler <laughs> oh look at that man so it's john mox Mm. Nice, the shape of mocks. I like that. Shape of mocks to come. Yeah. I like that. Um, I was there's a, stop, there's a few elements. Stop that, Jack. Sorry. There's a few elements to this. I wanted to, I, I, but I'm gonna I'm gonna whittle it down to I whittle it down. Oh, um, I'm gonna nominate for oh, the Cult Hall of Fame. Um, Alex's granddad, uh, who we know lovingly as Bamper, right? Who made me this walking stick uh, a few years ago because he makes walking sticks. Wow. And he made one for me, in, in, and whilst it does look phallic, admittedly, um, that's a microphone at the top. Oh! Radio. You're like a Bond villain. Yeah, I like a Bond villain. And the reason, like, this week more than ever I'm nominating is because it was my birthday on Sunday. It was my birthday on Monday, but on Sunday we recorded Coldaholic Live here, and Adam went, do you fancy going for a pint? I said, yeah, go on, then have a pint. And it turned out to be a ruse, a clever, a clever bit of wordplay from Adam Vegeti to get me into a surprise party attended by the guys and gals of Cultaholic and Triple Jump, which was lovely. And I was, and thank you all for coming. Oh, no bother. That was oh, really, no, a really old. lovely surprise. I'm glad. We had a great time. I drank too much. And, it, and, and the evening wore down. We went to a few of the pubs, and it ended up with myself, young Jamie, Big Dick Tubbs, and Jack in a bar in Number Newcastle. 28, number 28, yeah, number 28 in Newcastle. 28. And, uh, which, which... I thought was a calm bar until that night. A and fight broke out. There was a fight on. Did it? I Honestly, filmed some of it. Did you? Yeah. Wow. Oh, wait, there was a fight. <laughs> Sorry for cutting off the story. No, no, but go this for happened it. like seconds before Tom's story. So I'll just jump in. Oh, okay. So we were about to leave. We were on our last drink and we were going to call it a night. And then the bouncer goes over and he went up a little flight, like a small, like a few steps to get to the raised, slightly raised area. Just immediately starts trying to kick two like middle-aged blokes out. We, we didn't know why. We assumed one of them had maybe tried to do the drugs off the table. Because it was so instant. He just went over and was like, get out. And they didn't like that. And they pushed him down the stairs and then into the bar and it was, it was all kicking off. Yeah. Um, wow. I went over like a tit. Um, I didn't get into the fight. But I got one of the guys away, and then he pushed me, and I went, "Yo, what are you doing?" And then it all calmed down. Yeah, you. So you, you I don't know. I shouldn't. Have, I should have just stayed up. <laughs> My mum would be so disappointed if she knew that I'd gone. No, over. do you know what? I think there's something to be said that in an instant like that, and it's oh, fight stupid. or flight. Don't do it. Don't you're do it. You're the one it's that stupid. went. No, Hang on. No, I shouldn't have done it. Because uh, that happened, and then you went down the stairs, and I think, I think uh, you were behind Richie us. went after, yeah. and I was behind you. And uh, they're quite deep step. They're quite quite steep. sharp steep mm. steps. Which steps aren't they? are you referring to? The ones down from number twenty eight. Down to the street. The ones that lead you back down towards yeah. Granger Street. There was, it's just the steps that oh, lead because the bar's all yeah. upstairs. I thought you meant in the bar. It yeah, was. Like, the steps I, come down from the bar. I like how, how in-depth we're going to where it is. I, we yeah. have, <laughs> I, want, to put, Google I want to put a blue plaque up for yeah. this then. And uh, long story short, I stacked it. Coming oh, down the scared. steps. It was heavy, man. It felt it was a it was heavy. Hard. It was a heavy thud. It? Well, it was a heavy oh. thud. <laughs> It was a heavy <laughs> thud, and you and you and, and Rich looked around just horrified yeah. as I kind of got back to my feet. And I'm down out of drink. I'm oh, fine, I'm yeah, fine. And I just sort of brushed it so off. So scared, man. And you were like, "Are you sure you're alright?" Well, I thought you'd landed face on your head. You thought I banged my head, didn't you? Because there was the steps, and then there was a. It's actually quite lucky. There's steps, and then there's the flat bit, and then more steps. And Tom fell onto the flat bit. 
Yeah, he didn't so, fall uh, down all of the steps. He fell. It was a flight of. So it didn't sound like in the air. To it just, which is one, no. just one. Dun, dun, bang, dun, 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 like, dun, oh, dun, man. But it was a big old thud. I hit the ground and then. If it was, had just been sheer steps, then we all might have fallen. Yeah, then, we, we were, we were ahead of Tom. Like steps, bowling so, yeah. all the way down. Um, I thought the guy had followed me out and pushed you, so I was racked with guilt. Yeah, I honestly, I don't think. No, it was just it was my own clumsiness that pushed me. And that was and luckily enough, that was the last bit of the that was the last bit of the night. I was like, hey, lovely night, good night, everybody. See, I went home. I walked home. How I. You home. told us you were going to get a taxi. You lied. Maybe I did then. I don't know. I definitely... Or did I get a taxi? You can't remember saying goodbye to me. I can't remember saying goodbye to you. And we hugged and told each other we loved one another. Yeah. So <laughs> it, then I you walk home. I was... Yeah. I remember I was... checking Tom's, like, face on the street, like, and it was the same. So I was like, oh, well, he must be fine. Oh, yeah, that's fine. And yeah. then on the, on the whole walk home... I remember home, you checking my face, like, looking for bruises or something. But then like... on the whole walk home, Richard was like, we shouldn't have left him. And then by the time I got in, I was messaging Richard, like, yeah, you're right, we shouldn't have left him but and I was I, fine I messaged you like five times asking if you'd got in and you did reply yeah that's fine that's but fine. I was worried I was so worried but anyway but I was when I went to bed woke up the next day because I, I, Alex was up early the next day the next day, day must have hurt right? yeah oh. I went because because Alex was asleep it was about midnight and she was up early the next day so I thought oh, I'll just go I'll bed down in the spare room I'll go in the spare room woke up there's just blood everywhere oh my god really yeah oh what my why jeans, did we leave him my jeans were ripped why did we leave him because because I didn't because what happened was my jeans had ripped like my face was fine. My jeans had ripped to shreds uh -huh. on the landing, and there were and there is a. I think I sent you a picture. There's a massive like it's taken several layers of skin off, several points on my kneecap, on my shin, oh. on my on on my heel, and it just looks like a, it just just looks like a painting. Shouldn't have left. A me. bad painting, and I, and just the agony. I was just in agony that morning. I couldn't put any weight on it. When I, I was just saw a Tom mess. in work, I went, "How are you?" He was like, oh, "I'll be fine." I'm like, what? Uh, yeah. Bring all this That's on? what you do. I know. Ah, I believed it. Well, you're in a good part, good time. You're full of mm. the, you know, the, the false courage and stuff oh, like that. You man. hurt yourself. You go, oh my god, you're right. You don't go, oh god, I'm going to go. I'm fine, me. I had so many Tell big plans bread. for my birthday because the next day was my birthday. I was going to oh, go for a run because no. I was doing, I've been doing couch to 5k, and I was my, my last run. And the it was his won. last day for retirement. Uh, it was the last <laughs> run was on my birthday. And oh I was my like, god! I was going to run. It's not your fault. It's no. not your fault. Yeah, Jack's riddled with guilt. I'm, I'm, I'm 38. I know, I'm 38. I, I, I'm, I, I agree to go to number 28. Yeah. yeah I, I sponge you of all guilt. For, for my stupidity. Going there was also my idea, I think. But I went, yeah, oh, I like... No, that's already, no, 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 no. Okay, right. Okay. I like number 28 one, in general. If we picked a, a bungalow, I'm, I'm we'd be all right. Yeah, yeah, if we picked one on the ground. <laughs> yeah, if you, I, mean, I mean, obviously, if we picked one on the ground, then it would have been less of yeah. an issue. Um, but, um, so, we and it happened. I, next day, I woke up, couldn't do anything. I spent my birthday just sat on the sofa watching OSW Review. Oh, so that was as good as it got. It was fun. It was a lovely birthday. But, um, and then I've since come back into work, and obviously, where our office is, is a flight of stairs. So I realized that I'm starting to get mobility back, but stairs, oh my God, like it rips the kneecap every time. But I'm like, I, well, I've got to work. So I remembered the other day that mm. this brings oh. me to my nomination, uh, that Bamper made this lovely cane for me. And I brought it in today. And, and, and partly because it genuinely helps me getting up and down the stairs, because you know, we're going up and down the stairs all the time here. Uh, it takes a bit of pressure off the, the, the injury. And also, as I am the elder statesman of Cultaholic, I kind of like the aesthetic <laughs> of the mm. one walking around with a cane. I'm glad you dressed <laughs> with a cane! Yeah. <laughs> it's a woman with a cane! Can have a look at it? Yes, of course oh, you can. It's you. beautifully made. It's nice um, to remember after, uh, getting work after university challenge. Yeah! So, <laughs> there you go, to the over 50s, watch There's the podcast. Good one that is. So yeah, so I'm going to nominate. So obviously, there's lots of people I could nominate. I could nominate um, Alex and you guys for doing the whole surprise party for me, 100 to, uh, to to Richard and Jack for being the last of the party goers. Uh, but <laughs> I'm going to nominate thing. Bamper because the stick has genuinely helped me out today, and oh, it probably will do tomorrow as that's well. Good. So uh, let's let's pop Bamper in the Hall of Fame for this wonderful walking yeah, stick. This fantastic. wonderful cane I've got that makes me feel like an elder statesman. That's a good one. Oh, lovely. Tom, this is funny story. And thank you for a great night as well, by the way. Hey, hey, hey you guys organised it. I just turned up. I said to Adam as we got, to the, as we got to the... fell down quite dramatically. I said to Adam as we turned up, because the, the, the ruse that got me there was Adam saying, do you want to go in for a pint at this pub up the road? I went, yeah, sure. I said, what would you have done if I just said no? <laughs> I thought this as well. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. like, but you didn't know he could sell you it. <laughs> yeah, and he didn't even say, he was just a 20 a pint. I went, yeah, my birthday tomorrow. If it's your birthday next day, then yeah, it yeah, was a no. calculated risk. It was a calculated yeah. risk and it mm. paid off. Yeah. So there you go. That's Tom's funny story. Yeah, it was good. It's got the, all the, the list there. I tore my jeans, separated the skin <laughs> of my jeans. The Don't risks are real. <laughs>
<laughs> I fell down the stairs five times. Don't be a bonehead. Don't be a clown. Don't try this. Don't try this don't at try all. This Please one. leave the danger to us. That's a cool yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was a nice one. Thank you. <sighs> wow. Another murderer's row there. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Two amazing picks of mine. They are Jack's Paul funny Daniel's story. Paul Daniel's story. Yeah, my Paul Daniel's story. Are yeah. you writing these down? Yeah. There we go. Jack Paul Daniel's story. Uh, the shape of John Moxley. Okay. Woof. And Alex's granddad, Bamper, for making the cane that keeps me upright. In brackets, Tom fell down. In brackets, Tom's drunken story. In brackets, Tom's winning this week. <laughs> You if should, you would you like should. to vote for any of those fantastic picks, you can, of course, go to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Hold of, uh, no, sorry, damn it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't usually get it right, so Jack's actually been really nice there. <laughs> no, Matthew, yeah. Oh, I got it right. If I had Matthew a was right. If I, had a, if I had a drink with me now, I'd be drinking it while you were talking. <laughs> In sheer disgust. <laughs> You've had enough drink. <laughs> That says this week in the wrestling, it's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ah. Ah. The Ooh. very long ah. week in wrestling. So we're going to make like uh, summoning salt and speed run through this as best as possible. Nice. Smackdown. But he loves summoning salt. Charlotte Flair opens the show and says she's brought a championship to Kansas City, something the Chiefs would never do. Brackets, they did this in 2020. Very recent Super Bowl win. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's interrupted by Shayna Baszler. He was confident about her chances in the Royal Rumble. And Alia, who was not. Natalia and Shotzi also arrive until finally Sasha, uh, Sasha Banks makes a surprise return. She slaps Charlotte and everybody brawls. Sasha and Charlotte are the last two standing until Sasha throws Charlotte over the top rope. This was the intro to every Raw in the past five years. But on SmackDown. But on SmackDown. Yeah. It was one of those promo parades or carousels, wasn't it, where everybody comes in. But I think what would have been more exciting is if Sasha had been... A surprise debut on the return in the Rumble. That would have been great. Yeah. Have her come out at number yeah. one. But if what Tom was saying, then I think it was just a surprise that she was there, given the, the yeah. short list that was required. <laughs> yeah, so. that's very true. <laughs> How about some guarantees? <laughs> uh, backstage, Ridge Holland says it's about time he had a chance to get revenge on Ricochet. Wait, hang on. Hasn't Seamus beaten him every week since then? Yeah, but Ridge yes, wants... Yes, he has. <laughs> uh, Seamus gives Holland his old protective face mask. Uh, the pair have a tag match against Ricochet and Cesaro, which they win, of course. That's why they want revenge, though, because it was Ricochet that broke Ridge Holland's face. Yeah. yeah. Are they, are they not paid because, that off yet? Uh, no, but it's just funny to me, because obviously he hasn't been able to return. Right. Well, in, in a professional wrestling in the match capacity, he's been around the ringside, but now he's having a proper match. But it's just funny to build up to that. Sheamus has just kicked Ricochet every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boy, I can't wait for Ridge Holland to do that. <laughs> to kick him. Yeah. Before her grudge match with Naomi, Sonia Deville tries to intimidate the referee. He says he has to call it right down the middle. Naomi wins and celebrates by declaring herself an entrant into the Royal Rumble, but Sonia does as well because she has the power to do so. This had a lot of heat, if nothing else, and they've been building this up for months and months and months. They finally said why she doesn't like her, which is nice. Yeah, should have been a pay-per-view, although it's probably going to carry on once we talk about the Rumble. It's say, probably yeah. going to carry on more, isn't as, it? So, yeah. As we know, this is how SmackDown Raw work. Oh, there we go. They built up and had a, a match on SmackDown where it ended decisively and cleanly. That's the start of the feud. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Usos bump into the Viking Raiders backstage and are disgusted by them. The Raiders threaten them with their axes. Yeah, that was the. This is the, so. Yep. It's going to be the next title shot, I suppose. But Vikings are smelly, but they've got axes, and the Usos are scared of axes. That's the. It's a tale as old as time. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for Insane with Sami Zayn, which has been repackaged as a live podcast. Oh, competition, oh, eh? No. <laughs> Does he start it by going, if you like a lot of wrestling? God, if he did, did that, Giant oh, Insane. I would lose my mind. Or how would we feel if, like, it's like here's, here's time for Insane? It's like the music, dun dun. Please welcome Sami Zayn. Ah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> He asks, uh, he asks Jinder Mahal a question as he's talking. He's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. We put it in the Hall of Fame, Jinder Pal. <laughs> Me. Sammy Zane. How are you doing, Pal? How are you doing, Pal? Well, it's actually changed completely. Sparkling water? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ginger about to in get India, it. India, do you have cheese pizza? <laughs> <laughs> well, Ginger, you can't have your match yet because it's time for Reese's Pieces. Mm. <laughs> it's been... <laughs> This is the kind of like, what? DSR, Jim Mahal and Shanky. 
who turned to be big fans of Johnny Knoxville because Jackass is huge in India. Mm. Uh, Sammy doesn't like this, but he's interrupted by the arrival of Rick Boogs and that other guy that follows him around who holds a title for him, <laughs> who kicks him in the heed. Nakamura and Boogs win a tag match against Jinder and Shanky because, of course, they do. Any thoughts here? Mm. Boogs! At this point... <laughs> I would have put my house on. Well, I wouldn't have because I didn't. But I, I would have been tempted to put my house on uh, Knoxville to eliminate Zayn from the Rumble. But that's right. not what happened. That's so not what happened. No. Yeah, Anything can happen in the World Wrestling Federation. It, it, yeah. <laughs> uh, also, nothing can happen. <laughs> true. Big E and Kofi Kingston beat Happy Corbin and Madcap Moss to end that mini feud, I guess. That's it. I can Maybe. move on from that now. Yep. I was shocked because Corbin and Moss have been beating everyone. Yeah, but they've announced that Big E has gone back to Raw. Ah. I think it's just been a like a oh, thing. thing. Was it just yeah. a one-off on the SmackDown then? I guess because uh, it's, it's been like a Because Woods up, is injured, so yeah. Big E's done a little, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, fine. Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins have their showdown ahead of the Rumble. Roman defends last week's DQ by saying he took the option that brought the least shame upon his family. Seth says that if being pinned by him is shameful, Roman must have caused more embarrassment to his family than anyone. Yeah. Seth reminds Roman of all the times he's got the better of him, especially when he broke up the shield, but he wants Roman to know it's nothing personal. Roman says he'll forgive Seth, sorry, never forgive Seth, and that he hates him. Roman tries to cheap shot Seth, who avoids it and rolls out the ring cackling. Now, typed up, that doesn't sound that bad of a promo. Watching this on TV, God, I hated him. I oh. hated Rollins in his... <laughs> in a good way. Well, I don't know. He's supposed to be a face, right? They're both heels? It's oh, so I, I weird. Roll Roman's like, okay, you're a bad guy. I get it. You're a dick. You did the DQ because you didn't want that. Blah, blah, blah. Fine. But Ron's like, nah. And it's constantly doing those noises. And the way he speaks, at the point where the crowd were booing him for a bit. Oh. The, the bit, the, the, I'll forget the actual bit, but there was one line he did that was like, nah, the shield, you stuck. I beat you. Nah. It's like, yeah, shut up, man. Mm. Oh. So, but I know the rumble changed a lot of people's minds anyway. So I don't, I don't, I don't know where this is going. I don't know. They've really got, um, they've got. So some of these feuds have now ended. Some are still going. But at one point over the past weekend, we've had Rollins and Reigns both heels. Uh -uh. Lesnar and Lashley, he heels. L Lashley now a face, but but there's no. Raw, but then on Raw, Lashley was like a heel again because he didn't want to defend his title. So I've got no clue what's going on there. And then Becky yeah. and Ronda both heels. Where are the where yeah. are the good guys? Where are the like the chipper? <laughs> where have all the good men gone? <laughs> yeah. Where are all the guys? No nice guys anymore. No, <laughs> apart from Sami Zayn with his, that incel energy yeah. that he brings <laughs> to the table. That's um, a good point. <laughs> it's of. almost like they're just chucking characters out there and just whatever. Yeah, that's kind of what it feels like. They're just Cody chucking Rhodes is loving it because there's no defined <laughs> roles <Aww>. at all. <laughs> Why have I mentioned Cody on a Tom podcast? <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, uh -oh. but play it, play it on your stick. Play it, he, he brings out a massive xylophone. <laughs> yeah. If only I thought that far ahead. I thought uh. you were going to press the microphone button and it would have played it. In oh yeah. my days! I've even thought of that. That'd have been amazing. Mm. Next week. That, Next week. It'll take at least a week to design mm. and implement yeah. that design into his walking <laughs> stick. Uh, Aw Rampage. John Moxie beats Anthony Bones despite interference from Max Caster. Brian Danielson watches on backstage going mm. <laughs> wrestling. Eh? Mm. <laughs> Bones is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though we always call him Andrew Bowers by accident. <laughs> so <laughs> do you, you, Bowers. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know this, but uh, oh my yeah, god! I've heard, I've heard you call him. I've heard you call him Bowers on one episode. Uh, I was like, oh, man. that's cute. We do it no by accident though, all the time. Uh, Bowers is the the head of North Wrestling. He is indeed, and has a similar name to Anthony Bones. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nearly the same size as him. Same yeah. same body, same build. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, I wouldn't. That'd know be great if they were like he's, he's built like that. All right, so I'm booking the promotion. <laughs> 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 if <laughs> hi, I'm wrestling tonight. Oh, that's good. Dude. <laughs> if there's ever a situation, and I don't know why, if it would be because they're contracted AW, but if the acclaimed went on tour around oh. and they booked. Bowens. That, that needs to be brought up in a show, Bowens and Bowens. <laughs> about Bowers and blah, blah, blah. Hey, uh, hey so, oh, Anthony, no. I've, I've come to see you to ask about pay. No, it's not. You want Bowers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, do that they, they made this mistake on the podcast. Isn't that right? Bowers, Bowers is gone. Not what you mean. Pay the man. <laughs> Briefcase full of money. <laughs> we see you, Bowers, <laughs> running off with a suitcase full of 20s. It's so full of money, stuck. there's dollars flying off. He's, he's driving along. 
But the Newcastle one way system, he gets caught. He's like, oh no, I can't get out of here. <laughs> oh no, the venue's moved now. He's got way more space to get away. He's got yeah. more. Oh, no, he, like, he just drives been... in the river like and get caught. In. <laughs> <laughs> We're saying this because Andrew, because Anthony Bowens hash slash Andrew Bowers is the least problematic wrestling promoter in the UK. He's almost never He's run amazing. off with any money. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> he hardly ever bribes me. <laughs> He's great. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Andrade offers Darby Allen a contract to join his group. But Darby says he doesn't actually work for Sting and that money doesn't matter. Andrade struggles to comprehend this. Yeah, I love like, Andrade talking about Darby. <laughs> that kid that hangs out mm. with Sting. Oh, the guy he hires. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think he hires? Why else would you hang around Sting? <laughs> <laughs> Brock Anderson and Lee Johnson team up to take on FTR. Towards the end of the match, and Dex Tully, but FTR get the win anyway. Brock but. looks great. Like there's there's a real like potential there with Brock Anderson. Like, oh, I yeah. wouldn't want to put him in single stuff yet, but, like, I, I like what we're doing with him. I like him. He's oh. got a good look. He's got a good... I mean, you know, his dad's arm, so... Yeah, true. I mean, obviously, yeah. sometimes the apple does roll quite far from the tree and land in a bin. David Flair. Flair. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Didn't need to say it. No, no said it. Um, <laughs> but, but he's... Um, but no, I, I, I think there's potential there. Yeah. I love Arn Anderson's 40-year-old kid. <laughs> so great I was about to, I was like oh they should team up has Tully got a kid and then I was like oh damn oh okay it's Tessa Sean Spears <laughs> oh Sean Spears yeah. you're my son yeah. he's his child yeah. Yeah. but yeah Tessa that's true mm. yeah. Jade Cargill successfully defends the TBS title against Julia Hart a predictably short match as it should be but you know it was yeah that's the right thing yeah. you didn't want Julia to be put up too much of a fight nah she fills her role well. She, yep. WWE could use her because she's a baby face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably, and, uh, you know, they need women in the Rumble. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then Jurassic Express beat Private Party to retain the tag titles, but attacked by the Ass Boys to end the show. <laughs> I did not write the Ass Boys in case any of them are watching and it get just, annoyed. <laughs> so, oh, sorry, sorry, the Gun Club. Yes. <laughs> the Ass Boys. The Ass Boys. God. As Danhausen calls them? Yes. Is it Danhausen? Yeah, yeah. Danhausen. Yeah. yeah. You know that wacky meme dude. Billy Gunn yeah. just 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 drinks it all in. It's great. Yeah, he loves it. He drinks, he drinks all the it. ass. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So that was Rampage, the Royal Rumble. Oh. Seth Rollins enters through the crowd to the Shield theme for his Universal Title match against Roman Reigns. He's also dressed in classic Shield ring gear. Uh, Seth wins via DQ after Roman refuses to break the guillotine. Roman batters him with a chair after the match. With you a know stunning what? assist from Charles Robinson at one point. You know, what? I thought. Well worked match, very well put together. Crowd really into it. As much as I'm like, Seth's like, nah, 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 nah. he can have the type matches that really work well with Roman Reigns. Yeah. The like talk, talk, plot, plot matches. Spot, but it spot, wasn't spot. as it was faster paced, I thought as well than Roman's yeah. typical main event matches, which isn't a bad thing. Like Roman's the master of like that slow pace at the minute. But I thought it was really good as well. Um, they really brought the best out of each other. Mm. They always do those two. So yeah, especially when Roman has said in interviews that he's still struggling with the after effects of COVID. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like he said, like he's 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 struggling a little bit more with his breathing. Like uh, he's lost a few steps in his stamina, but you wouldn't know it to no. watch this match. The best match of the night. Yes, mm. it was easily. It's you in terms of grading when we did Cold Heart Live. Like it is. You know, it's it's like a it's like the stairs that I fell down <laughs> oh. on Sunday. It's just it's like the next All right, John, <laughs> have a graph of Tom falling down. It. Please do. Thank oh, you. God. He's the hardest working man. He, he is. We, we've 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 eased off on him a little bit because he's got a longer Christmas break. His Photoshop John Eiley from the classic. I'm waiting for him to level up and go. No, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, sort of. But yeah, I'm all right with the DQ finish. Thought it worked well. I think people were upset, but Mike. Roman should be losing or doing anything like that to build up to WrestleMania. So, well, that's it. it. They, they, they find themselves in a situation where they don't want Roman to lose. They don't really want Seth to lose because he's potentially going into some big programs for Mania. Well, they thought he had Shane. I was going to say, yeah. yeah <laughs> that's, that's, you need all the strength you can muster yeah. into a feud with Shane. Yeah. But, uh, and you talk about Roman, like, I'm dying for him to, like, get face to face with someone. He gets his mask off and puts it around her. And the other guy goes, no, I've got, I'm got the vid. He goes, yeah, but you. Look at Stadia. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like that. Yeah, I'm surprised no one's done that. Yet. I enjoyed the the chair shots at the end. Yeah. Especially like how it how it replicated the the heel. Oh, the, the first the, one the was the same, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Even in terms of how Rollins fell mm -hmm. was the same as how Roman fell. Somebody got a lot of heat online for saying for claiming that this is proof that WWE does long term storytelling, and that is not. What? No, it's not that. It's just it's just happy coincidence and a bit of art. It's not a long term story. No. This wasn't what they planned in two thousand or whatever. <laughs> Imagine right, seven years later. Yeah, yeah. They're like, right. Well, yeah. No, it's, this is a, a callback. 
It's a callback. Yeah. Yeah. Don't confuse a callback for long term storytelling. <laughs> yeah. Ding. Get your storytelling right when you watch wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. There was a guy, serious there business. There was a guy on Dynamite in the main event who kept holding up a Just Enjoy Wrestling sign, Love which him. is a decent point. Oh, I hate him. But he kept going, am I on the TV while I'm, ah. holding, while I'm holding my Just Enjoy Wrestling sign? And I thought, oh, that's quite funny. Yeah. I hope a guy with like, please re-release Blast Core Nintendo <laughs> Switch just <laughs> battered him after the event. But no, the, with guy, the, sign. the sign was a good message, wasn't it, to be fair? It wasn't, it could have been worse. Yeah, Matthew's, oh, Matthew's, yeah. Matthew's no, not. How oh, dare you try to enjoy wrestling? <laughs> enjoy wrestling? <laughs> yeah, you'd be, yeah, what would you do? What would we all do if we just enjoyed wrestling? Yeah, I hate wrestling so much. That's why I watch every show on TV. <laughs> and speaking of which, this is actually going to be interesting to me because I watched, I wasn't able to watch Rumble Live for the first time in a long time, which sucked. So I watched it the next day you couldn't watch it by one. myself. Yeah. I, I'll say this before we go into the, the, the rough notes. I actually enjoyed the Women's Rumble. Uh, it was the best Rumble of the year. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to what happened. <laughs> no, there was no, there was lots of, there was lots to love in, in yeah. the women's rumble. There Sasha lot, Banks felt more like what a rumble should be. Yeah, Sasha Banks ended up as number one. And seems to be in it for long haul, but gets eliminated by Queen Zelina. It says for no real reason. <laughs> surprise entrants include well half the entrants because well they were like, a lot of them were announced. Yeah, but these and, were the surprises. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah surprise, okay. sorry. So, uh, sorry, I meant not surprise. I meant people who were not like part of the regular right. Yeah, yeah. Include Melina, Cameron, Ivory, Mighty Molly, and Sarah Logan. None of them last particularly long. But the I worst thought Mighty Molly yeah. getting sparked out by Nikki Ash is mm. the best thing Nikki's done in months. Yeah. Mm. I'll, Ivory was fantastic. Ivory. Right to censor Ivory. So I saw Tom nostalgic. when I saw him on Sunday, like, yeah. he was, you know, walking to and fro. Uh, I asked, so Tom, were you weirded out when you heard the right to censor music? Because I hear that when I get ready to do the podcast. Ah. It's about Smackdown or one. Ah, so yeah. I heard it here going, nah, I'm, I'm getting yeah. a bit weirded out now. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Sonny Deville joins commentary rather than entering the ring until she learns that Cameron used to be Naomi's tag partner. <laughs> Sonya doesn't care about wrestling before she turned up, which I love that. She's yeah, like, yeah. oh, she used to be her tag partner. Right, okay. Yeah. She eliminates Cameron, so Naomi eliminates her, but Sonya sticks out around the ringside and pulls Naomi out too. See, I like that. That feud's been built up. I like her going, oh, I'm going to do my Naomi, Naomi thing. She's like, no, you're not. Yeah, she pulls her out. Good, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, I like that. Yeah. Mickey James enters with her Impact title and theme music, and they go, look, it's the Impact Women's Champ. Sorry, not got Champ. They said they, they referred to it's it as the Impact champ? Women's Champion. Oh, yeah. got it wrong. And the title said Impact Women's Champion. Oh. Do you know what? For all they did, it's, it's Oh, well, whatever. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, it's probably not. The eyes of the... I think a lot of eyes were on that moment. Yes. So they had, like, you know, of all the stuff that they, they didn't have to necessarily get right and didn't get right in the Rumbles this year, I think they had to get that right. Yeah. Because uh, everyone was like, go on then. You, if, if Michelle McCool chucks her out in three seconds, <laughs> we are having your life. Yeah, yeah. And she, she had a good run in there. And the elimination was actually a really fun, creative elimination yeah. from somebody with standing. Yeah, it was leader, eventually made by leader. leader. Yeah, yeah. Right. and so I think someone else said it online. I agree. Uh, WWE doing more to help Impact Wrestling in a few weeks than Impact did with as AW did for Impact last year. Uh, oh yeah, wow, well, that's, that seems a bit. Uh, oh, it's sarcastic. Sorry, sorry. Just enjoy wrestling. PNG. Thank you. Uh, the final four is Shayna Baszler, Charlotte Flair. Bianca Belair and the returning Ronda Rousey will assimilate Charlotte to win the match and is treated like, well, Ronda Rousey and obviously gets a giant push, which I guess we should have all seen coming given that the, the news leak last week. I would have probably preferred not knowing that watching yeah, this. I probably would have gone, yeah. oh, she's back, all right. But yeah, I think rest of the news. In terms of um, if Ronda was going to win, I think it was absolutely the right thing to do to have Charlotte Flair there at the end. Because I think if anybody else been opposite Ronda Rousey, I think we'd have seen the sentiment be very different. I think yeah. That, because like Ronda's very much like handpicked to come in and be successful. I think, you know, it, it might have had like a Roman Reigns rumble win type effect. Yeah. So to have Charlotte in there who people absolutely didn't want in there, that was perfect. I'd have almost doubled down on that if I was putting my, my mind palace on to write this. I'd have had Charlotte come in first, survive the whole thing just to annoy everybody. <laughs> And have like literally, she chucks like like the fight like you. She she clears the ring before number thirty comes out, and she's like, "It's just me. I'm the best." Countdown ten. Then Ronda comes out at thirty. Charlotte runs at her, and she just hoys her out. Yeah. I think, yeah, personally, yeah. if you're gonna do, I think, but either way, I think Charlotte being in there at the end with Ronda was the right thing to do. I think so. I totally agree. Yeah. Um, so, I, what were your thoughts on the Rumble overall? Well, I thought that it was more. I, so I think it was the better of the two. I was more engaged watching this one. Mm. The men's one was way more like run of the mill and, you know, it just wasn't as... It didn't feel like a, a proper rumble, you know mm. what I mean? I didn't feel like, oh, a good one. This one was all right. I don't think it was like... 
better than previous years' rumbles. I just think it might have looked good compared to the men's one. But it was the better of the two, I will say that. But I was really, I've, I mentioned it specifically in the notes just because I was so sh- surprised. Sasha Banks looks like she's going to be like the Iron Woman of the Rumble. And then v- Zelina Vega eliminates her for like no reason. I just remember thinking, maybe I'm just biased because I'm a big fan of Sasha, but I don't know. Mm. I was quite, it it felt, felt, a bit, though, yeah. felt a bit weird. There were a few or, of those. Or, sure, she's the current women's tag champion. Yeah, Sasha needs who it. would, who you know what, you might, have, you, might have, you might have nailed it. It's going to be Sasha and Tamina going after those <laughs> tag team titles. You've nailed it. It's going to be Sasha pinning Zelina on, Zelina on SmackDown and never mentioning it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I also forgot to mention, but a lot of people mentioned it, was Tamina kept breaking up elimination attempts. <laughs> like, And commentary were like, Tamina, once again, playing spoiler. And I'm like, it's Royal Rumble, lads. <laughs> Get them gone. Tamina, again, rubbish. <laughs> That's exactly what they said on Combs. Tamina, again, rubbish. Yeah, brilliant. (laughs) Yeah, well done. So, yeah, I think it wasn't an amazing rumble, but there was nothing there that was, like, uh, ridiculous or lengthened down, no offensive moments. It was just a rumble. Some stuff happened. Lots of guest stars. Felt bad for Sarah Logan because she didn't last very long at all. And then the Bellas eliminated her and her pal and went, way bloody loser. Oh, and it sets up, sorry, and it's Liv Morgan. She sees a friend and she does a trademark move, which is start crying. (laughs) You see that? <laughs> oh, so great. So we're in a match, man. Paul Liv Morgan. Trademark like. her signature move. That's all she she's done. She hasn't won a match. Saves up her special move. <laughs> it's, it's the code. <laughs> it's the worst balanced Wonder World character yeah. of them all. Just a crying Liv Morgan. <laughs> Liv Morgan lasted a while. She did all right. Liv Morgan wins in three minutes ten no. with the cry. <laughs> Liv did all right. She was she did well. She wins moment. with cry. Oh, and... Um, oh, if he's distracted, she's going to throw her cry in the eyes of her opponent. <laughs> cry in the eyes. Ah. Throw, throws her cry. Yeah. Not her tears. That's right. Throws, throws cry. her cry. Yeah, that's that's even better. That's why it hurts. <laughs> and then Becky Lynch defeats Dewdrop with an avalanche manhandle slam to retain the Raw Women's title. This was a perfectly well put match but two as you said again? before yeah yeah two, right sorry two, I yeah, no, no, that was exactly going to go with what you said before wow Dewdrop that character who I Am, am I supposed to like her? She was a bad person a while ago. Now she's a goodie. But she hasn't done nothing. She's just against the baddie. Doesn't matter, though, because the crowd was distracted by the WrestleMania sign <laughs> being on fire <laughs> and having to be lowered. Having to move people out the way uh, so they could do the fire Can you say it again, it. but with just like 20% more Alvarez? It did fine, sound a bit the Alvarez, being on, being They <laughs> lowered the sign, <laughs> which was on fire. <laughs> Matthew's only recently started doing this. I love it. It's I so love good. that you, you do it. I love that you do it. Is it because on the odd time on the classic reviews we will do a bit of Melter? Oh, do you do a bit of that? Oh, I, I can't do my Melter anymore. Oh. Just, I just lost the just, ability just to Henry, so stop listening to him. Oh. So, but I just mumble and stumble. So uh, the sign, <laughs> which is uh, you know, uh, you know uh, signs, which of course are invented by the Japanese in 1983. Say <laughs> like, what? Uh, you, you, you. I mean, they say you can't kill two birds with one stone, but uh, I guess it depends on the size uh, of, um, uh, of, uh, uh, of of the stone. Of the yeah, uh, oh, sorry, my my internet's just coming on. No, Dave, <laughs> you've got mail. <laughs> oh, sorry, I just updated my OS. <laughs> anyway, yeah, oh, good. there's a new Sim City out. <laughs> Ooh, The Sims 2. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just playing Torrance Passage on the... From the Torrance Passage? <laughs> Torrance <laughs> Passage! Oh, really, really proud from of myself. From the grassy yeah. knoll, yeah. Jack. <laughs> from the grassy knoll. Emotional yeah. challenge. Shout out for anybody who... Secret of Monkey Island comes on a six disc. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to anybody Fluffy. who remembers Torrance Passage, because I do. I remember oh. Boogle, the little thing you had, the little cat, the purple cat. Yeah. That you could change into any shape. Yeah. What a game. What a That's game. amazing. My Andy had it. She also had the Feeble Files. Oh. Well, no, we had Zubinis. Sorcerer, Simon the Sorcerer. Oh, I remember Simon the Sorcerer. Yeah. All these Sierra games, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Day of the Tentacle. I'm going to chuck yeah. that into the into the environment. That's amazing. Don't remember that. Don't think I can oh, put that I in did. the crown of John. Yeah. Sam and Max. That's it, the road. Oh, that's it. They go to the carnival, don't they? Yeah, and stuff. none of the game makes any sense or a walk through. Let's do a point and click podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do not threaten me with a good time. Oh, <laughs> do not threaten me with a good time. As long as we play Grim Fandango at some wait, point. Wait, wait, So, ah, oh, hey, Max, this WrestleMania sign appears to be on fire. <laughs> what are we going to do? Use 
fire extinguisher. I can't do it. Open fire extinguisher. I can't do it. Throw fire extinguisher. That's it. Stupid game. I'd rather not. <laughs> then Brock Lesnar and Lashley have their match. But again, is it heel, face, facey heel? So, show really so I, oh, Lesnar's, Lesnar's face. My choice, but Lashley's like, but, uh, so, uh, on Raw he came out like, hey, high-fiving the uh, kids and stuff. In the front I was row. watching this with, um, with Fraser and Owen in here. And not in this very room, but in this <laughs> office. In this very room. But um, we were watching this match and I went, oh, so Lashley's a face now then. And they both, and I, it was a bad choice of word. I said, I accused them of gaslighting me, right? Because the, through the whole, it's not, it's not very sensitive. But through the whole match, they were going, Jack, stop it. He's a, he's a heel. He's a heel. Look at him. And then when he won, he high-fived every kid on the right. way to the back. Yeah. I was like, oh, really, guys? Come on. But then on Raw, they were proven right again because then he was a heel. He, he did both. I don't, again, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. Whether, this is shame, this a, has Shane McMahon's dirty, sweaty fingerprints all over it. <laughs> they only come out as a baby face, I think, at the Madison Square Garden show, After, where they were really depleted of people, and Bobby ended up teaming with Damien Priest, and they and he baby-faced it there. It, the Hurt Business, yeah. they, they like, hey, and he went, no, I'm not with you anymore. That's and then a they kind of, then they, Yeah, they, they, <laughs> his, his cronies, his hired goons leaving him has turned him face... And the crowd are like, yeah, we like Lashley. It's kind of work because you do hear cheers for him, but it's like, okay. Well, it's it's easy to cheer Lashley. We saw that at WrestleMania against Drew. Lashley. That was so great. Drew's like, that's Good right. Drew. I've been Fuck holding, off. I've been holding the, the raw on me back this entire time. As soon as you got there, 50 50 cheers for oh, Lashley Drew because Lashley was so good. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. this match, it was good for what it was, which is more storyline than match, because you know they did the German suplexes, some of them ugly, <laughs> which I liked. Yeah, yeah, massive shoulders. It added to it, but yep. I was like, oh, careful, lads. Yeah. Um, he spears, so then Roman Reigns shows up, spears Lesnar before being handed the title oh. by Paul Heyman. Oh, and he uses it to lay Brock out. Big Bob wins. He's WWE champion again. Hooray. So I wonder if Roman will have, was there, have I, maybe I've missed it, but has Roman got a clear reason? Does he just not like Lesnar, so he's decided to screw him out of it? I think he's like, yeah, I hate losing 19 times to Lesnar all these <laughs> yeah. years. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Is maybe. it more just the fact that the, the fix was always, Paul Heyman was was behind but What's it? he achieved by doing this? Just to, uh, because, because bear in mind that we are we're playing some weird old catch up game because oh Roman mm, missed because Roman one. missed day yeah, one, so they're kind right. of having to find their way back round. This again. would presumably have happened at day one, maybe. Oh, no, 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 because they, no, because they would have. I think they would have teased it. And they they probably would have away. done. They would have. They would yeah, yeah, descent, yeah, right. descent, 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 and then maybe either day when all the rumble had. Yeah, right. The turn there. Yeah. Um, but I think maybe the you know if I'm being sensible and I'm giving them too much credit, <laughs> um, Heyman will come out, come out and spat down, and he'll say something on the lines of you know the one way to really hurt Brock Lesnar is to take titles from him. Mm. He, he, you know, the one thing that you know that, that it's like a dragon, for isn't it? Yeah, he holds it away for ages as well. This is this thing, yeah. this is um this is the stealing Smaug's treasure. Yeah, yeah. And Smaug, and now Brock Lesnar's on his way to SmackDown to burn the village down. <laughs> yeah, like, I am Brock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. Who's Martin Freeman? Is Heyman Martin Freeman? <laughs> Uh, I think Roman Reigns is Martin. <laughs> Roman Reigns is Bilbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bilbo <Wow>. Uwa. <laughs> oh no! Let that, that sink in for a bit. What's yeah. happened to me? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's it. Isolate Cut that, that out. Cut that out. Please. Isolate that. What, what's happened to me? Because I feel like subconsciously when Ross is here, maybe I suppress my nerdier references, but I've been whipping yeah. out Torrance Passage. I've even got involved with a bit of Torrance. know your audience. Yeah, man. Tip for Twitter if you want to clip that out. When Scott Bakula wakes up in Quantum Leap. <laughs> what what's happened to me? <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, it's gonna be a clip. Yeah. It's gonna be a clip. It, it, it better be. I'd be yeah. furious if it's not. <laughs> I think maybe, and, and we joked about this in the classic SmackDown review, which we recorded before this, yeah. but was going out after this, because time is a construct of human perception. Yes. Um we we joke that I'm on this podcast this week, so 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 you're gonna be in a in, unfortunately caught in the crossfire of of a bunch of SmackDown review jokes. Right. And I wonder whether you've subconsciously known that and gone, right. 
I'm, gonna I'm, rub I'm up bringing the nerd. out Simon the Sorcerer yeah. and Lord of the Rings references. Yes. I'm going to keep up with the pace of these. I'm going <laughs> to. I say, keep the pace. One of them's got a cane. It's a trade. So it's it's like a, a Rocky Four trading montage, but instead of in the gym, I'm just surfing the web, learning, playing yeah. all games and stuff. Where's the Amiga? Like, oh no. <laughs> Pong, eh? Oh! <laughs> You're the best <laughs> around. <laughs> Nothing's going to ever we're, keep you down. <laughs> we're somewhere like balancing out. Well, like Puppet Jack up here, like, hey, uh, Duncan Ferguson, former midfield. <laughs> uh, there we go. Yeah. Fantastic. Here we go. There's a quarter filled. Uh, Edge and Beth Phoenix beat The Miz and Maurice in their mixed tag match. This was a match that happened. It was certainly mixed. It was like house showy almost, wasn't it? It was yeah. like just fun for the kids. Yeah. Just, well, specifically for their kids who were watching. Yeah, I've had some bad guys win, so some good guys winning. La, la, la. Uh, it's just done then. It was what Please. it needed to be. Yeah, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Just a little feud, wasn't it? Yeah. I suppose. Yeah, we just, you know, we'll, we'll bring the kids to work today. Yeah. yeah. They can I just, felt bad just sit there while mum and dad just have a fight. I felt <laughs> bad for Munro Sky. Balling her eyes out, probably, watching yeah. her mum and dad get battered. Bless her. I know. It was fine. It was just, I wasn't like, they, they were, you know, Maurice isn't a massively capable wrestler. She did what she did very well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, finish was good, both doing glam slams. That's nice. Just, yeah. It was just fine. I think Mrs. Dad would have been telling uh, the daughter, it's all right, man, the fake. <laughs> on camera <laughs> door bollocks yeah. uh, George that's, yes yeah. the, Miz, no, the Miz's dad that's his the name Miz's dad. Yeah. the Miz's dad first name the Miz surname the dad mm. the best thing in the match by far though Beth Phoenix's hair oh, oh wow oh. yeah all hair Ooh. don't care it's amazing you know Ross has moved the week <laughs> Beth Phoenix's hair okay yeah the barely move of the week it did yeah. well to stay yeah, in yeah, yeah. and then the men's Royal Rumble. Actually, it's worth noting, all the other matches that weren't Rumble matches, nothing went longer than like 10 minutes. Yeah. Or just about over 10 minutes of change, uh, which I was happy with. I think the timing, because you, you're doing two Rumbles. Right. So you, and the separate match, so obviously. Yeah, the two Rumbles, you know, got two Rumble matches, so you've got to keep everything tight and bright. Right. It's a lot. Mm. Otherwise, you're going to have like a five hour pay with two Rumbles. And for the crowd's yeah. sake as well, right. you know, consuming twice the amount of Rumblage, mm. which is the official word. The, the Rumblage. The Rumblage. So the men's Royal Rumble. Let's go over recap it first thing, give our thoughts. AJ Styles enters at number one. He seems to be going it for long haul, but eventually he gets eliminated by Madcap Moss for no real reason. Oh, so Again, the, what, somebody's uh, not the same brand does. Cunningly, I'd uh, structure that sentence the same as the Sasha Banks. You did. Reasons. I noticed that. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Uh, obviously, starts with number two is Nakamura. Yes. It's like, ooh, shades of their so. underwhelming feud they had. Uh -huh. Great. Chad Gable gets everybody to team up to eliminate Omos with AJ getting the final shove. I like that because I thought, all right, here comes Chad. He's going to come out and they're going to go, hey, we have to team up. Team to get him. On three, we'll go, lads. One, two. And then only he runs and Omos pins. No, Damien Priest went first, gets eliminated. And I go, well, what are they doing? And as he's got his back turned, eliminated him, they all ganged up on him and eliminated him. Good strategy. Chad Gable's gimmick is he's smart and he actually gets oh, stuff done. Fraser Fantastic. Porter with the best rugby wrestling reference I've ever heard when oh, we were watching on. it. Dom Mysterio runs out. They're all facing the ramp trying to eliminate Omos. And instead of yanking him like from his arm from the outside, Dom runs in and joins the group from the back. And Fraser was like, oh, he's just joined the ruck. I was like, oh, yeah. what a... Yes, Fraser. Because yes. you're not allowed to do that in rugby. You've got to join the ruck yeah. from the back. And Dom demonstrated yeah. that. Dom knew perfectly. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Loves a bit of rugby, does Dom? Of course, it loves a bit of yeah. ruggers. Anyway, uh, we have Johnny Knoxville shows up, and it's awesome as that you hear that down, 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 crowd. Yay! I really Timeless. thought you meant Mizaho's theme because everyone said he was wrestling like an all Japan wrestler. Oh, he I, gave I, AJ I, just a massive forearm. I was gonna, yeah, I will go with that. Yeah, Knoxville's forearm and AJ was one of the best forearms I've seen in WWE. <laughs> I don't know if it was meant to be, but it was. It worked. <laughs> Proper. He didn't move a proper oh. forearm. Yeah. Good for Knoxville. Oh, Went yeah. for it. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I thought he looked great in there. Yeah, yeah, you know what? There's there's talk of him coming back to do a Mania match with Sami Zayn. But a bit, oh, okay, right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did hope for that. But, yeah. Um, yeah. but I'm I'm all up, I'm I'm all in for that. Mm. I, I, I think, think Knoxville would be, would be well. really good. Yeah. Mm. I'm all in. Yeah. yeah. Knoxville starts to beat up Sami Zayn, but it's taken out by AJ and Montez Ford. Uh Sami steals elimination and taunts Knoxville off the top rope before being shoved out as well. Yeah, he, Knoxville took a bunch of moves. He was treated like Daniel Pewter, and then he was thrown out. So the, I guess Aye. that leads, that lends 
So that makes Tom's scenario more likely. If, mm. if, if, if Zane got the better of him, and he showed up at the Jackass premiere, apparently, yes. and got thrown I was going to say, yeah, move on to that. Yeah, there were the many photos of him being escorted out. I saw a little video and of it. it. Oh, I just saw Sami Zayn on Twitter. These photos make it look like I was uh, thrown out. I was trying to, some sort of crazy attack. This is ridiculous. Please take these down. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. very good. He's doing a very, very good job yeah. of it. Uh, Kofi Kingston tries doing his thing. Doesn't work. Fair enough. Surprise entrants include Drew McIntyre, Returning from injury to a big pop, mm -hmm. which is good to see because I think people just forget about the crap soul promos. Uh, Bad Bunny, who is like, oh, okay, you're back. That's nice. But it's like, oh, okay, don't don't overstay your welcome. Oh, like, oh, <laughs> he was uh, in there a while. Yeah. I thought he might be in and out and shaking all about. But like like he was clutching onto the bottom of the rumble like he uh, was a, like a, like a regular wrestler, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a road dog. He yeah. is almost uh, good enough to be a regular wrestler. Maybe. Yeah, I th but I think the fact that he's not, he's a hes a uh, rapper. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's right. not yeah, winning. He's, he's no. a rapper. Oh, yeah. no, so you're right, he wouldn't, he's not winning. Lesnar enters at number 30, and everyone goes, wow, but many people predicted that that was going to happen, so I was like, yeah, be not because, wow, crazy booking, but because who the hell else was going to win this? Oh, yeah. He eliminates Orton, Bad Bunny, Riddle, the mighty, mighty Shane McMahon, <laughs> and finally, Drew McIntyre. So mm. least give him a bit there. I wish they'd had more of them. I was about to say, mm. the last... Bit there, like, oh, okay, we're gonna get Drew and Brock for a bit, fantastic. And it was they did one move and then he threw him out. Yeah, like, they kept it oh. dead short for whatever reason. It, yeah, it was super short. Mm. They then did the point of the WrestleMania sign because they had to set it on fire again <laughs> and had to move the, the fans up where we knew it was there. They had to move out the way because we're, we're gonna do the thing again. It's like a Simpsons joke or something like the signs on fire again, dad, the signs on fire <laughs> again. You can just hear the faint crackle in the dip. Lesnar's was... chuckling to himself. The sign's on fire. Yeah, yeah. I did that. Yeah. <laughs> Lesnar pointed to the sign with all the enthusiasm of me when we did that TikTok before. He wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't, he's not the person I think of when I think you'll be a good boy and pointed the sign. Mm. He kind of went like, yep, that one. Like, yeah, I have to do this. Yeah. So, so <sighs> overall thoughts on this rumble, Jack? Um, run of the mill, or like underwhelming, I suppose. The worst of the two rumbles on the night. We've since learned about the production chaos that was going yeah. on. And with hindsight, you can sort of tell. In fact, I want to watch it back maybe and see if the chaos is more apparent. But yeah, no, I just felt... Well, one one bit of the story that we didn't quite touch on was that Triple H was absent, obviously. And he's had a hand, like Shane, in producing the Royal Rumble matches in recent years. And I read that apparently Triple H is really, really good. People like him on the Rumble because... He's really good at giving people little showcase moments, not necessarily like the winner or whoever, but he's good at putting in little bits of continuation or little the little elements that add, add up mm. to make a good rumble. And they were, it, you, having read that, I was like, that makes total sense because they were all gar like, largely absent, especially from the men's. And I thought, well, maybe Triple H should have, if he'd been there, maybe it would have been better. So yeah. yeah, there wasn't many little highlights for people. Like Chad Gable got to look good. Yes. Kofi obviously didn't. Um, then it was, what, Brock? People, yeah. Oh, you need to look protecting, I guess. Um, what about yourself? It was the worst Royal Rumble I've ever seen. Oh! See, I saw a and lot I, of people saying this. I saw a lot of people I've saying these exact same things. Why? Uh, like, it was ever? underwhelming. Yeah. It was dis I was disinterested. There were no yeah. spots in there that really inspired me. People who should have got a much brighter shine. I'm not even just talking about the surprises. We'll get to those in a second. I feel like that the people who had who could have had great exposure in there were given nothing of any worth in there. I feel like people were eliminated in a very haphazard, disinteresting manner when really you could have told stories with how and why they were eliminated. I thought it's a... It, by the, the fact that by the by the by the twenty seventh entrant, I have gone from hoping that Brock Lesnar's not winning it to begging Brock Lesnar to win it and just clear this out because there is nobody that inspired me to win. Okay, it's great when you go into a rumble and you don't know who's going to win. It's worse when you go into a rumble and you don't care who's going to win. Oh. That's even worse. The surprises, and I know people go, it's not. It shouldn't be about the surprises. Don't complain about the surprises. No, I'm going to complain about the surprises because surprises are a big part of what the Royal Rumble is all about. Yeah, it's like saying. Don't worry about Christmas present wrapping. Like you know, it's part of the thing. Is the surprise of what it is. If you got Christmas presents and you walked into you walked into your house and there was a DVD player and a bike clearly on show, it wouldn't be half as fun. Part of it is the surprises, and you need those surprises in the Rumble. And the surprises were were were, were just 
were, were crap in the men's one. The women's one, not so much. There were some good bits in there. Uh, I thought Shane McMahon was an embarrassment to be in there. I think the fact that Shane McMahon decided, I'm going to book this Rumble. Watch how brilliant I am in the Rumble. And I thought, well, it's great to see Bad Bunny in there. The fact he should not have been in the Final Four. Got a nice shine moment with Brock Lesnar. I thought that was great. The fact the Final Four was Brock Lesnar, Drew McIntyre, Shane McMahon, and Bad Bunny was embarrassing. Like Considering the amount of talent, the amount of opportunity that presented itself, and you chose to do none of those and have people like AJ Styles eliminated by Moss and Corbin. That was weird, to yeah. have Kevin Owens eliminated by Shane McMahon. It uh, for that I've watched okay, people will cite other rumbles. Uh the 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 40 man one. Okay, that wasn't the best one because you had heel Michael Cole commentator all the way uh, through, yeah. but you had those real shock moments that kept you ticking over including right at the very end, Santino yeah. Morella nearly winning the darn thing. Like stuff like that's amazing. The 1995 Royal Rumble. That yeah. was a really tough time for the company. We're going into an era where there is absolutely nobody on the roster, but what a story you told. Bulldog and Shawn Michaels in at number 1 mm. and 2, there at the very end. Skin in the cat, Shawn Michaels winning the Rumble out of nowhere. Even that had better story. Ellen than the 2022 Men's Royal Rumble. It was the worst Royal Rumble I have ever seen. And I love the Rumble. It's my favorite pay-per-view of the year. Nobody, nobody, nobody dare come at me and say I'm an anti-WWE guy because I love the bones off of the Royal Rumble. It's my favorite show of the year. And I felt very disappointed by what the Men's Rumble offered me this year. Order. Let's see what we do Order. next year. Order. There you go. There you I would go. disagree slightly. <laughs> Good luck. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, I think when you said 95, I was like, oh, the 95 one maybe is my least favorite one. But even that had, like, in my opinion, that the, had a cool story yeah. that, that you could reflect yeah. on it. More story is still better than no story. Well, you could yeah. say the same about 99, I guess, which is also historically considered one of the worst rumbles. 2015 might take it for me. That might still be the worst one. 2014 and 2015. It's they a, had that's stories, why I would but the ne- stories sorry. were bad. So, <laughs> But you're right. Enough, then. It, it's unique in that it was the, the most... Empty rumble, but with um, so much potential. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, much yeah. potential. Is there? Yeah, yeah. But who could have potentially done anything? I could. Okay, right. Okay. Um, you ever, you ever watch Sherlock? Uh, the one with um Martin Freeman. Benedict Cumberbatch in. Yeah. Where he'll say, "Have you got any ideas, Sherlock?" And he'll say, "Yeah, I've got about seven <laughs> Within an instant, like, any ideas on what you could have done? Yeah, I've got about eight different ideas of what you could have done for the Rumble. And and they all involve the people that were there. You could have held a compelling Rumble with the talent oh, that yeah. you had, yeah. without a doubt. There's no, like, it, was, it wasn't like, it wasn't for a lack of star power. There's a few people left on the bench, bizarrely, uh, for whatever reason. There's a few people that got more Bala. of a shine, bizarrely. Oh, yeah, Bala. Like, yeah, yeah, who decided true. that of all the wrestlers in the Rumble, Mad Cat Mars and Baron Corbin would be the, would be the killer <laughs> duo this year? Like, why is, like, like the Rick Boogs thing, like, I, I, I remember, like, Boogs with the dungarees and stuff, playing the guitar, screaming Nakamura is really cool. Why is he coming out now as, like, a vaudeville wrestler? And, like, it's almost, I feel like Vincent just told him, go out there and flex and do nothing else. Like they like before he ran out, they drained him of all his charisma and then yeah. sent him out into the rumble. He didn't have any way near the pop I thought was gonna get. They came out with singles because one, he's not come out to Nakamura, ah, Nakamura's theme, the theme he plays. Yeah. And then second of all, he did a very nice press slam, two hands. That was really cool. People like, yeah, whatever. And then he they're like, wow, he's doing that with one hand. And the other hand, the other guy was like down here. So oh, he was, he like, was No, it wasn't one-handed, was it? One hand. Hand. Was it? The move still no, looked, it wasn't. The move still looked good, but I feel like they were trying to make us go, isn't Boogs cool, guys? And the crowd no. didn't seem to be... I thought they were loving Boogs right now, but whereas, no, they like him playing no, part, guitar part, part and part, part doing that. Boogs. Him coming out with his... 1920 mm. strongman circus gear going, well, look, one and a half hands. So it's not weird. Like. So weird. I would not say it was that bad because watched it in a vortex, I actually was like, oh, yeah, it's cool. I don't know who's going to win. I did realize, oh, because nobody, <laughs> no one's roster should be winning apart from Brock at this point. No, and I just Apart from that. what? Who? Orton. AJ Styles. No. Orton, potentially. Riddle, why not? Big E. Montez. Riddle apparently Drew was one of these. Big, Big E has been, all right, I hope you enjoyed your... I hope you enjoyed your, your place why, near the sun, why? Icarus, because you're going my, back down. I mean, I mean, I'm, why? I mean, no. My uh, issue wasn't too oh. much with the winner, but but I definitely agree fully with, with what you're saying. Like, they could have given people more of a shine everywhere in the Rumble. There was yeah. space for everything. There was so many yeah, bits right. where no you No one got a chance to look good apart from <laughs> my cat, Martin and Gold. And Shane. And Shane McMahon. Yeah. <laughs> Shane, <laughs> Shane taking it to people. Yeah. So on. it was only when I went online and people said, yeah, like, did the comic book guy worst Rumble ever? I went... Was it that bad? I still had a chance to rewatch it, but the... everything you... I think it's weird. I agree <coughs> with everything that reason. Yeah, I liked it because I was hyped for the rumble. Mm. Like like you, rumble, rumble, rumble. So I'm not like mad watching it, but I'm just there going, that was a rumble. Yeah. I felt similar after 
2017, maybe, or 2019. Who was the winner? Uh, Orton won 2017. Yeah, he did. And then, um, was that the one where the, they were on the big ramp and the bigger guys had to get little carts down to the ring? Yeah. I felt underwhelmed after this one, but I imagine, after that one, but I imagine the compared to this one, it probably was better. There were stories going on. There was things happening. But that was the one where it felt like Taker was there, and then Goldberg and Lesnar, and all the smaller current guys got chucked out by the big old lads instantly. And I felt like that with Lesnar. He just eliminated like the last six people, and I thought, mm. well, that's very quick. Very underwhelming. Yeah. Uh, probably the live reports were, yeah, this was a problem. This was not enjoyable. Really? Yeah, the few ones I read was like, oh, because sometimes the crowd were like, yay! And then your next bit was like, wow, they can't even get the fake crowd <laughs> working on this. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this is awesome. Dot, dot, wav isn't working properly. Yeah. But I do want to emphasize that I love the rumble. Like, I yeah, love look, the rumble. And the reason I think most why I love the rumble. The, the reason why there's so much vitriol here is because I love the Royal Rumble so much. Whatever promotion, any promotion on the planet, AEW, Impact, New Japan, the rumble in WWE in particular is my favorite show of the year. And that's mm. been down to the great work WWE have done to present it as must-watch television every single year. So that's respect yeah. to WWE for doing it. They just really missed the mark this year yeah. and really missed the mark this year, yeah. in my opinion. You wouldn't say that if it was AW, mate. So. Oh, if it was AW. Oh, best rumble ever, mate. <laughs> Cheers, Tony. Yeah. I can, can't say it was the it worst one ever because 2014 <laughs> exists. Oh, Shane, in AW, may be amazing. <laughs> but I... So, hmm... Monday Night Raw the day afterwards. And then Pierce opens the show and tells us what happened at the Royal Rumble, like the chorus in a Greek tragedy. <laughs> Bloody hell. He says that Lashley would defend his UD1 Dewey title at Elimination Chamber, but is interrupted by uh, Babyface Heel Bob, an MVP, who aren't happy about this. Lesnar arrives and tells Lashley that he didn't really beat him, but he's more interested in facing Roman at WrestleMania. However, he still wants to win back the Dewey title as well, which doesn't please Lashley. They scuffle, MVP drags Bobby away, Pierce puts Lesnar in the Elimination Chamber. Right, yep. Yeah. Well, this is more like a, like a ironing out situation, yep. wasn't it? Like, here, right, this is what's going to happen next. Again, so weird that they're like, okay, here's, here's the next thing that's happening in a few weeks' time, so you don't have to watch Raw. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So weird. I've right. just kind of got used to that now, because there used to be a point, you know, as we all know as fans, where, like, the story would begat something like that happening, whereas mm. now it's just like, oh, it's Elimination Chamber time, best put some people in it. I mentioned yep. this and on... that's all right, I get it, it's business. I mentioned on my Straight to Hell episode with Ross a couple of years ago now, that one of my things was this method of storytelling and I hate the way that... So the, the South Park creators have this theory where like they write down all their major plot points and then if the connecting words are because or but, then that's a good thing. But if the connecting words are and then, and then, and then, which, then it's a bad thing. And that's sort of what it feels like here, doesn't it? It's like uh, the Royal Rumble's happened and then this is going to happen rather mm. than this happened at the Rumble, which means that this... It does sort of fit that because of Lesnar winning, but... Mm. The way they go about it, it's quite clunky, I feel. Mm -hmm. AJ Styles missed out on his chance to win his first ever Royal Rumble, but he gets a chance to headline WrestleMania in the yeah, elimination chamber. They could have made more of that. They could have, yeah. Moss. <laughs> yeah. 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 If AJ Styles had won it and he was on the right of brand, course, of course. You know what I, mean. I got what you mean. Uh, Rhea Ripley beats former friend Nikki Ash in a singles match, clean as a whistle. Yeah. So that's the start of that feud. <laughs> <laughs> Chad Gable and Riddle get ready for the scooter race. Oh, we oh. learn that'll be 50 laps around the arena. 50 laps of around the arena. <laughs> the arena. Are you meaning to tell me <laughs> they went around? Our truth officiates. We cut back to the race throughout the night, including hilarious interactions with Omos and the Street Profits. Finally, they race down the ramp. Uh, I didn't care about the rest of this, but then they race down the ramp. Gable crashes, but Omos attacks Riddle before he crosses the finish line. No Otis. You put, Did I put Omos attacks Riddle? Almost, yeah. Damn. Nice. Otis attacks Riddle. <laughs> Sorry. Before he crosses the finish line, Gable does donuts around Riddle yeah. before doing that. That bit I enjoyed. Uh, but the I rest was of it really was like an episode of Power Rangers. I was really impressed with Gable's fall off the scooter on the ramp. I thought it looked convincing. I was like, Jesus. Oh, it's a really talented guy. They really are, aren't they? Yeah. Two, two highlights of uh, Raw right now, these two. Uh, Alexa Bliss is still in therapy, talking about Lily. The therapist brings out a replica Lily, which Bliss thinks is the real one. That's it. The, the Miz faces Dominic. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. The Miz faces Dominic Mysterio and gets Ray ejected from ringside by the referee. Miz wins. That was good. Just yeah. a match. Ray, yeah. well, Miz diving, though, was funny. And yeah. then going, he's tripped me. And it was good. Yeah. Fun stuff. Yeah, I don't know what else to yep. really say. It was just a match. It's time for the Kevin Owens Show, a live podcast. This <laughs> week's guest is a limping Seth Rollins. Owens says that Seth is the universal champion of his heart. Seth <laughs> reveals that he's going to be in the Elimination Chamber match. 
Owens has to win a qualifying match to get in, and that's why does Seth get whatever? Because Seth, Owens has Seth, to win a because Seth beat the Universal Champion. Uh, yeah, okay. uh, that was what yeah, I yeah, thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Owen has to win a qualifying match to get him and ask Seth to threaten to pull out the chamber if Kev isn't put in too. Seth doesn't seem keen. Yes, yeah, so Owens goes, sorry, because I wrote that a bit. I had to jam it all in, but that's fine. Owens goes, hang on, you get straight in. I've got to qualify. Have a word with Adam Pierce and Sonia Deville and tell them that if I don't get put in automatically, then you'll pull out because you're my best mate. And Ron's is like, uh, hmm. <laughs> rather just be in the chamber, mate. Yeah. It's felt like two heels talking, but the crowd were cheering. Because they're because they're entertaining. You could say this about every yeah, segment. I think. Yeah, it's yeah. true. It's true. It's true. Yeah. I think they'd cheer Owens whenever because he's so funny and yeah. good at his job. Yeah. Instead, Owens has to face Austin Theory in a qualifying match and loses. So apparently, Theory is Shane's replacement. Shane was going to be in the chamber. Oh God! I've never <laughs> been happy to see Austin Theory. No, Shane in the chamber, man. That would have been good. Yeah, on those Iron Maidens from back in the day. Dive <laughs> in the uh, chokey. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler, one half of those dirty dogs, loses a singles match to hometown boy, Angelo Dawkins. The hometown guy won? Yeah, that's it. Da, da, da. That's huge. Crazy, isn't it? That uh, never happens. No embarrassment. To the point where I was asked in, in the news, they, it was sort of revealed by, I think it was Sean Feitful of RossSap.com, mm. uh, who said that originally it was going to be Ford versus Ziggler and it was swapped on the night. So I was speculating, um, you know, is there an injury there? What's happened? But then people went, yeah, but it was in Cincinnati. It was his hometown. Uh, but in that case, as you rightly reacted, well, surely not because he won. Mm. <laughs> like if it, was a, if it was a planned hometown match, he'd have lost. That's how this works. Mm. That's how this works. I'm glad yeah. he got his moment, though. It was nice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Was well, there anything else weirded out when it was like, up next on the Rumble, three, two, one, meh, and a theme played. I went, who the hell's that? Oh, it's the Dirty Dogs theme. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so rarely played on TV. Yeah. Um, also, again, talk about Ziggler. I don't know if it was a good thing or not when he went, well, Dolph Ziggler is second only to Kane in Rumble appearances. Really? Yeah. And I went, okay, cool. How many times has he reached the final? Oh. At least Kane had 01. Yeah. To look back on going, look, oh. me and Austin in the, in the and, last bit. And 2015, him and Big Show dominated. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, thanks. Sigler's <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Didn't win any of them. I've done all mm. those middle of the road rumble appearances yeah. I made. I think that was the biggest issue with the rumble, not necessarily people there. Oh, that guy's not winning. Oh, that guy's not winning. It was like, Jesus Christ, how many, how long have some of these people been around for? Mm, yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, somebody who was definitely absent from the Rumble, Via. <laughs> it was still coming to Raw. <laughs> uh -huh. After on, losing, man. after losing the scooter race, Riddle faces Otis in the Nation Chamber qualifying match and wins. Boo. Chad Gable reveals that the final challenge between the two teams will be a quiz bowl. Because it's Super Bowl soon. Bowl of quiz. So I, I don't oh, know what it means. Yeah, maybe yeah. that was it then, yeah. But I mean... I'm sure it'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be <laughs> Actually, a lot of people like the spelling bee. Um, yeah. Because Gable's so good and funny. He's like Kurt Angle. Yeah. Yeah. Turning chicken poo into chicken soup, that Yeah. Like. AJ Styles beats Rey Mysterio in a five star wrestling rematch to qualify <laughs> for Elimination <laughs> Chamber. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good, good old match but here. They actually had the match, though. They didn't just do a contract sign. <laughs> so it's not the same. That's right. For the next night <laughs> in, in Leeds. In Leeds. Leeds. <laughs> Sheffield. Yeah. It was okay. Sheffield. I was there that yeah. night in Newcastle where they signed the contract oh, for a match man. in Sheffield. And the five star bookers do all doing that Pikachu meme. Like, what? Why, is Why are they booing? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> what a night. see them fight. What a night. It was a night. Oh, it was, it was a magical night. A night. It was magical. It was a night. I walked past AJ Styles in the corridor. It was the first time I was like, hmm. I love that you were you, you. It's for <laughs> you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were backstage. <laughs> I was in the crowd. I was there on on heart duty because because mm. Scarlett Moffat who was heart doing FM, campus, so she was there backstage like annoying all the friends. I yeah. shouldn't say that. But yeah, she was. Yeah, she was. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was there to to film the, the wrestling stuff that she did. So Capital could put it on their Facebook page. But I love the so fact many of us were there. I love the fact that we were we were all there. We didn't but know like, each other. We didn't, we didn't know each no. other then. It was like Susie was there. Susie Kennedy. Oh, Ollie yeah. Sandler, ringside photographer, oh, yeah. was there. That's when I first met those two. Yeah. Ollie Sandler. Kenny McIntosh was there. I knew him already. Yeah. yeah, so many people were there. Wow. Yeah, it's so weird. Like it's like that. Scarlett Moffat went for being just like, oh, that last who did the thing from. Bit. And I was like, Scarlett Moffat, you know, personality extraordinaire, has this to say about you know, I've got to COVID. Say. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> is this the last from Bish? Come on. I've got to say, I, I never was a fan of Scarlett Moffat. I mean, I saw, I've <gasps> no. seen one thing, and I was like, she's all right on this. 
and it was some real no not reality show like a dating show uh-huh. where like it's like four women competing for one guy or vice versa and while the guy goes off the rest of them all have to like prepare a meal or do a task and then he chooses which is the best one or something it's right? just a tv show from the 1950s i know it's that well the episode i happened to watch was four women and one guy it, they may have swapped it around uh-huh. i hope but scarlet's just wandering around this kitchen just having crack with all like the lasses and they're all like uh, like young influencery types and haven't got much about them and scarlet actually was there in that environment she was doing okay oh she has a personality she was having yeah. a bit more bants than they were yeah, yeah i gotta say but apparently at five star she was annoying yeah. the wrestlers. Oh dear. Good. But she's a fan of wrestling. Yeah. There is that. So am I burning a bridge? We could get her on. Nah. No, she'd want, <laughs> no, she, she'd want money. <clears throat> oh. So, mm. no. Uh, Ronda Rousey comes out to talk about her title shot WrestleMania. She's tempted to pick Charlotte to remind Becky that she's on her undercard. Becky interrupts, calls Ronda Rousey a weirdo. <laughs> It says that we've seen her thoughts on Twitter. She's right. We know that Ronda Rousey versus Lynch is the biggest match possible. She tries to hand the mic to Ronda and gets judo thrown. Ronda says she'll announce her decision on SmackDown and leaves. Oh, Ronda, man. Great. Uh, Lita then makes her entrance and talks with Becky for challenging her to a match at the Elimination Chamber. Becky says no, but then Lita Mighty McFly's her into saying, "All right, yeah, I'll change yeah, my mind then." Not there we go. Chicken. And mm. Becky's yeah. like, oh, nobody. I've calls seen that film. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Ronda was all right here, but the hardest worker person in the segment was the person who presses cheer.wav. Mm-hmm. Man, was it noticeable. No, Lita got a huge real pop, I think. Oh, people, yeah. People like Lita. Not forget Lita. Yeah. I think Ronda taking down Becky is weird when we know that, it, well, it seems that Ronda is destined for a match with Charlotte Flair. So why just rock up on Shut Raw? Up. Yeah. Don't say just, it. They're Don't sowing say it. the seeds so early for next year's WrestleMania. Because that's what I'd heard. Yeah. yeah. So like Ronda Becky will be next. Will be why? WrestleMania twenty three. Well, why what? seeds? Being WrestleMania eighty thirty nine. Gosh. But why are they sowing those seeds now for Becky and Ronda? Do you know what? I don't mind them sowing seeds nice and early so they can mm. grow a nice crop. That's true. Oh, very and if something goes wrong, then they can make the they can make it fallow. Yes. Very good. But You're right. I don't. Yes, I'm fine. I don't. I. I. I don't mind long-term storytelling. No. Yeah. I, I I'm a big either. fan of long-term. And callbacks. But oh, maybe call. Yeah. But they're separate. Those we don't. As long as <laughs> they are different things. <laughs> but it, it's weird because I don't trust them quite because they haven't. Uh, they haven't shown much of an interest in long-term storytelling. Oh, I, I have zero trust. So I'm like, I have zero is this trust. real long? Is this real long-term storytelling? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. We'll find out next year. I feel like I'm being led sometimes blindfolded down a hallway and they're going, don't worry, there's not a lamppost there. There's not a lamppost there. Oh, there was a lamppost there. <laughs> sorry, we've just signed a lamppost. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we've just signed a lamppost. <laughs> no sense, I'm sorry. Crowd cheer dot wav. number 29, the lamppost. I formed it in my brain and then I thought, I'm just going to say it anyway. No, we just take, we'll just take the blindfold off you and put it on the lamppost. You'd think just that I was there. the one who'd already filmed a whole podcast today. <laughs> uh, I, I can hear Corey Graves going, oh, the, the fight night light highlight is here the lamppost nice come up with, like bad names though and all lamppost is all elite yeah but highlight you... a... suplex nice it's like northern lights I can't think of one I can't think of one these are rubbish I can't think of one he's the brightest wrestler in the room yeah oh, hey, Lamp- moving on moving on lampage the most electrified lampage <laughs> lampage is good I like lampage thank you very much it's oh no yikes it's... It's NXT. Speaking it's of NXT, rubbish NXT, gimmicks, Yay! NXT 2.0. This, this one's long. This no, it won't, because I'll skip half of it. <laughs> uh, Gunther uh-huh. and the Imperium <laughs> boys take on Roderick Strong and the Creed Brothers in a six-man tag. It's a wonderful little match. I suppose, yeah, I'm glad Jack's pointed out. Gunther gets the pinfall on Brute, and the crowd chant Walter a lot. Mm. Uh, the commentators ignore them. Later, the Diamond Mine argue with the grizzled young veterans <laughs> backstage, so that'd be another good match. Yeah, hey, six-man between these two Teams going at it. Nothing wrong with that. It was good. It was good. Good opener. Mm. And things would only stay good. Who are the baby faces? <laughs> oh, you're very, you're very oh, right. You're very uh, right. It's uh, more heels. It's uh, di- aren't diamond mine faces. No, no. They just, yeah. They're just exclusively wrestle heels for some reason. <laughs> but no, they're heels. Um, they're definitely heels. You got Bivens. No, but they, they never do like cheating. No, but they're they're, no, cheat. but they're the same as Imperium, who don't really do cheating either. They're just too uh, serious. They're no fun. Apart from Bivens. Because mm. mm. they've got Ivy Nile, who's such a heel. She's mm. strong and bullies everyone. What do you want us good. to do? Cheer, boo. Cheer, yeah. Sit down and let you press cheer. Don't wow. Like, I don't know what you want us to do. Uh, I, like match. <laughs> crowd, I like crowd, the match. Crowd liked it. Crowd liked Volta. Yeah. Where was he in this match? No, I don't know. 
Mm-hmm. LA Knight complains backstage about Shane McMahon. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Uh-huh. About Grayson Waller's restraining order against him. Joe Gacy and Harland want to help, but Knight suggests they all head out the ring and he can kick their asses. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. We didn't say yeah, buddy. So just yeah. Yeah. So, uh, hmm. yeah, he's like... He's like, very much the baby face. He, oh, LA Knight's the baby very face. Very baby oh, face. Yeah, yeah, and that's cool. Clearly. Oh, if Rock, was here, cool. if Rock was here. If Ross was here... Oh. Ross always compares LA Knight to The Rock because he's just so... Oh, sounds, he's completely... He sounds exactly yeah. like... <laughs> completely yeah. The Rock. But um, if Rock was here. Rock Tweddle. <laughs> the Rock Tweddle. Toxic Attraction at the ring and want to defend their tag titles against Indy Hartwell and Persia Perota at Vengeance Day. Mm. Yes, that stupid name is back. Kaylee Ray arrives and wants a shot at Mandy Rose's title, but Mandy refuses. Kaylee reminds us she was the longest reigning women's champion of the modern era, but Mandy says that doesn't matter. Because she represents... it was a pandemic and you... Oh, no, she didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Because she represents the pinnacle of what every woman wants to be. Kaylee reminds her that she used to be sucking face with Otis and slipping on the WrestleMania ramp. Kaylee says that she'll have a title shot by the end of the night and slaps Mandy in the face. Yeah, Kaylee Ray's right. She did have, like... A stupidly long reign. She had eight title defenses. <laughs> uh, they were mostly mm. very good matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's good. To be fair. And to be fair, I've done the notes here. Uh, for comparison, yeah, 649 days, eight whole defenses. For comparison, Mako Satomura has held it 237 days, has seven defenses. Okay. So. But you know, isn't there an episode of Raw or SmackDown that's like Triple H's bad day where just things kept going wrong for Triple H? People refer to it as Triple H's bad day. <laughs> There's like a raw or something where he loses the belt or like something goes wrong for him. And he's got to wrestle like three times and it all goes wrong. I think this, I want to watch this now. Have you heard of this, Matthew? What year was it? Don't know. Oh. Triple H is aggression here, maybe. bad day. Triple H is bad day. But um, yeah, I'll have a look. Day. But this was like Mandy Rose's bad yeah. day. We're, we're just getting started. <laughs> oh, we're just yeah, getting started right, with Mandy. Triple H is bad day. Um, have it's... you heard of it, Richard? Uh, I haven't. Damn, have I yeah, made that, this up? Like, I best of... He had those five matches he had to win on SmackDown that one time, oh. 99. The, the, the labors the of Triple H. The Triple labors H. of Triple it H. Was, it was April 17th, 2000. We've passed it then. Was it on SmackDown? It was on... It looks like Raw. What happened? I don't know. I'm going to find out. April 17th, 2000. Triple H's bad day. After WrestleMania 2000. He, oh, it's when Jericho tricks him into a title match. And then, oh! Yeah. That was the bad day? Yeah, that's the end of the night won, pinning yeah, him. Yeah, he won at the end. What a terrible yeah. day. <laughs> Beat him clean Oh, is that like a, a joke on... Reddit. Mike, no, no, Mick no. Foley's have a nice day. Oh. For Triple H's bad maybe. day, maybe. Oh, because they might have had those have a bad day skits. No, no, no. No, that, that, was, was, that was in that January. Was, that was January. Was Foley oh, the commission at the time? No. Um, no. Maybe before he was the commission. No, no, because he just... He just wrestled a bit after WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, Cora, Cora Jade has a singles match with Raquel Gonzalez to prove that she's good enough to team with her in the Dusty Classic. Raquel tells her she can back out if she wants, but Cora refuses. She's so brave. Raquel wins, but Cora earns her respect. Raquel agrees to team with her. I'm sure the match was good, but most of it played out to a black screen. I don't know why this was. I imagine there it was, was a, uh, a wardrobe, wardrobe malfunction. malfunction. Yes. Oh, because I've watched the YouTube highlights. Oh, I made us like Because I was like... I, when I needed to, I'd find bits, but like I, I, this match, I thought that whatever I was, I was like, this has gone wrong. I need to find the highlights. So that explains it. But I thought that's a shame because this was one of the few things on NXT that made sense. It was like a mm. simple little story. It's going to go somewhere. She's proven herself. Yeah. Good. <laughs> that's all I can think. Yeah. Also, enough. Cora Jade looked like Ross's jokes that like Cora Jade is like my dream woman. Because of like how she dresses and is, um, and she's like a skater girl or whatever. Ross thinks of me as like an extra in like, can't think of anything. Skater boy. Yeah, and, like the skater boy videos. And... I don't know. I feel like I feel like if I was picturing what American Rachel looked like, it probably would look like Cora Jade. Oh, you've brought up. Okay. Oh no. I think American Rachel's my band. We named it after a real girl, who. <laughs> a real girl. A real. Not I those fake girls. Talked to hear a real about. girl once, um, and my mate <laughs> like totally ruined it because he was really drunk, uh, but she was American, and her name was Rachel, and then she didn't. My mate embarrassed me in front of her, and then uh, she didn't want to. I mean, it all... <laughs> anyway, um, but we've named the band American Rachel, so... But that's why I picture name. American Rachel. If you're going to shoot the video for she it, Cora Jade would play dark American hair, Rachel. I think. I can't even remember what she looked like, really. She skated in. Maybe it was, Co- maybe it was Cora Jade. Yeah. No, she's a bit younger. Oh, Christ, no. Um, yeah, no, it wasn't Cora Jade. Because I was like 21 or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wasn't, it she's wasn't. She's the girl all the skaters won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get a recap of Pete Dunne 
attacking Tony D'Angelo with a cricket bat. Dunn wants a final match with Tony to settle things once and for all inside a steel cage. Just go check what Cora Jade's real name is. Okay. <laughs> go for it. Because she was American. First name American, surname <laughs> Rachel. Uh, I like I like the old uh, Mafia versus Peaky Blinders war we've got going yeah. on between mm. these two. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I like and with the no, Bob Hoskins, is... the Mafia. <laughs> Pooh them. Their real name is Brianna, so on there. American yeah, Brianna's yeah. in the scan as well. Backstage, Saray walks into some mist. Oh my god! Oh no! Oh god! So again, she's back to being. Her name was Sari. She was a schoolgirl, and she's just walking around like that's a normal thing. And then the mist happens, and she merges, presses the necklace, and she's suddenly. Hi, with stars in their eyes, Saray is. I don't know. Meatloaf. Yeah. <laughs> she faces Kayla Inlay and wins. Backstage, Saray says that with her grandma's necklace, she can do anything. Dakota Kai interrupts and says, no matter how special the relationship is, the sun always sets on it. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm Dakota Kai. It. I'm doing nothing with my life right now. Oh, I feel um, bad for Dakota Kai because she is good enough to be doing something. Yeah. That's a but she, line, a character right now is just like, blah, blah, blah. Well, but, yeah. the character is like, like warning few people of evil. She's like a foreboding, like, oh. Watch out. But you will goes... be King Macbeth. Yeah, she's that. But it never goes anywhere, <laughs> really. So yeah. uh, I, like, I like that, though. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, she really had to go bang. You're going here. to get fired when the cuts <laughs> are coming. <laughs> there, will, <laughs> there will be more releases before the next quarter. <laughs> we will be on the Disney Plus soon. <laughs> you will direct message Tony Khan and he will ignore you. <laughs> WrestleMania will be renamed Snickers Mania. Oh, that's that's very accurate. Duke Hudson is still crap. Still no, stop it. Uh, Duke Hudson says that he's done with gambling. Now he's only addicted to pain. And <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Let's strip that gimmick clean. There you go. You're making people suffer. Dante Chen was always only his first victim. Later, Persia Pro is checking out Duke Hudson's Instagram. <laughs> Indy Hartwell yeah, and Dexter. Yeah, she fancies him. Oh, thinks he's hot. Oh, God. Indy Hartwell and Dexter Loomis disapprove. Brooks Jensen arrives and asks for advice in talking to Caden Carter. Indy says it's all about non-verbal communication and heads off to the hot tub with Dexter. To have right. sex Duke. in the hot tub. <laughs> they might have just had a nice little Or a swim. cuddle. Yeah, or a swim. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't have. I should have assumed. Yeah, of course. Difficult in art. Mm. They're probably going to be browsing Instagram by the looks of things just in the hot tub. But Duke yeah. Hudson, get rid of the poker stuff. He's royal flushed his gimmick away. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. good. Okay, fine. I do worry that he's just going to be this because there's nothing else about cards. It's just him going. He did say Rrr. at the end of the promo that he makes his own luck. So, so none. <laughs> so we get a shot of a luck factory next week. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is where there. I live. He teams up with uh, Riddle to be pot luck. Sorry. And then we get the. And then we get easily. Sorry, I, I was going to try try and do a blind luck one, but I'm not going to even go there. It's team of Star sure. A could be Lucky Star. Oh. No. Uh, Teams up with Hornswoggly could be Lucky Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> it's just very stupid, isn't it? It's really stupid. <laughs> 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 Man, we're getting smoked by Jack here this episode. Uh, <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Oof. Nice one, mate. Yeah. Thank you. Nice yeah. one, yeah. That was good. <laughs> yeah. well, backstage, Bron Breaker asked Tommaso Ciampa, why did you help me last week? Wasn't that a good joke that Jack just said? <laughs> <laughs> Chap says the mountain top is a lonely place. And he wants to make sure Bronze stays NXT champion. Uh oh. Yeah, well I think I think this could go wrong. Why does Champ want to keep him NXT champion? Does he want revenge? Oh. No, he's just a nice man who wants yeah. to make sure that he keeps his belt. That is, that's what Brom Breaker seems to think. He's like, oh, cheers, man. Cheers, cheers. mate. I appreciate that. I'm like, <laughs> my, like, I know that my 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 dad and my uncle turned on each other consistently. Yeah. But I'm sure this wouldn't happen to me no. in the 21st century with a man I barely know. <laughs> Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams could a promo on Cameron Grimes until he interrupts. They go back and forth, and Grimes compares Hayes and Williams to SpongeBob and Patrick. Uh confusing the 70 year old people watching this in the home going who are they yeah. Hayes doesn't think Grimes is ready to face the A champion 
which is nice that they're calling mm, themselves that. I like that. Because A, it's the highest grade, unless you're playing a beat em up, in which case it's S. Mm. Uh, but he's also a champ, a double belt champ. Mm. Is he still got. Well, yeah, he is. Yeah. He won the cruiserweight belt. Yeah. But is he gone now? I don't know. No, me neither. I write that down. <laughs> is 255 two, Live still the thing? But now there's no belt for it. They I need think 205 Live might just be a rumor at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's because obviously they've still got this deal with Hulu. Yeah. That, that yeah. show still exists. Yeah. So I guess they'll probably look at rebranding it in some way, shape, or form. What an existence. Like just <laughs> rest, being a 205 Live rest, wrestling for a show because you have to. and sorry. For a championship that no longer exists. Anymore. Yeah. It's like Beckett or something. It's like the end of. <laughs> Just waiting for Godot. It's just <laughs> it is, oh, oh my oh. gosh, two oh five live is waiting for Godot. Yeah, it is, yeah. In wrestling for waiting for a push. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for God, no. It, it says <laughs> backstage, my my boys my, my dinner with Nick Khan. Um, <laughs> my boys Malik Blade and Edris Enough are thinking and of no a, fair thing. And no fair, big no fair. I think of a tag team name. Ah, oh, Jack's got one. Edris <laughs> says they're bold, brave, and confident. So they should be Team BBC. Yeah. I've have you, have you seen the segment? No, oh, I didn't. This I segment was it. unbelievable. I haven't seen this. Whatever. They've called themselves Team BBC. Well, he stopped. One of them went, it should be Team BBC. And the other one went, no, 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 no. Yeah, because oh, that the, means something else. Because the yeah. British Broadcasting yeah. Corporation would be furious. Absolutely. Yes, that's, that's exactly. That is the reason. Get that's what on. they said. Get on Radio Newcastle. <laughs> oh, yeah, BBC Radio Newcastle will be giving them a call now. Yeah, that's what we get when you Google BBC. Keith Lee's finish used to be called The Big Bang Catastrophe, which is BBC. As well. Because he's a big fan of the British Broadcasting He's a big fan of the of Only Fools and Horses. Yeah. Yes, yes. Let's move on. Mandy Rose enters and accidentally falls into Blade's lap. She's chased away by Kaylee Ray, and it's implied that Malik has a big old erection law. <laughs> I should have maybe worded that a bit more tactfully. But yeah, no, so what happens is, sorry, if you've not seen it. No, I saw a bit of it, but I just it's where, like, think about he's it. going like, what would you say to because because Idris is like the cool, confident one, and Malik's all shy, but he fancies Mandy. And Idris is like, what would you say to her now, like, if, if she was here? Just close your eyes and pretend. And Malik's like, okay, I'd say blah, blah. And then she bursts in and falls into it, literally falls into his lap. And he goes like, thank you, Jesus. And then she's like, you need to help me. And then she gets chased off by Kaylee. And then he's got like a cushion. It's like a scene in the in-between as well. Yeah. Got yeah, but all right. Why? There's two segments on the show where... We're supposed to believe these these young, athletic, hungry dudes and women yeah, they're are all like they're sick. I love they're them. They're all like it's like they're so horny. <laughs> I don't, they're all like, like saved by the bell. Oh gosh, uh, it's only like the, the the biggest bums on the planet. Oh like, my god. Oh, there's attractive lady. What I do mean, I, I mean, do? <laughs> twenty twenty. Blah, 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 blah. We watched SmackDown from two thousand and one, yeah. and the general consensus towards women is is very different. Where in two thousand and one, and so it's just like, oh, women are rubbish, and they're and they're all and they're yeah. all <laughs> naughty ladies of the night, and they're hippity, uh, hippity hoppity. They're all property. Mm. Like that's the general consensus yeah. in a one. Woohoo, puppies, bra and panties. Uh, da -da. It's fast forward and they're like, oh, girl. Oh, no, girl. When, when girl. Just executively written by Bruce Pritchard. <laughs> In a nice throwback, though, when, when Kaylee Ray, no, it wasn't actually good. When Kaylee Ray <laughs> and Mandy Rose started brawling, Trick Williams was, uh, not Trick Williams, damn it, um, Idris Anofe, um, he was so excited that he acted like Joey Styles, basically. He was like, oh, they're fighting, it's two women. And I was like, oh. He wanted to follow them. They ran off brawling. He was like, come on, let's go. And he's like, I can't, I've got a boner. It's a bad segment, man. You made a really astute observation what, about then? NXT this week Ooh. on Twitter, on and I Twitter. really liked oh, it. Yeah, I wouldn't, and you. I wouldn't want to say it because it's yours. Oh, yeah. I said it's it, yours. I've said it's a I've read, this show sucks. Long. <laughs> I've realised that NXT 2.0 is a teen movie. Like it's really, yeah. it, the, the characters are really teen movie esque. Mm. Um, but I did choose four screenshots that I could try to make it look as much of a team movie as possible. But the way, but all this stuff is like, it's American Pie. Yeah, like. it really is. And I wonder whether this is just like, this is Bruce Pritchard who's gone, oh, we need to be younger. Okay, we'll get some of those young people movies. Put American Pie in. Like, ah, I get it now, these uh, modern kids. I saw them. I get it. I watched an episode of Raw recently where the women's title changes hands because Sable beats Deborah in an evening gown match, but Shawn Michaels is the commissioner and says, Deborah's really hot, so she should win because she... Her clothes got removed. So he does this title change. He like goes, there you go. You're the women's champion now, Deborah. I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. So we've Laura on come commentary. a long way, baby. Laura on commentary is oh, like. Oh, this will be good. Come on. Yeah, oh, yeah. Gosh, can we, um... Deborah makes her entrance. Laura goes, well, God, Sean. Because Sean's on commentary with him and JR at this point. And he's like, Sean, 
I can't help but think that Deborah's evening gown would look good on the floor next to my bed or yours. <laughs> I was like, what? Well, why is he? He just really wants to be Michael's friend so much. He's like, or oh, you could sleep with her too. I mean, I don't mind, whatever. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Lola was something else in a bad way. <laughs> it was the 90s. Yeah. This was last night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... LA Knight faces Joe Gacy. Oh, God, let's go back to the bonus. <laughs> uh, but it's attacked by Grayson Waller and Sanga. After match, Grayson Waller says if Knight wants to get his hands on him, he'll have to beat Sanga first. All right, okay. uh, Speaking of big lumps, Robert Stone reveals that he was the mystery person that paid off come Tuesday suspension and calls him the future of NXT, cruelly robbing us a future come Tuesday promo. I'm so sorry, it just no, says, no. like, two words. And it's like, and neither of them are come or Tuesday, so... We call Von Wagner come Tuesday. Yeah. It's, it's oh, crazy. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. No, because he put it on Twitter, didn't he? he no, didn't. he didn't. We, we, but some people in his office got me and Ross hoodwinked. Got we did. Um, we swindled, flim flammed. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Why am I quoting Cornet? It's 2021. 2022. I'm losing my mind. That sounded like an episode of Family Guy that I watched last night. Yeah. <laughs> it got swindled, flim flammed. Tiffany Stratton offers to take Amari Miller shopping if she can take out Wendy Chu. Wendy and Miller have a match. And Stratton slides Miller her credit card. This only distracts Miller, and Chu wins. Stratton wants her credit card back, but Wendy has stolen it. Uh, <laughs> Top marks for the sleeple's elbow. Oh, you know what? Like, As named by Professor Nick Harrison that was on good. Twitter yeah. and TikTok fame. That is very I don't good. Care Banger about, of a name. Like the character, like backstage, is like, "Hi, hey, I'm gonna go sleep." It's like whatever. But the the wacky little comedy spots worked pretty all right. Yeah. Yeah, the people, the sleeple's sleep the sleeple's elbow, sleeple's sleeple's elbow work well. Yeah, but I don't know, like, a character's like, I don't care. It's like uh, NXT, the wrestling could be good, but the character's backstage, it's like... Yeah. Uh, what did you think, Jack? I was confused about why everyone was fine with their taking the credit card. Apart from Barrett, who was like, the police should be getting involved. And I was like, correct. She's still on her credit card. Yeah. And she's dancing with it on the ramp, <laughs> going like, spend all your money. Yeah. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> but, but she's a baby because, face. Yeah. She's come back next week and go, it was fine because as soon as she left, Tiffany Stratton just called her bank and they just put yeah. a freeze on the card. Well, she, yeah. What she do you mean? Do you know who stole it? Yeah, yeah. Switch over. Uh, yeah, yeah. This I've got, USA I've got, Network. Got video evidence of the theft. Um, yeah. Just want to cancel the transactions. Yeah, ignore the 15, oh, like, Popeyes, chickens, and birds that air and uh, the Geico. An insurance. Yeah, there, there, yeah, there she is. If, I, if that actually happens next week, I would love it. If it's just a, a, an hour or two of Tiffany Stratton sorting out with her bank, that, that she's got to cancel it. Yeah, but you know what it'll be? It'll be her going oh, shopping and going. Oh, bad things, isn't it? Yeah. 50 pillows. Oh, God, it is with. 60 weighted You're blankets. Right. You're right. It's going to be all bed stuff. It's going to be bed, oh. bath, and beyond, but without the beyond and the bath. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and and it will just be, I can't believe all these T transactions. Tiffany Stratton's dad. Who ordered all these beds? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stratton! <Yeah. laughs> oh no, because it's his daughter, Tiffany! Yeah, it would be. <laughs> what is it, no, Daddy? I, I, no, I think he refers to her by surname. <laughs> <laughs> Stratton! They're, they're that posh, yeah. Stratters! <laughs> uh, we got a video package for uh, Nikita Lyons, who grew up as the daughter of a traveling musician and a beautiful, and a beautiful group groupie. <laughs> She said this. We've not seen this. So this is. A I, I mean, I was paying attention, but I didn't. I yeah. wasn't paying that much so, attention. A beautiful groupie. Yeah, she went. Okay, yeah, my dad well, was a traveling bassist, on. and my mum was a beautiful groupie. And I was like, right on. <laughs> I felt okay. You'd have thought by now NXT would have calmed down. <laughs> yeah, I still feel like every week it's I'm flippity bumper dog. Yeah. I am a oh, wrestling no, still, plumber. No, still, oh, I'm yeah. um, son of a groupie. Yeah. Hi, we're John Hi. and Chris, and we are the dancing eggs. And there's Barrett going, Oh, the dancing eggs are coming next week. I'll go away. <laughs> oh. Who's this? Oh, I'm. They love a good yolk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Scrimple Scranton. I am a funny. Egg, egg, geese. Another man. egg. Another egg one. <laughs> the oh, it's all egg. Egg. Excellent finishing move. <laughs> oh, so she, she's robotic puns from 92. <laughs> so, Snooping as usual, <laughs> I see. Yeah, and Lions is. She's the daughter of a bassist and a groupie. And that's. So cool. somebody had an affair and, whilst on the road. Well, yeah. this, but, but then we're the dad forgot it's about not, it, it showed, an hour later. It showed pictures of them together like they were a couple. So uh -huh. I was like, oh. But anyway, then, she, then she's like, I'm a musician too. Um, and I'm gonna throw myself into the ring like I like I'd lay it down on the track, and then she raps a bit. Mm. And I was like, right on. <laughs> I was gonna say mm. I'm a groupie too. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm gonna throw no, myself. My gimmick is my group. No, and I, anybody. You know what? Yeah, Lola would like that gimmick. I, I read two recaps just to make sure I hadn't missed anything on this show with the whole the whole Cora Jade and that match being blacked mm. out. Um, just to make sure I missed anything. <laughs> but this bit, the two different recaps. One of them said 
that what she'd said. And I thought, that can't be right. And then the other one said Roadie, and I thought, that makes more sense. <laughs> then I watched it, and I was like, no, it was groupie. It was. <laughs> okay, yeah, never okay. mind. Yeah. The other one said, uh, my mother was a chicken, dad was a cow. They were proud, proud, but they didn't care how. As you said, the uh, no, it's, me. <laughs> do, do. it's me. <laughs> it's oh, it's his manager, the red guy. <laughs> it's his manager. See more butts yeah. this week. <laughs> He's here to take ass and kick ass. <laughs> I'm here to take ass and kick names! <laughs> I'm going to do that voice I do in every I'm... cartoon. I get angry! <laughs> <laughs> Is that not Powerpuff Girls? No, that's um, Cow and Chicken. It's the red guy. Yeah, oh. that dude did that voice for so many different... Uh, Press a monkey from my I head. I was thinking oh. of him oh, yeah. from Powerpuff Girls. Oh, the devil. Oh, the devil. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's um, him. Yeah, yeah. like an andro androgynous devil character, yeah. wasn't it? I thought that it's was him. his voice. The blob stand. Well. Yeah, because yeah, because him was like, mm. oh, pop of girls, your character died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I they mixed it up, didn't they? Well, they're very similar. Well, they're both the same character, basically. No, because the the red, red guy. guy was just basically the red it's guy a was different a, weird devil cartoon. Yeah, it, it was like he was like Alexi Sale in the young ones. Oh wow! <laughs> in the sense that's that not far off actually. Wow, what a week, comparison! Just as a different name, yeah. like it was all a butt related name. Was it one week he'd be a drill sergeant called yeah. attention? Whatever the plot was, he was scum. there. Is oh, there? Yeah. It's me, the oh, landlord. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm here to cut your rent. He's got a massive ass. Yes, I remember him. Yes, he's all, <laughs> all the pictures of him showing his ass. He's like, ooh. I'm very proud of my butts. Yeah. Seymour Butts, favourite here, says Wade Barrett. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I can't wait for Seymour Butts to debut next week. He's just Billy Gunn. He's just <laughs> yeah. the ass boy, yeah. It's like a people give him cheek. <laughs> all right, all right. And again, uh, we also see footage of Draco Anthony walking out the performance centre at 2 a.m. Potter. It's... <laughs> Oh, if this is a Harry Potter gimmick. He talks about dedication. Draco has his debut NXT match against Andre Chase. And, and attacks, loses! And attacks the Chase University flag. Oh, sorry. The bastard, which Bodie Haywood saves. Chase wins. Right. And says that next week he'll face Coach sure. Tuesday. They did a package for him. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here's Draco. He's ready. Remember when he drank coffee months ago? Yeah. That's it. Well, now he's in the Performance Center at 2 a.m. Well, there's his first problem. He didn't get a good night's sleep. That's true. That is true. <laughs> Yeah, what train, was in that coffee? Train earlier, you weirdo. No, Hello, it's, I'm it's going to drink the coffee. I'm not going to fall asleep for three months. <laughs> it was it's all about it's the quality, grind. not quantity. It is, you're right. But, yeah. it, but Draco is all about that grind, stay on, stay on that hustle. And then he loses immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, like, he what? loses straight away. <laughs> because if it wasn't for Snape muttering the counter curse in the stands, then this would uh. never <laughs> happen. <laughs> Filthy little mudblood. Uh. <laughs> You're smashing it this week. You Thanks, are, man. Tom, smashing it this I'm flagging. But I'm no, you're not, right. no, you're not. Before the main event, Kaylee Ray chases Manny Rose in a catering and covers her in spaghetti and then a cake. <laughs> this cake had clearly just come out the fridge because usually the cake splats and it cans everywhere. <laughs> this one nearly knocked her out. This was a wet <laughs> <it>, yeah. <laughs> like, like a geez. brick. <laughs> you just know after they cut, it was like, who put the cake oh. in the fridge? <laughs> So we'll let the cake out in the rain. Yeah. But bruise here like a bloody hell. <laughs> hey, <laughs> not to bust out with a bit of cake. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, it become, if, if the cake becomes a recurring oh, weapon. We've missed <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like you said, oh no, they've got the little bag out. What is it? It's more cake. <laughs> we missed a bit. Where oh, Kaylee we Ray does the where to Stephanie, but it's with toxic attraction in the back of the car. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote it down, but you've not. Oh, yeah. yeah. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's fine. It's fine. This is all in two hours, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> God. It's taking longer for this than the rumble. It's like um, Pulp Fiction. There's so much going on at once. <laughs> it's just <laughs> oh. as good. Yeah. Tommaso Ciampa and Bron Breaker beat Legado del Fantasma in a tag match. Breaker dares Santos Escobar to get in the ring right now, but if he walks away because it's WWE. That's what bad guys do. Mm -hmm. Kaylee Ray then chases Manny Rose into the ring and demands a title shot. Mandy asks her to put down the bat and agrees. Kaylee hits a finisher and stands tall. Mandy's had a shocker. Mandy's Mandy. bad day. Yeah, it is. I quite like they ended with that. Yeah. They, they, they tied it all up at the end quite It's nicely. like, help, I need medical assistance after that cake. <laughs> I, whatever you want. Yeah. AEW <laughs> Dynamite. Don't want to the end. John Moxie beats Wheeler Yuta. Obviously the late uh, replacement. Uh, Wheeler Yuta accompanied by Orange Cassidy and Danhausen yeah. to gigantic pops mm. and t-shirt sales. <laughs> Brian Danielson confronts Moxie afterwards. Again, I love this. Uh, and says he thinks Moxie was the best AW champ. 
and still be champion if he had a little support. Mm. Dyson says he and Moxie should be fighting together and claims that there's no way that the company's titles should be in the hands of, as I said beforehand, a millennial cowboy, a man dressed as a dinosaur, and a vlogger. Ooh, <laughs> nothing worse than a vlogger. Brian tells Moxie that he could run this place together and maybe take some of the younger guys from under, the, uh, under their wing, like Yuta or Danny Garcia or Lee Mirardi, away from those stupid groups that they're currently hanging around with. Moxie doesn't answer, so Dennison gives him time to think about it. I love this, yeah. because Dennison wasn't be like, ha-ha, I'm Lord Evil. He was like, <laughs> you know what? Here's a good point and to be well made, and I'm going to give you time to think about it. He's just being, just like to talk about when Sami Zayn feuded with Neville, just a little bit mm. of a dick. Yeah. yeah. He's just needling a little bit. Sometimes all you need is a little bit of dick. <laughs> it's very, very true. true. Um, very true. Do you, think, do you want Moxie to say yes? I kind of do. I don't know. Yeah. Because either way, it's good. It could be like, mm, it's a good mm. argument, actually. So I'm going to wait and see next yeah. week. Fair play. Well, yeah. yourself, that's it. well, that's it. I don't know which way. I would want this to go. Uh, great, for, great showcase of Willy Uta. Mm. In, in you know, with 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 like an hour turnaround and a bit yeah. for, for what we saw. He's like, a professional. Him and Moxie wrestler. put out a great match, yeah. and it was a good shout. I know that I was on Twitter being being a, a blooming idiot, going right. How get Shane, get a jet, private jet, get Shane to Dynamite immediately. Shane Moxley, let's go, LFG. Um, but then obviously, you know, you haven't got time to get anybody there, so it's like right, you are you nearby? Yeah. Come on, the showcase for Utah. And and do you know what? As it should be. I think one thing that AEW gets a lot of stick for uh, from Oy. people Oy. Um, is... is I forgot uh, about the cane. I thought you just pointed to his crotch. Ah! I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I, 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 I was thinking about Matthew what, I, pointed say, it, I, was thinking about what I say to Mandy Rose as yeah, she yeah, fell yeah, nearby. Yeah. Um, but I a lot of people will, will say like AEW will lean towards like ex-WWE guys for exposure and stuff like that. And, and, and here's a great example of them just going, no, we're going to actually, in this circumstance, we had an ex-WWE yeah. guy, we're going to do this. But we'll instead, we'll use the time to showcase a younger talent. I hope and got, that's what they did. Oh, we got mad props backstage for being such a helpful guy. Yeah, yeah. and being in, you know, and, and having a showcase match for him. It's yeah. a fair play. Yeah, yeah. Always bring your gear, kids. Always yeah, bring your gear. Mm. Yeah. Wrestling gear. <laughs> Wrestling. Stop it. Stop it. And drugs. Stop. No. <laughs> Brandy Rhodes cuts a heel promo in the ring, mistaking oh Chicago for Cleveland. This is weird. Womp, womp. Is that a mistake nah, people can make? I don't get the thing. Well, like... Chicago and Cleveland are rivals. Are they? Okay, Because Michael Jordan slayed Cleveland in the 90s or something. Oh. People always go, Jack, you wear a Bulls hat, but you're a Cavaliers fan. I'm like, yeah, but I'm from, I'm from the northeast of England. I don't care. Like, yeah, everyone has these things, yeah. yeah. Granddads <laughs> have uh, these uh, things. The, the, car, the Dallas Cowboys cap that I wear. And people but I go, oh, I actually, out of all the American football teams, I'm more of a Baltimore Ravens fan. And they're like, well, why do you wear a cowboy? I'm, like, I'm English. I don't, yeah. I don't really. We don't but really care. On the other hand, I wouldn't be caught dead wearing a Newcastle shirt. So it, it, I get why there's the, you know, I get it. I get it. Mm. Yeah, it's a different country. Yeah. Who cares? Uh, so yeah, ooh, get the thing wrong. But it's quickly interrupted by Dan Lambert and the Men of the Year. Lambert says that Cody didn't earn his spot in AEW and that chief brand officer isn't a real position. Oh. He says that Brandy's occasional tough accent is as fake as her breasts. <sighs> uh huh. Brandy says it's that AEW. 1997 again? What's going right, on? That's, his gimmick is he's like the old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right, yeah. Do anything tougher than your accent. I got breast. Brandy says that AW. Oh, that just that sucks. Sorry. Brandy says that AW only hired Ethan Page to get close to Josh Alexander. That was a zing. That That's was a, a weird. Nice a zing, getting, zing. Josh getting a reference. Yeah, I'm there, glad but... to see Josh getting a, getting some love because Josh is Josh Alexander is phenomenal. Do you think they did that because they went, uh oh, WWE actually doing some of impact. Uh, Josh Alexander's good. Uh, mate, mate. Brandy with the zingaling. She 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 won the segment for me with that line. Even mm. though the crowd would consistently turn it to shut up. <laughs> She wasn't she, uh, very good. She paid no, again. I don't think Shades of I thought was rubbish. Yeah, me too. I don't think either of them were very. And Dan Lambert's usually good, but, but I thought I'll, both of them I'll were rubbish. Carry on with this. She marks American top team, mentioning Amanda Nunes leaving, and Tyron Woodley's lost to Jake Paul. Oh. The, yeah, so it's been a bad few months and weeks. Oh for God, top yeah. Team. That, God, those. Two, oh, why do I have to be reminded of that? Huh. Just anyway, they argue more, and Brandy eventually slaps Lambert. Which brings out Paige Vincent for a pull apart brawl. The French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we. Vincent. Uh, yeah. This was rubbish. This so was rubbish. It's, yeah, again, it's like raw. Okay, who's the face here? Yeah. yeah. This, and that's. Again, <laughs> well, I'm arresting at the minute. Just, oh, no, just go on there and just be bad. It's all shades of grey, in it? It was so. Poo. It was so. Rubbish. Yes, but it was so pre planned. You could tell it was just uh. them spouting rehearsed. Put downs at each other that they'd thought of backstage. 
probably by yeah. other people, maybe. Or Jericho writing it down from. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, then going out and doing it. And it was just like, let's take turns trying to pop the crowd with shooty references. And at one point, Dan Amos says something like, you should all, your whole family should turn heel because the only face turn I saw is in your old job where you used to get turned face down or something. And I was like, well, she was with Cody in her God, How her convoluted is that? I was like, honestly. <laughs> well, your face was in my I, face. I told, I, told, I told Lewis about it, one of our obviously writers here at Colaholic, but we knew him from before. Mm-hmm. But he uh, he replied with the... the have you seen Charlie Nicholas's rubbish banter on, on Sky Sports News where he's like... No. It's offside or it's onside, and then Jeff Stalin's like, "Well, you're right. I think you need to go to spec savers, Charlie, because he's definitely onside." And then Charlie Nicholas goes like, he just totally stumbles trying to come up with a comeback because he's on live TV and he's just like, "Well, maybe you should go also then, Jeff, because you don't even wear your glasses on TV because you get oh. slapped off." And uh, and then it's just like, <laughs> that seems really bad. yeah. Where yeah. do you get your pants? The pants store. Yeah. <laughs> well, Vince Vaughn turns around you? and goes, wait, come on, come on. None of you guys say anything? Even the guy who can't think said something. Yeah. Who made yeah. your sandwiches, Simpson? Your mom? Oh well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you win this round. Yeah, yeah. who else is going to do it? Uh, but I agree with Tom. I thought this was a bad segment. That's right? bad. Yeah. This is bad. I, I, oh, I, boy, I sure am excited for that um, uh, Brandy Rhodes, Paige Von Sant match. Vince what? Vince Vaughn. Is that what I'm supposed to be excited for? Not, not vibing with all of that. Mm. It's a shame because Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky are great. I feel like they're trapped yeah. in the mud here. I watched the full, yeah. I watched the full toy vlog with Ethan Page's toy vlog with Hook on it. I finally watched the full thing <laughs> just because Hook oh, just doesn't agree. care. And then they're like, the only thing he wants to buy is this like $150 Snoop Dogg dog figure. Yeah. He's like, you're going to buy that Snoop? And he's like, I think it's too expensive for me. And he goes, man, if only you had a rich dad or something. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Ethan Page is really that. funny. Yeah, it's good. But it is funny because that's like, Hook now stands out because so many wrestlers are like, we're going to the toy shop. Mm. Yeah. Oh my God, the Ghostbusters Tower. And there's Hook going, what's this? Yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and that's why I thought Hook might vibe with more sort of the anti-AEW uh, yeah. contingent because because he comes out he wrestles he's not into all the geek culture and stuff like we're yeah. very proudly are like he's not into any of that he, he comes out like and fights and I thought files. and I thought he might people might vibe with him because of that and they, they still yeah, go yeah, yeah. no it looks very popular oh no 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 he's very popular with the, but there's, there's still like this weird contingent of people who are like oh just just a nobody in youngster yeah. not not many all right but majority vibe with him but there yeah. is still people who just go no, why well, are they pushing well, welcome him? yeah that that's me that is as I twitch my you know unboxing of my action <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, I think yeah. he's great. I, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. I like Hook a lot. Matt Hardy is disappointed that Private Party didn't win the tag titles on Rampage, but reveals that Isaiah Cassidy will challenge, sorry, will answer Sammy Guevara's open challenge for the TNT title. Okay. Yeah. Andrade arrives and Matt asks how his efforts to sign Darby Allen are going. Andrade says they need to offer Bob Buddy. <laughs> I like this <laughs> It's so joke. great. Andrade's yeah. so good. All he's doing is going, you know that kid? Yeah. What kid? You know, the little one who hangs around the I really like this. Oh, you mean Darby? Yeah, yeah, him. <laughs> <laughs> Pack and Pender take on Malachi Black and Brody King. Yes. Good match. The spooky guys win after Black missed Pender. Good match. Yep. L- liked it. Nice. Pack was blindfolded for the beginning of this. Oh, yeah. That was fun. Because he's now, he can see, but yeah. He was... <laughs> no, I get it. No, no, it's I, better I, when he says it. It's better when he says it. Yeah. I enjoyed the, the, the tease at the start that he was just going to wrestle the whole match blind. Like that. Him, and then he went, ah, I'm a read that. Like, oh, man. Name of like a Jordan, the time is all mine. Like Geordie oh, Neal or something. Just can do it without. Yeah. Oh. That's great. I liked it. I, I liked it. Yeah. yeah. Good fun. I liked it as well. Yeah. I think the, the right, match is good. It's like, yeah, it was good. The right team won, but I didn't want either to lose, unfortunately. But the right team won because they're newer and. On, no, they're not a newer team. Oh, it would have been then, completely ridiculous if the. The about Spooky Lads had lost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spooky Lads got to win for now. Exactly. Brody King's a terrifying man, but massive and just. Oh, yeah. He looks like he could batter you. I <laughs> see. It's weird because I know his rep and said people said great things about him, but yeah. I never really saw those real standout performances. I saw him on some PWG shows and thought he looks alright. And then like wait a few months or maybe a year and he come back and say, "All right, yeah, he's the coolest mm-hmm. dude." Mm-hmm. Uh, so weird that people can really change the twelve months. That was a really dumb statement, wasn't it? No, 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 Rose, no it's true. Not her Rose, sorry. Not Rose beats Ruby Soho with a little help from Ricky Rero on the outside. Yeah, she put her foot on the rope. She did, she did. Classic manager stuff. Yeah, so the reheat Nyla Rose again. But Ruby's... 
yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Because I'm like, yeah, Ruby, I like her. And maybe people saying, you know, she doesn't have that many good matches to be. I went, shut up, you idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> And she hasn't had that, like, standout performance yet in A-Dub, which I thought she'd be doing every night. I thought the match she had with Britt Baker a little while back was good. Yes. Yeah. But she never wins. No, yeah. no, no that's it. I didn't they haven't decided what be, they wanted to they do. Can... They don't want her to be a top person, but yeah. she's not this level either. They couldn't so. have her be Britt, of course. No. But it was a good match. There's quite a few people they seem to hire to AEW and then just go, what should we do with them? Uh, and now there's a, to- there's a tournament, which we love doing. Okay, yeah, yeah, tournament. Tournament. Uh, there's uh, they I mean, you know, for for all that, you know, we we will cry like, "Hello, I'm from NXT. I'm a wrestling plumber." Mm-hmm. And there's at least like there is, whether you like it or not, at least there's always very very charted direction. Almost too. Much. Almost oh yeah, yeah, almost too much of the way. But Whereas yeah. you'll see like, "Oh, Ruby Soho's in AW. Get in." What's she gonna do? Uh, Tar match. Solo. Uh, maybe uh, she'll get. A, maybe uh, she'll get a push at some point because they did it with Miro. He was doing nothing for ages, and everyone hated it. Maybe they'll do it with Ruby. As well. Ruby deserves it. She'll change it. music genres. <laughs> I'm now into metalcore. Oh no! Nice. Oh, I thought you were gonna go the other way, like swing or something. Oh, no. Ruby, oh that looks. Oh, that great. Yeah. Ruby swing. Ruby swing. Ru- <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like John Morrison changes name of it. Like I'm Johnny Impact. <laughs> she changes her genre. Yeah, I like that. Ruby bluegrass. Yeah. <laughs> Ruby bluegrass. <laughs> I might have something here, lads. I might have to come nice. to uh, ask Tony Khan for uh, in the leave us in the blank. Backstage, the gun club attack Jungle Boy and throw him into the snow outside. Ooh. Luchasaurus and Christian Cage arrive to chase them off. There was really like like silly segments of the, the gun club and Christian because it was like, oh, you, <laughs> you, you pesky kids attack me. <laughs> I'll get, I know your dad. Yeah. <laughs> get away with it. Your you. kids pushed over my bins again. <laughs> <laughs> they, keep on, they keep on knocking on the door, they run away where I had some sick of it. That is fine. I like to see the gun club getting uh getting getting in there with the tag champs. Well they Good got stuff. a boost because of Danhaus and mocking them. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Why not ride that wave? Yeah. Do something with them. That's, that's I think we're making fun of your social media. You're getting a push on TV. Mm. It's weird, isn't it? I feel like it's something that Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page could be doing, but they, as I say, they're trapped yeah. in the mud. At the like, hey, can you make fun of me, please? Yeah, no. dying out of here. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Tony Schiavone interviews Hangman Page, who is desperate to defend his title. He's interrupted by Dan Lambert and Jake Roberts. Oh, good. Mm. Who insult him until Lance Archer arrives? Archer slams Hangman on the ring steps and puts him through the timekeeper's table. I thought that their match was this week. Uh, oh, is it it on is. it's next week. Next week's done. Doing... Yeah, might. okay. I thought that. The... Well, first of all, they, they don't trust Jake Roberts anymore to cut a promo on his own. He's got to have Don Lambert there. I'm like, it's Jake the Snake Roberts. I think it might be more uh, of a health concern, if anything. Oh, that makes way more sense. Because Fair I know right. he's had a lot of like respiratory issues okay. and stuff. So I guess if he's going out there and he starts cutting a promo and he's struggling, then, at least Lambert's yeah, out there. That makes sense. And his role is somewhat limited. Fair enough. But right. you still got the exposure of him. But I thought, but they haven't, have they ever said something about, or I missed it? They're going, oh yeah, Alan Bear's helping. No, no, Alan Bear is representing Lance Archer as well. Like he's kind of like a consultant. Yeah, they? he's like a because when yeah. Adam Page, when when that whole thing happened, first of all, Alan Bear and uh, Roberts were out there, yes. and then Archer came back. So, so they yeah. they came with like sort of a contrived reason, but they've still got Dan going after the Rhodes family as well. So I don't really know. Yeah, he's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, he's like, um, he's like. What uh, Nia and Shayna were like when they were the women's tag team champions, no. just feed them with yeah. everyone. Just a bit all over the shop at yeah. the moment. But I think right. that's why. I think it's more of a, yeah. a concern there. What do we make of Adam Page's run so far? So, so we get a chance to chat with you guys right. about it. Uh, well, I think that uh, the tone of his promo was spot on because he should be angry because he's been overshadowed because like he is Brian Danielson, he is CM Punk and all that. Yeah. And it's a bit like when CM Punk was WWE champion. He's not the main feature of the show that he's the champion of. But so uh, the tone of the promo was, but I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, as long as they've acknowledged it. And I think that, I think that when MJF or whoever comes to feud with him, they will say, "You're not even the biggest deal on the show." And I think they'll. As long it as it ties into something, rather than them just going, "Let's uh, uh, do a promo." If you want to acknowledge the fact that you've not been on, then do it in this promo. Mm. Rather, I hope it's leading to like. Hangman page after Lance Archer going right like all these people are the talking point I'm going after all of them almost like interrupting ongoing storylines right. like having Daniel sort of Moxley doing something in the ring and Page coming out going I'm the right you two stop all the, stop this 
I'm the champ. Come on, let's go. Like I just I want him more in the mix, yeah. and he's not. Yeah. And he's like, as you said, like CM Punk when he was WWE champion, yeah, like Chris yeah, Jericho yeah. when he was undisputed champion. Yeah. He was like Goldberg when he was WCW champion. He's just like for those like two weeks so. floating around. <laughs> yeah. The chip. The, no, no, the, yeah, yeah. the yeah. Uh, not the focal the point where he should be. Is better than the kill. So we all want him to win. Now he's won it. It's like, all right, let's keep him going. It's like, what do you do once the face has yeah. won the battle? Yeah. But I actually think but they're doing a good job good of the entire... This is where good comes in because you go, okay, we know, okay, the hunt is the, the hunt is on. The, the kill's going to happen. I don't think we've got to be ready to go when after. I, I totally get. I don't think it's that bad because he's just come off that those two matches with uh, Brian. Mm. Yes, and that was great. And there is a lull now. I definitely agree. But I think that once we're through this sort of filler feud, I guess, and I feel bad saying that because I really like Lance Archer, but mm. it, it is what it is. Sort of, but then I'm guessing, I'm, I'm thinking anyway, the next one will be MJF. Mm. And that'll take center stage, surely. Like MJF and Hannah. That needs yeah. to be, yeah. yeah. That it's been punk, be. so he's earned it, so. Yeah. But, well, they were two seconds. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I think he's been all right. But they're doing a good job of having him not just the highlight of the show. There's other things going on. They've had the mm. tag team titles as main event. They've had punk, they've had MJF. That is true. Um, they've had... Uh, the, the women, Jane Cargill, the again. bloody women, Jane Cargill, and the others. <laughs> you know, um, I just, no, like, I just so like it's other a, by doing this and not just having, you don't get sick of them, yeah. which I think is a good strategy. Yeah. You know, sort of the young books every time, like, oh god, go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I do. I so, just, no, I, it's not the main. It's not like main star attraction as other companies. But I feel like, like every, other, have him, every other every other AEW champion has been a star attraction. Except Paige. But that was the first year of it when they were already stars. Now, currently, the champions are Hangman Adam Page of that. Year and a bit build, mm -hmm. fantastic. Uh, the Luchasaurus and his small friend, mm -hmm. <laughs> and his boy. friend, and his friend, yes, and his friend Jack. <laughs> Sorry, and his yeah. friend Jack. Uh, Marco Stunt, MIA, and uh, Sammy Guevara. Yeah, yeah. These are the three people who weren't champions. I think Tom, and it I was think Tom Omega. The, I think Tom meant the previous champions. Oh, yeah, though, I don't sorry. mean the current like roster of the current the like, world champions. I mean previous oh, oh. world champions: Chris Jericho, John Moxley. Kenny Omega. Oh, actually, like legit, I feel yeah. like they were more of the focus of the show. Yes, yeah. like but Omega, they were Omega, already established, Omega so it's good. Were. This is like is where he should be right now. Okay, if that's what you believe, I believe. Then, then I believe in Millennial Cowboy. I yeah, I I do too. But I believe that as AEW champion, we shouldn't be trying to establish him still. Surely, no, if, he's, wanna, if he's like, holding the championship, yeah. he should be established. Yeah. The purpose I feel like of, this was always going to be a, an issue that would crop up when they hired. Brian and Cole and Punk and all the space shows. Yeah, yeah. I think they were always going to run into this. But you're right. They, they, I just think that at the moment, it's not quite like Crisis Point yet. Oh, absolutely not. No, no, no. But I'm I'm aware of it when I watch the program. Okay. Hey, yeah. yeah. No, I like them. I'm going, yeah, good. He's not always the star thing. He should no, but no, have it's not even like he's always. I feel like since the, since that second Brian da Daniel... Brian or Brian Daniels. Brian match, Brian, 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 Brian. He hasn't been really at all. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm missing something. Yeah, he's just talking with Lance Archer. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I love this. <laughs> oh, proper proper wrestling debate. Yeah. Um, okay. And then I, li I like I like what they're doing on the whole, but there's a few things I should go. Oh, that's fine. Okay. And then, and the then. main event. Adam Page. No, <laughs> of course not. Ed, <laughs> don't you? MGF face of CM Punk. I wasn't sure if we were going oh, to get it. Oh, I, I didn't type the whole thing out, did I? No, no, no. But I mean, it was 40 well, minutes. We can talk about it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Right. After a lot of action, including Return of the Ring of Honor finisher, yes. the Pepsi yes. plunge off the top. Which I thought he stopped doing because, oh, knees. Yeah. And they did, but if you're going to bust it out. that was part of the match, wasn't it? If you're going to do it, Chicago, hometown. And, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's just the man who busts out the pile driver the, on a roll. There was a pop when he Johnson. started to, when he hooked the arms and everyone went, hang on. Like, yeah. so you see the, the angle, Surely the camera not. angle was great because everyone behind him, you could yeah, see yeah. Like, no, it was yeah. great. Uh, MGF sneakily uses a piece of wrist tape to choke Punk out in a sleeper hold and wins the match. But Wardlow comes out. It's like, oh, we're going to see the turn. Oh, no, yeah, no, no. Bryce reverses the decision, sorry. So, oh, of course. Um, Matthew's good friend, Price, it says here. Rangsburg spots a tape in order oh, the match to continue. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I thought that was a bit afterwards. But then, um, yeah, carry on wrestling, carry on wrestling, Pepsi Plunge. And then Wardlow comes out. Oh, what's he going to be doing? Rest like, dress like a wrestler on a night out. <laughs> and uh, we we'll go about to see stuff so far, happen, and then he's like, nah, I'm all right. <laughs> but he did, but, but he distracted him. But he's actually distracting His him. Presence. So he gave him the ring. So MGF, crash, bang, wallop, wallop video, right into him. Roll up, one, two, three. I was Bastard. always losing in their hometowns. It's just ah, like, no, this yeah, ah, always losing in their hometowns. Uh, this one was I thought it was quite a brave booking decision. I was like, oh yeah, it was. And I'm glad it's they went. I'm glad they did it. I'm glad they really did it because I thought if if Punk beats him, 
then I'll, I'm sure it'll be a good match, but I'll be a bit disappointed because Punk talked a big game about wanting to help the younger generation and blah, yeah. blah, blah. And I get that it, you can't have Punk lose straight away, but I was like, now is the time. It, like in Rampage's theme tune. Um, <laughs> and Hate Breed? Yeah. yeah okay, mm. thank you. No, it, it's it's a, I was like, now is the time advice. the Punk should win. Uh, lose, sorry. And they, they did it. And yeah. he lay there like the GTA wasted screen for ages. Yeah. And I was like, oh, he's really putting him over. Look at that, Jericho. <laughs> uh, well, Punk could still beat him in a rematch, I suppose. But. How funny this week in wrestling, this bloody week in the wrestling, is the week that uh, WWE have somebody win in their hometown and AEW <laughs> have somebody lose in their yeah. hometown. Ah, That's crazy. The times, the times, the arrow world. changes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like the match? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Very good match. Mm. I forget, Very I go, MGF cut. Every time, every time I get so absorbed in the character, I go, MGF can't wrestle punk. I'm like, apart from those times where he does wrestle. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I I really, I thought it was a great match. Um, I don't think I enjoyed it as much as some other people because I think they might have watched it with the commercial breaks and I watched it on Fight where they were, you, the lulls were quite lully. But... <laughs> but like it's the same with Danielson. I, uh, it was one of those weird page. matches where like I feel like if there had been an ad break there, I'd have come back. We'd have been right back into the action. But I still it was a great match. Obviously, mm. yeah. The restaurant quality, picture in picture, wasn't yeah. for you then. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, there you go. That was it. <sighs> that was the week of wrestling. Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> Ah, I'm mm. having a little old look in the mailbag. Ah, number one. Afternoon, gents. Just over one week ago, at the time of this email, my wife decided it was time she gave birth to our second child. Oh. We called him William. He's bloody brilliant. Hey. Oh, right. Hello, William. Welcome to Planet Earth, William. You have wonderful tour guides. Yeah, the reviews are in. Uh, Melty gives it a five. Oh. <laughs> uh, although he's six in the Tokyo uh, Dome. <laughs> although he is bloody brilliant, me and the wife are looking forward to a date night with just the two of us. A cheeky couple's hours in our favorite Indian restaurant is much needed after a difficult pregnancy. It's got me thinking about who should babysit our two kids while we were out. Their nan, granddad, uncle, or maybe even Seth Rollins, it says here. <laughs> eh? <laughs> who do you think would make a brilliant babysitter to a five-year-old and a newborn from the world of wrestling? All the best, Sean, who's 30 and from Portsmouth. Bloody hell, Sean. Thank you very much for sharing the miracle of birth. Congratulations, Sean. Nice yeah, man. congrats. Uh, someone from wrestling look after a kid. Keith Lee. Yeah, that's a good job. Okay. Uh, like, uh, merely for uh, he's good at hugs, I reckon, mm -hmm. and telling bedtime stories. Yeah. Kid would be out like a light. He would do all the voices of the different characters. Oh, he definitely put the work in. And even if he yeah. didn't and just did all of them in his golden yeah. tones, then gone. he would he they'd be out like a light. Yeah. Keith Lee's a great shout. Keith Lee. Uh, I was gonna say that he'd gotten quite close. I was gonna suggest Seth and Becky because they radiate. Um, oh. They radiate cool auntie uncle energy, in my opinion. Nice. But they're probably busy with their own kid now, so I don't know. I don't think we're worrying about their schedule. Oh, then I'll go for Becky Cause, answer. Cause, cause yeah, Keith, this isn't really Keith happening, Lee's probably so it's busy. okay. Or Becky will yeah. try and be cool. Taking the booking. Sorry, I can't, I can't <laughs> be on Dynamite tonight. I'm looking after some guy's kid. Becky will be like, come on, kids, let's watch something cool. Ron just keeps making that noise that annoys Matthew in the background. <laughs> oh, God, a poor kid. Uh, <laughs> I think the answer is obvious to everyone. Uh, if you need someone to look after your kid from wrestling, Taz. Taz? Taz. King knows what he's doing. His kids are, turn out all right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Just, tra just training young William to become like a, a street fighter. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> either you can tire the little the little one out with the, the exercise, he's going to teach him, like, all right, kid, <laughs> stretch him. Start doing some lunges. Yeah. Or he's going to just try and tell him a story. And that'll take 30 minutes to get the point. And by the time they could be asleep. <laughs> Perfect. Good shout. Good best, shout. Best dad, Taz. Mm. Mm. Ah, thank you for the question. Uh, number two. Matthew, Jack, and Ross. Or, t or Tom, if he's Sorry. not here. Sorry. As part of my A-levels. Oh, this one was just really cheeky, so I included it. <laughs> oh, okay. I have to write a 5,000-word report on a topic I'm interested in. So, of course, I chose wrestling. So I thought I chose Mo the mail back. Because <laughs> they're always yeah, really long. You three. Oh. <laughs> More specifically, the steroid trial and the effect it had on the industry. I needed to conduct a review with an expert on the field, but when they didn't respond, I fixed a try you lads. It's just so cheeky. Oh, so the question no, is for, a for the A level. Yeah. How did the steroid trial affect the pro wrestling industry? Any buzz excuse me. Any buzzworthy quotes are appreciated, and you may get a mention in the report. You may. Cheers in advance, you might Charlie. Get well, the shortlist. You may be appearing you in this cheeky, essay. Cheeky, cheeky boy. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. But I thought 
I'd include it because I don't know much about the steroid trial compared to some people. I thought Matthew certainly would. Yeah. I thought you might as well. All right. But I think you're going to now take the piss, but I'm not sure. No, 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 no. No, what do you reckon? I mean, I've got. A, I've... how did it affect? Uh, greatly, uh, but it affected it in a positive way, I'll say this, because... Of them deciding, you know what? Let's um, let's go for some of the smaller chaps. That mm. might be a better idea. And by small, I mean you know Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, who aren't exactly you know dwarfs. But go with them instead. Try them for a bit while start looking elsewhere. Kevin Asher said the quote that he got the push to be the champ because then someone looked around the locker room and went, "Hmm, all these guys are a lot less bigger than they used to be, mm -hmm. but that guy is still seven foot. Mm -hmm. How about mm. I push him?" So. It was good for the people who weren't, you know, the size of King Kong Bundy or whatever. Uh, it helped influence then a lot of people who then watched that. You know, CM Punk just basically did a move for move match uh, a few weeks ago with Mr. Dan Garcia. So there's that. And it also gave us a very dark period of wrestling because it went, well, Kevin Nash is big. What more do you want? Mm, yeah. What about you, Tom? Uh, I'm just, so what I'm trying to do is, because uh, I'm hearing your points, I'm just going to put them into a a quotable statement for a dissertation. Oh, yeah, sorry. So, so, so taken from what Math is saying, I'll, I'll with the word a little count. bit as well. I'll go, um, the WWF steroid trial um, changed multiple elements of not just World Wrestling Federation, but wrestling business altogether. By allowing for smaller performers to be a part of the product, it increased the, the dichotomy of professional wrestling greatly. Uh, also, it allowed for a healthier... Uh, a backstage area, uh, a more legitimate uh, business practice, and even uh, exacerbated oh. the uh, the rise of performers who otherwise wouldn't have had the opportunity to grow within a wrestling environment. The uh, professional wrestling world was the only one that was really left unchecked by steroid and HGH abuse. Mm. The steroid trial brought the World Wrestling Federation and professional wrestling as a whole in line with other sporting bodies legally. And I will provide an even briefer... We're going shorter and shorter each time. Yeah. I'll go steroid trial bad, but also... Good. Nice. End quote. So, so, but no, well done. Yeah. That was fantastic. Nice. I like that. I, me giving you the ingredients and you turning into something. Mm. I gave you the horses and, then, and you made some little lasagnas. And then Jack put a little cherry on the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. There you yeah. go. And that was about, I think that was about 250 but, um, words. I just included yeah. it because of the audacity of the email. I was like, you cheeky man. No, like, you um... may get a mention. Well, it's a <laughs> quote, so yeah, you have to. So please cite us as... Greg, Greg Campbell King et al. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Messrs. <laughs> Greg yeah, yeah. Campbell King. Yeah. Carl Dahlick. Obviously, if, the IBN index number. Maybe take a little Sorry. chunk of the quote because I'm guessing that we've mentioned a few points there, but those few points may be expanded upon and form the bit. Like they, you might oh, have yeah, already written do. So if you just need a little chunk of it to reinforce one of the particular points, I'd recommend doing that as well. Can I also advise that you... Essay advice. That you purchase uh, Essay Rios, if you will. Could, I can also advise <laughs> that you... <laughs> essay Rios. The right... <laughs> That's his NXT 2.0 so gimmick. Yeah. Right, lads, oh. remember when I was last here and we, we devised Poet Lariat? Yes. Oh. Right. Cultaholic homework helper. S.A. Rios. S. A. Rios. <laughs> oh, no. I just, I, I like Does that have to be wrestling? Right. You might not always... The Tempest? Yeah, you might not always like what, what I do when I'm here, but at least I bring some new no, ideas. No, no. S.A. Rios is quality. S.A. Rios, Poet oh. Lariat. It's all good. Um... <laughs> It would be worth doing as well, um, and you know, I know, I know, people will go, but, but questionable sources. Uh, get a Wrestling Observer subscription, even for just a month, and go to the archive, because because for the classic review shows, that's mm. that's a big basis of what we do in terms of research yeah. from the time. Obviously, we cite it with other things and things like that, but it's a great way of you going back and just because because the Observer from that time, because we covered the steroid mm. trial in the classic Raw review, um, it's just filled with uh, quotes from the trial. So oh. that'd be really handy mm. to you Get if you're going to do a contemporary that. source. Yeah, yeah, that's a good shout. That's really. It's good. full of quotes from the trial mm. and and witnesses and stuff like that. Mm. So uh, I think uh, how much is the observer is it like twelve ninety nine a month? I'm not sure, but it's probably worth it for one month. For one you, month, yeah, just yeah. get it and get the issues you need and get away. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and if you can't be bothered for that, a reminder that we are apparently putting out their own version of what happened, which I can't wait are for. Are they? It'll be like the O.J. Simpson, if I did it. Uh. <laughs> if I was ballooned on roids. 
needle needles to say. I got away with it anyway. It's there's there's a documentary coming out about the British wrestling use of steroids called Needles in a Haystack. I often um, oh 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 uh, I often um, this is true. I often mix up uh, Doctor Zahorian. And Andrew Zarian. <laughs> <laughs> Which one's Andrew Zarian? He writes for like The Observer and stuff. He's a oh. wrestling journalist and writer. Yeah. So <laughs> that would be funny if it's like, well, of course he knows who's, <laughs> what was happening. He writes for The Observer. On yeah. the classic Smackdown review this week, uh, Matthew mixes up Dr. Seuss and Dr. Sayus. I still do that to this day. Oh, from... From Planet, Planet of the Apes. Dr. And Dr. Sayus, Dr. Sayus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We sang the whole song. I love you, Dr. Sayus. <laughs> to me, so good. the spelling of Seuss that looks more like Sayus. Oh, can I play the piano anymore? <laughs> of course you can. But I couldn't before. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Sayers, Dr. Sayers. That's so good. That's one of the ones that I didn't find that funny as a child, but then when mm. I watched the battle, I was like, that's so funny. Are you familiar with the Planet of the Apes? Uh, the film or the planet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was wrong. It was Earth, Earth all along. along. <laughs> yes, they've finally really made a monkey. I'll do it again, have we? Yes, yes we, we finally made a monkey. Uh, she finally Leave made a monkey, monkey out of me. I love you, Dr. Say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you say sang it again. <clears throat> Time-wise, sang it the first oh, time. Stop it. We'll mm. sing it for the second time tomorrow. Time is a construct Dr. of human perception. Dr. Sayers. Oh, an old band died. <laughs> How <laughs> do, diddlers? Oh, good. I'm a lapsed WWE fan. It was long previously cancelled by network subscription. I've been getting all my news and updates from your good selves and other news sites. Wow. I decided to make an exception for the Rumble, which has long been my favorite wrestling event. I even decided to wait till the following morning so I didn't have the usual tiredness from staying up till stupid o'clock. Had a boy. Which meant that I made sure to undergo a social media and news blackout to avoid spoilers. I had forgotten about all the glitches and stats with the Dury network. I got to the midpoint of the last Lesnar match when the network crashed altogether. Oh. I was watching by via PlayStation. I had to fast forward 10 seconds at a time, which meant it took ages to get back to where I was in the pay-per-view. I must have completely switched off mentally, as next thing I knew, I was looking at the headlines of a wrestling news site and completely ruined the rest of the event for myself. So my question is, have you lads ever ruined a big reveal slash plotline slash surprise for yourself by mistake? Any answers gratefully received so I know I am not alone at my cack-handed stupidity. Love the show and big ups to you all. Also, all your Irish accents are terrible. <laughs> John from Dublin. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Um, oh, I don't know who's going to do it. Now, I mean, what I'll say to you is um, to save you doing them plus 10, minus 10 on the PlayStation, because I've got it on the PS4, the old yeah. network app. It's not, very, it's not very obvious, but when you press, I think, down, it does highlight the timeline. Mm. But it's not very obvious mm. that it does that. The network is a little bit shonky. Um, just advice for next time. Hmm. I've never had any issues with the Peacock. Sorry. The, the, ah. Oh. Uh, oh. I don't have any issues with the Gunther. I've never had issues with the <laughs> network, uh, and it's good that hear other people have. I have heard uh, heard many people talk about the Peacock issues, so eagerly anticipating that coming over here. Yeah. What were you about to say, Tom? I'm still thinking of mine, John. Oh, okay. Um, I've done it so many times with not just wrestling, like just sports. Like the, yeah. There was one time when I kept something so secret. It was like a Grand Prix or something, and then I was going to watch the highlights that day because it was one like in another part of the world when it was on that night and then the next day they were showing it again and I was like I'm gonna wake up and then I'm gonna avoid the results and then and then you just somehow just absentmindedly I remember just like going on BBC Sport to see something else mm. and it was just there like Lewis Hamilton I was like oh my god I can't believe I've done it and it was just yeah but it, for me it's not often resting because I'm, for my job I so often watch it live that pay-per-views are uh, I'm normally watching them anyway but for other sports it happens all the time, all the time. So yeah, good show. Yeah. How about you? It's got to be something to do with wrestling, but I think I've spoiled it more for people oh. than it's happened to me, and I've not mean meant to. I was being like on Twitter, like, "Wow, what a great result!" And then used to get people going, "Oh, thanks, mate." I'm like, what do you mean? Why are you following me well, then? Stay you, off you, social media then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to go on Twitter. No, you don't. No, that's, <laughs> that's your that's your brain messing with you. Nobody has to go on Twitter. You have to breathe. Yeah. Nobody has to go on Twitter. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, damn it. If you, you so um, mine one that springs to mind with me was WrestleMania thirty, I think WrestleMania thirty. I hadn't watched it live, um, and if memory serves, it was that one. I was going through a breakup at the time, so I wasn't mm. in a very great headspace with stuff, and um, so I hadn't watched it, and I was working the next day. 
And I thought, oh, I'm going to get home and I'll watch it later. Look forward to that. And um, one of my colleagues at the time at the radio station I worked at, who was making banter with me, you know, because he knows he knows I've been a bit sad, came in and went, hey, how about Brock Lesnar beating The Undertaker oh, then? Oh. Oh, I was like, "What?" I said, "Oh, oh yeah, he's, that's, he's like he's uh, cause, cause this guy didn't know anything about wrestling, mm, but he was just trying fire, to." Yeah, yeah and I was, he said, "Yeah, because like he's never been beaten, has he, Undertaker?" And oh. I was like, "Oh, I've not seen it yet." And he was like, "Oh, oh God, were you watching it later?" I said, "Yeah," and they were felt. Well. I was like, "No, honestly, oh. don't worry about it. I oh. I appreciated more than anything else somebody who, mm. when I was feeling low, yeah, was trying yeah, to yeah. offer something that they could connect with me on and bring me into the room. So that, I remember that being spoiled, yeah. but uh, no guilt." Yeah, I did set fire to his car, <laughs> but that's just pally. Yeah, that's yeah. I remember we were watching um, Bandit Combat's Sherlock, and it's I was good, watching it. it. Yeah, but I was watching it with a friend, and there was they she wanted me to watch it with her, and I went, "All right, great." And she was like, "I love Sherlock. I watch every episode. It's my favorite thing. I love all the characters. Sherlock, Sherlock, Sherlock." And so the the, the, the title of the show came up, um, Reichenbach, and I went, "Oh no, no surprises. What happens here?" I says, what? He says, he's going to die. He's like, what? I went, it's right. You said you're a big Sherlock Holmes, but right good back. He's like, what are you doing? It's like, oh. in the box, it's a right. It's like, you, you, how dare you spoil that one? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's very old. There's been thousands of adaptations of it, but I was like, ah, oh, didn't mean to. Sorry about that. I think Cumberbatch is great as yeah. Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, but don't really say I'm a big it. fan and you go, right good back. Yeah, that's so, true. Right good. Right good. <laughs> right good. Does he turn up and read him poems? Yeah. <laughs> Sean goes, I oh, sod this, jumps off the building. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for those wonderful, wonderful questions, queries, and A level help. Yes. <laughs> if you have any of them to give us, please, please, please send them to mailbagalcoholic.com and have a good one. Ah, that was some Reese's Pieces. Evening, lads. Evening. Hello. Long time podcast listener, first time mailbagger. Ooh. <laughs> As it's Royal Rumble season and the fourth anniversary of the podcast. Yeah, it is. Below, oh I have compiled God. some Royal Rumble final fours, Ooh. <sighs> consisting of iconic moments from the mailbag on the podcast from down the years. Yeah. From these final fours, I was wondering which one of the, sorry, which one of you believes to be the most iconic and deserving to go on to headline a WrestleMania? Nice. Hope you're all well, and thank you for all that you do. Your voices have been an often occurring soundtrack in my life for a long time now, and I hope it is for many more. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Ah, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, so Tom. let's go through these. I'm going to read out four. We'll these, are, these are good. These are good. Fastest thought first. There's right. different categories, so I'll go Jack, Tom, me. Jack's stories and people. Uh, Mamadou, Jack's Uber Eats driver, Uber driver, famously phoned live on the podcast in 2018, but sadly didn't <laughs> Did answer. Did ring him? Famously, oh it says it. Carl, Jack's woke taxi driver. He was a nice man. Restaurant laptop couple. <sighs> the man who runs the corner shop, nominated by Jack for the friendly banter <laughs> and japes. Yeah, I haven't provides. seen him for a while. Oh, I'll go winning. for Carl, the woke taxi driver. I'll do the restaurant laptop couple. Yeah, I want rest. I was going to go restaurant laptop couple. They though. do not deserve to headline WrestleMania. <laughs> they certainly do. They're the tag team. I'd love them. Yeah. Yeah. They don't give a damn about your reputation. Uh, yeah. Animals. Todd the Rabbit. Ross. Mr. Happy. Adam. Pablo. Pablo. Tom. Mango and Chutney. Jack. Pablo. I mean, I, I'm going to go for Mango and Chutney, but Todd passed away, sadly, so I feel bad not saying Todd. Todd's in the Hall of Fame. Todd's yeah, all good. Todd's good. Todd's good. I'll go, I've got to go Mango and Chutney. Okay. Oh. 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 Not, yeah, not Pablo. Pablo's so much better. Mango oh, and Chutney. No. Little slugs with no personality. <laughs> <laughs> the mango and Johnny, that little slug. Little slug of personality. <laughs> Plenty of personality. What was it that the other day? Uh, I was like, oh, that's oh, what you great. like, mango. No. And she nearly fell off the set. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like the time where Pablo just stared into my soul for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are a bit younger than Pablo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They'll wait get till they, there. They'll wait till they get older and they yeah. just stare. We figured out. Um, we figured out the other day because because what they tend to do, cats, is they imprint. On one of the owners, like if it's yeah, more people, they'll yeah. imprint them, so they'll just go like, "You're the main one," and I'll kind of mark you as mine. We we've discovered that Alex is imprinted in our house because whenever like Alex is at home today and she's a bit under the weather, so Pablo is following her into every room, mm. and like he'll sit on the so on the sofa arm next to her, mm. and then she went to bed last night, and Pablo followed her into the bed and went on my side of the bed, and uh, he just sat and stared at her. 
Oh. While she went to sleep, so like he does stuff so like he's imprinted on on Alex for that reason, and I think he just stares at me from I, distance. I thought Chutney had done that when I met Mango and Chutney for the first time. Chutney was so like affectionate, and he like came and sat on me straight away. Just lovely, lovely, really good natured cat. Um, but he's does that. He's done that with everyone he's met. So I'm like, oh, well, I thought you were my favorite. I, mean, I thought it was your favorite, but it turns out he's just just happy. When are you vote Pablo then? Because at least well, know. no, I'm going for Mango and Chutney. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, Mango and Chutney, Pablo, Pablo, yeah. Christy. It's only one I've met. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, clothing. Uh, Ross's Rusev tweet t-shirt. Ross's black jeans. Ross's black jeans version 2.0. Ross's summer slam drip. I'm going for Ross's jeans version 2 because that was a game changer. That was, he just nominated, the, he, he bought a pair and they were good. And then he bought another pair because he was so impressed with the first one and he nominated them both. And I, when he, when he, when a version 2 came along, it was like he was like a postmodern like novelist or something. I was like, this has changed the sphere of what we actually do. So I'm going for Ross's jeans version two. Nice. I'm going to summer drip. I think Ross, when he's drippy, is I'll brilliant. go for summer slam drip because one of the things it was the lovely merch we now have it's called the Holic Shop. Oh, Not just a little Teddy, is that the little buddy, yeah, yeah. buddies, yeah. buddy version of that summer slam drip. But blood socks, blood socks. That he used to wear. He used to make his own. Uh, food, <laughs> beef. Ross's, Ross's Vincent Mann impression. Foot long pig and blanket. Ross, Ooh. as he went out in the early hours of Christmas Eve 2018 to source one. I remember that. Uh, Calipos, Adam, who ate five for dinner during a pandemic stream. <laughs> Were they, <laughs> weren't they fruit pastel lollies? Yeah, yeah, hang on. Yeah, Your Honor. They were, I they think, were fruit pastel I lollies. I think they were fruit pastel lollies. Because I used to go to and go, are you okay? Why are you eating this for lunch? That's not your dinner. That's not your yeah, dinner. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's like, you're clearly not. No, I had right? a, cali a calipo for, you know, for variety. I told Alex that, and she said, do you want to just come around for dinner one day? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll give you food. It's all right. And he's like, I'm fine, I'm fine. I remember fruit pastas. Uh, and then garlic bread, Mafu. Just garlic bread. When did I do garlic bread? Because your garlic bread was good. Right, you Peter just like garlic bread. Yeah, yeah. I'm going for garlic bread because it's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's Someone what I did. Someone should do a routine about it. <laughs> could just one. do that, let's garlic bread. Let's Cadbury's thing, great. Tastes the same. That. I'm going to go fruit pastel lolly because to me, it's kind of one of those iconic moments of the lockdown mm. is, is is Adam having fruit pastel lollies. That's an iconic that's not lockdown an icon, moment. That should not be yeah. an iconic moment. You know, that's... That's encouraging up here. You know, that, it's, it's, it's just there like was, when he there just was, tweeted windmills. There was, there, was, there, was, there was several, oh, several iconic moments of the lockdown and it was um, Tiger King. It oh, was yeah. Adam eating fruit pastel lollies and Dark Side Phil's bankruptcy. Like those are the main ah, ah, ah. iconic moments of lockdown for me. So okay, go all right. With them. I agree with two thirds of that. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say foot long pig and blanket because I want one. No, nice. yes. never a chance to get one. That sounds amazing. Oh yeah, questionable nominations and winners. Oh, I see. Uh -oh. Uh, Steve Blackman, Matthew voted this in October 2018 in honor of Black History Month. Yes, really. <laughs> that is mint. That is so good. I stand by that. It was a joke. That is so good. I remember it because that was one of the clips <laughs> I got put out. It was, no more Black History Month, a great black man, Steve. No. We got, away, we left that we in. got away with that. And well, it's a joke. All right, I've right. recently saw, you know. Hey, you can't do that nowadays. Do you remember the two, you remember the two blokes who <laughs> were in the Battle Royal with Braun Strowman, Michael Shea and Colin Jost from SNL? Oh yeah, night. they do like the daily the news thing. Yeah, yeah. and um, I've I've recently found segments on YouTube that they used to do where like once a year they write the jokes for oh, each I've other. I've seen those, yeah, but yeah. not tell each other what the jokes yeah, are going to yeah. be. And all of, Michael Che is a black guy, and all of his jokes for Colin Jost make him sound so racist. It's so funny because then he'll say it and he'll be like, "Oh, cuts back to Matt Lachey going, wow, Colin, that's really yeah. racist, but <laughs> it's really funny." All uh, right, so woman. Was, Oh, I forgot about this. Woman who bathes with her 11 and 12 year old sons, Ross, after seeing the weird story on This Morning. Yeah, Ross used to love This Morning. Yeah. I, That's the takeaway from these that. These are like <laughs> bad memories that I'm, I'd, I'd purge out my brain. Jack's schoolmate, James, oh, yeah. Ross, a week after Jack's telling of the story, as he rightfully suggested, it was one of the best moments of the podcast ever and Hall of Fame worthy. That's so early on now. Remind me of well, James. We, we had oh, nothing going on. We had nothing going on at that point. Enough. This was I one of the early highlights. We, we got asked not to bring up James. Fair enough. I should have. James who? There we go. He was a guy in my school <laughs> and had a medical issue in the classroom. I won't specify what. And the teacher thought he was messing about. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. He survived. He's fine. He's all right. Most of them. <laughs> he, he got away with it. Yeah, once we picked him out of the combine. Yeah, he can't play the piano anymore. <laughs> but he could before. 
<laughs> Ross's lack of toenail on his big toe. Oh. Uh, uh, Ross, an actual. Oh, uh, great. Thanks for this. I've seen it. Have you? In living color, yeah. Oh. He's done caught a person, hasn't he? Yeah. All right, so. What have you got, Jack? Well, what a, what a murderer's row to pick. <laughs> oh, because I feel bad about him becoming like part of the podcast legacy. I've got to go for James. No, he said his surname again. <laughs> I'll go for James from my primary school, who I've not seen since year six when we all left, to be fair. so Primary school James seems the only <laughs> the only suitable answer, really. Yeah, you can't be nominating woman who baths with kids. No. I don't want to nominate or bring that up ever again. Yeah, J- Port, sorry, James. James, yeah, James. 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 Uh, pandering. Nominations that could be <laughs> deemed as such. <laughs> <laughs> Retail workers at Christmas, my food. <laughs> the stand by that. nomination of shop workers at Christmas. No, no, no. Uh, he won. Yeah, I won that. No, I, I stand by that. The concept of Christmas, rock boo. <laughs> concept of Christmas. Retail workers at the start of the pandemic, my food. Hey, I stand by that as well. And Captain Tom Ross. Oh, that one was way more blatant. Yeah, <laughs> that's pandering. That's pandering. So are we choosing the yeah. most panderous? Yes. Oh, because I thought the most deserving. Well, I was going to say Captain Tom because he's a single entity, like you can picture him. Because the whole idea of the headlining mania. So we're thinking Captain Tom. Yeah. Are we saying that Captain Tom doesn't deserve it? I think, yeah. Well, are we saying <laughs> that do NHS workers it. don't deserve it? Oh, no. No, let's just say who's the most pandering. So which one was the most pandering? Yeah. The concept of Christmas. <laughs> yeah, con- concept universal. of Christmas. Yeah. I'll leave Captain Tom alone and just say, yeah, the concept of Christmas. That, that's a, I haven't got a Hall of Fame big this week, Henry. Concepts. Huh. <laughs> There's lots of them. The concepts of the chop, Jack. The concept of shop. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. The concept of music, Jack. (laughs) Music. (laughs) The concept of the Colorholic Hall of Fame, Jack. Oh, God, it's a bit meta. That was class. The concept of integrity, Ross, in relation to Andrew wanting to work with Triple Jump. Oh, yeah. Ross really kicked off because Andrew had originally applied for Triple Jump and Ross really took offense to that. I couldn't tell if he was... I couldn't... Like like most of the Royal characters, what's real? It was was proper shades of grey. I didn't know what was... Facey, healy, healy face. Did he actually... Get angry about that. No. Okay, thank you, Rick. Well, leave it ambiguous. I think it's better like Hard that. Hard to read. Mm, like Braille. <laughs> uh, so, I remember the concept of music, and I was not like annoyed, annoyed, but like, really? I was as well, secretly. Yeah. Um, I'll go for the concept of the Hall of Fame podcast. Oh, that's just... Uh, yeah, that's really meta. The concept <laughs> of the Hall of... No, Where's... no, 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 the concept of music. <laughs> what? Like, the concept what? of vibrations causing... Audio concept of music. Yeah. Yeah. Just, what can yeah, I say? Yeah. I'm a musical guy. Hall of Fame, yeah. that bad boy. Yeah. Iconic nominations. Oh, the Colorholic Christmas Party. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Yeah, that was a good. One. Irishman Ross met in Morris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Ross, Ross yeah. met a guy, and just it was just. A, I, think, I can't exactly remember what happened, but the story of Ross having to stumble his way through this social interaction with this very charming guy, apparently. And yeah, did he didn't see him a second time and blank him or something? I didn't. Ross like oh. try and hide from him. Yeah, he tried to hide yeah. from him. I think because he didn't want to talk to him. Yeah, just because that job. He's like, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> but then he did have to. Oh, I need to remember what exactly that. We'll ask him next time. Yeah. Uh, Matthew falling off chair, Jack mm, immediately great, after it happened. Great. That's absolutely fair enough. Uh, still water, Jack immediately after Matthew nominated sparkling water. Yeah, I'll go for still water. The better um, of the two mediums. Yeah, still water. Can I, can I nominate sparkling water? <laughs> that, yeah, I'll, I'll accept Get still that. water into the Hall of Fame. Again, I think we're in the first. No, there's no way it did. Because I'm still getting people going, why do you drink sparkling water, you freak? <laughs> why Why is Why is there a malfunction with drinking sparkling water? Because uh, not everyone likes it. I like it. I like it. I like it. And it. people also go, wow, ooh, Tory water. I want huh. What? I hate yeah, if you, if you, if you buy the ones, lose weight. The ones really are like 135. If you buy, you know, the big two litre ones that are 35 mm. pence from Lidl, then it's not oh, very wet. It's a good way of losing weight. I hate yeah. it. It's gross. <laughs> I'm glad you don't like it. It means it's more for me to drink. Okay. Honorary inductees inducted without a vote. Marcus Rashford. Oh, yeah. Fair. Ronda Rousey for victory over Wrestle Talk. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it's like, what the hell did we do that? That was, big, right. that was a big moment. Titus World Slide. All right. Oh, and Big Mama Botch. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, I've got to go for Big Mama Botch. Big Mama Botch. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, keep, keep my life happy. Thank you very much. No longer call him Mrs. Botch. Thank you. <laughs> Anna Pacitti, nominated or or nominated by uh, Daz Simpson. Samson. Daz Samson, Matthew Wright, <laughs> Mojo Rawley, or Graham, the man who pooed on another man on a night out. <laughs> Not an actual nomination, but a funny story that was told on the podcast. 
Oh, I have no memory of that. Was I, I not on that week? I don't remember. I don't remember it either. Corey, I'm the man who pooed another bloke. He's making this up. <laughs> Do you remember this? No. Remember. Should I ask him? Is he there? Yeah. No. I'd... Okay. Yeah, can't ask him. I mean, I, 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 I don't remember it, but I am. I, I can in my head. I can hear Adam telling the story. Yeah. I can hear Adam talking I can about auto fill the story in my head. The man who pooed. Uh, Matthew Wright. I remember. Yeah. That was a good. Um... I remember. Actually, sorry. We'll hear Jack Hang talking. His name's not Graham. His name's not... Okay, right. come on in and uh, shed some light on the matter. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Pacitti. Adam, Adam, a wild Pacitti appears. Yeah. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. How's it going? All right, so um, it's Reese's Pieces, and mm, it's um, Hall of Fame picks Reese's Pieces. And this is the Adam Pacitti yeah. category. So there's four of them. Sure. So Adam Pacitti, nominated or mentioned by Adam Pacitti. Does Samson. Yeah. Matthew Wright. Bojo Rawley, and I'm just going, as it says here, Graham, in quote marks, a man who pooed on another man on a night out. Yeah. Not an actual <laughs> nomination, but a funny story that was told on the podcast. Yeah, I do not my, remember this. It's my favorite story to tell. I, I, Any time that I meet new people, I end up telling this story. His name's not Graham. I, sh I should, I, I did obscure his I, I identity. Um, but you, I think you were on the podca podcast when we talked about it. So Graham uh, was an old friend of mine who no longer speaks to us. Um, who was who had some pretty outlandish behavior when he would get drunk he wasn't a good drunk at all i remember like he's thrown his shoes at me before he once went outside um uh, weather spoons with his testicles exposed and asked a police officer what time the pub shuts and then they noticed came back in and gave him like a, i think it's called a dispersal order so you get sent away from um from the, the town for the weekend but once on um it was either christmas eve or box Boxing Day. I think it was Boxing Day. We were all in the pub and there was a bit of sort of an argument between our table and the table next to us. And it was all really sort of lame stuff. It was something to do with somebody was wearing some horrible trousers or something like that. And it got, it didn't get heated, but it was just a bit awkward while we were there. And then once the pub shut, we went outside and the, the I almost said his name there, Graham. <laughs> Goodness me, <laughs> not, not getting sued again. Uh, Graham um, started uh, started arguing with the, the leader of their group. Um, and there was a bit of back and forth. And then it wasn't really going anywhere. So Graham started grinding up against this guy's leg. And the idea was oh, either, I can't quite figure it out. Uh, he's a loose cannon. But the idea was to either rile him up enough to start an actual fight. Or he would, the, the other guy would get, upset with him and then sort of out himself as a homophobe despite the fact that obviously nobody really would want some random grinding up against the leg. but the bloke was just like what are you what are you doing mate what are you doing um and so to ramp it up a notch um graham it's hard doing that graham pulled his trousers down and started grinding and dancing up against this guy's leg and then maybe 10 15 seconds later just starts walking down the hill he's gone um and we we all look confused and the the guy looked down, looked back at us, and went, "Your mates just pooed down my leg." Oh my god! And he what? He wasn't grinding; he was defecating on this man. And yeah, we we just stared in disbelief. We went, "Yeah, he has. Yeah, he's he's, he's pooed on your leg, there, mate." <laughs> uh, and honestly, just a big smear of feces all the way down this guy's leg. And we we were just like, "Well, we're not gonna we're not gonna have a fight or anything. You got poo on you." Yeah. Um, and meanwhile, Graham is running down the street. So we sort of chase after him. He tries to get in my mate, my mate's car at the, the time. And, and that guy, my other friend, just goes, no, you've got, you got poo on your bum. You're not coming in the car. Um, we get to the bottom of the hill. And then Graham all of a sudden pegs it back up the hill, picks up his poo, Oh. Put, puts it in the, the nearby bin outside Weatherspoons um, because of, and this is a genuine quote, DNA evidence. <laughs> 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 and it's just the, mo it's the most ridiculous, crazy thing that's ever, <laughs> ever happened. <laughs> the night ended with him eating... I, it was either oh, my God. No, 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 no. Cat, cat food. It was either cat or dog food. Oh. It would have been cat food because my man is a cat. Uh, smashing a bottle outside and then running home uh, shirtless. He's, uh, I've got so many Graham stories, uh, but that's certainly my favorite.
That's amazing. Yeah, isn't he, it just amazing? Is he still running that accountancy firm or not? <laughs> he's he's settled down. He's a great guy. He's, he's a genuinely, <laughs> it, it, if you it, back in the day, if you got him when he was drunk, he could be a bit of a handful of poo, <laughs> <laughs> a handful of poo. But um, he's he's a really nice bloke, and he's mellowed out now, and he's he's got he's got family and everything. And fair play to him, he's really turned his life around. We all have our demons, <laughs> don't we? His, his were poo shaped. Incredible. Well, thank you. Thanks very much. Hey, Thanks thank for you. having me. Have a cheers, cheers. everybody. Have a cheers. cheers. Well, it's... <laughs> bring, bring him round. Bring some gloves. Great. Oh. It's Gobby Graham. Yeah, yeah, I'll go it's for Graham. Graham. Yeah, I'll pick a Matthew Wright. <laughs> <laughs> DNA evidence. <laughs> I have, I halfway through, I realised that I had heard the story, but I hadn't heard that last bit. Uh, really That's good. amazing. It's like a director's cut. That was, that yeah. Incredible. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, bonus, as if we can follow that. <laughs> Four infamous mailbag moments. Uh, Jack's enemy, Jenna, who wrote to the mailbag in the very early days. Oh. I remember this. Shooting on Jack about she various issues, me, yeah. including rest of the week, etc. And continued to wind it up every week as Jack bit on the bait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What happened to her? Dunno. <laughs> Jack had a kill. Just stop. Just stop. <laughs> just stop messaging him. <laughs> no, I'm Graham, just... you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, she just stopped. I felt like, I felt it was like very sort of playground. It was like, yeah, yeah. She won't. Be... She won't be bothering anyone anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. The man who kissed. <laughs> the man who kissed his cousin. Saga that rolled on the mailbag for weeks. Oh my 2019. god. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like this is your life, or <laughs> these, these like I remember this. I'm like, oh, this is your life. <laughs> um, Macho Man, Miss Elizabeth Hogan. So like, yes, we only brought about that a few weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, we? we got an update on that. Yeah, yeah, and everything's better with puppets. Matthew's acquaintance from uni who recounted the story. Uh, yeah, cheers, pal. I'll go for Jenna. Yeah, I'm intrigued by Jenna. Yeah, yeah. she just wouldn't I mean, say stuff like, "Hey again, lads, love the podcast." Matthew and Ross, really funny. Jack continues to like devastate me every time he says <laughs> so it's just like it's quite nasty stuff but she it wasn't either, actually either nasty. fancies you or is envious of you thank you that tends to be how these things work normally mm. or, okay it's a fine life between love and hate yeah yeah, yeah. anyway I'll nominate Jenna anyway she stopped so <laughs> yeah I'll obviously yeah I'm going Jenna as well I'm obviously picking Jenna as well hope she's alright yeah. Yeah. Everything's, yeah. right. everything's alright at home doing alright Jenna message in for all time's sake if yeah. you yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, she's like yeah I still hate you yeah it'll be funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, well. There you go. That was a Graham. big bag of something. <laughs> big bag of something. Thank you, Tom, was he called? Or was that the mailbag dude? Tom. Oh, was Tom, was Tom, Tom sent Reese's Pieces in, wasn't it? it I've scrolled a lot, a lot up. Uh, uh? A lot up. Yeah, it was Tom. It was Tom. Tom. Thank you, Tom. Yes. Thank you, Tom, for that wonderful list. If you have any Reese's Pieces, or wrist piss, whatever you want to call it, please, please, please send them to mailbag at cultaholic. Dot com. Mm. Make sure you dispose of the DNA evidence before you yeah. Wrist piss or Graham's poos. <laughs> <laughs> want, you want, oh, Read the same Ra Graham's poos. <laughs> uh. It's Cultaholics. The question. Oh. Ah. Mm. Uh. Still thinking about Graham. <laughs> It's really bad. My dad's name is Graham, and it's... Oh. Yeah. Do you visualize your dad I'm visualizing doing my this? dad doing all this stuff. Oh. My dad doesn't even drink, so... Uh, <laughs> I don't know a Graham, so I'm just envisioning Father Jack. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I had an Uncle Graham who would just do a Donald Duck impression. <laughs> And that, with that's his mouth? I, that's I, no, oh, that was no, his with thing. The, no, with the poo he got on the floor. That was his thing. He just did Donald Duck impressions. Good. And gave you like a wet willy. Oh, and no, swimming. none of that. None of that. that. But I can also do a Donald Duck impression, so I'm just saying. Can you? Yeah. Come on, then. Can you do one? Oh, my God. Oh, that's that actually nice. really good. Can you do a Donald Duck um, can you do impression of Donald Duck doing an impression of Joe from Family Guy? <laughs> Come on, you got it. <laughs> no, I can't. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> Give no. one more go. Give one more go. I think you've got it in you. I can't say words as Donald Duck. I just make noises. That's oh, okay. Make the noise. It sounds Wait, okay. Daffy. Hey, I'm, doing da I'm not doing Daffy. Or no, Donald. that's Donald. I'm doing Donald. Donald. That is Donald. 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 Yeah, yeah. Daffy's just got a human voice. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I can't. That's really all right. Can't. That's all right. Thanks, guys. Halfway there. Different on the prayer. Rest in podcast. Uh, <laughs> that, last, last thing we'll leave you at. Can you laugh like Seth Rollins as Donald Duck? <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly what I wanted. 10 on 10. This week's big question. Uh, 
Can Jack laugh like <laughs> Seth Rollins? Tell you what, though, Good Fraser point. can also do Donald Duck, a better Donald Duck impression than me. Fraser, I'm not the best. I'm not. That's not even the best one in the office. Oh. I know. <laughs> Fraser wants. He's not even the best drummer in the Beatles. I, I, I used to think I was alright at impressions, but Fraser's actually. I've got a. a, a he's a better impressionist than I am. Mm. And he uh, once, I caught him what he was doing. We were talking about impressions and stuff, and then like he left it for like two minutes. Then he was like, "Do you like Scooby Doo?" And I was like, yeah, yeah. But then I just left it because I knew that he wanted me to ask him, like, oh, can you? Turns out he does a dead on Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Does he? But the, the sneaky he way he loves Scooby Doo. He's really big on it, yeah. That's his thing. Yeah, yeah. It's his, okay. it's his wrestling. Tom's thing is Sonic. Mm. Graham's thing is Poo. <laughs> and Fraser <laughs> loves Scooby Doo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this week's big question <laughs> Will Shaman Man return to WWE? <laughs> I'm Ever. really sad that Ross is not here for this big question. Me too, me too. He's like, I took a week off and the Shane McMahon news happened. Yeah. yeah. So Shane's anyway. away. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, after a, an awful time trying to put together an awful Royal Rumble uh, backstage going, right, hear me out. What if I eliminate Brock Lesnar? <laughs> and uh, Vince McMahon got fed up with him, trying to yeah. shoe all himself into everything, shooting down ideas where he didn't look the brightest. And Vince just went, you know what, just go home. Yeah. How would you eliminate Brock Lesnar? Psh, psh, psh. Jabs. All right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> just jabs. The and... jab. He put him in a, he put him in a, in a Gamora lock, obviously. Yeah. Choke him out of the rumble. <laughs> Obvs. Um, are we going to see him again, though? Um, will I see you again? again. So... I think that depends because anything can happen, as we know. But I, at the minute, Vince seems to be controlled by various sorts, like forces around him, right? So he used to always yeah, be the, like the puppeteer. That's yeah, the body it around, used to, yeah, it used to always be. Like, <laughs> it used to always be like the yes men would get close to Vince, but now it's as if they've taken. So Bruce Pritchard's got a lot of influence, it seems, backstage now at the minute. After coming back in out of nowhere, he was on a podcast like not long ago, and then suddenly, um, so there's hope for us. Also, um, Nick Khan, what's going on there? Because he's like, this is really the new son. This is really nasty. But he's like those like con men who befriend old widows, and like then they get them to sign oh, over shipment. there. Why? Why ship? Because <laughs> why ship? No, he doesn't kill them. No, he doesn't kill. He just, he just gets the fleeces them. them out of their money when they die. Oh, <laughs> he's like. Well, um, Shipman got that as well. <laughs> His mind just mm. went. Oh, like Shipman, yeah. He's like Sorry. Dennis and Only Sunny Americans when they go to that like... golf resort. They go to that golf resort, and he's just trying to hit on all the older women. So you can get their inheritance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like that. So not like Shipman. Not like Shipman. And he's just, and he's going, and he's just like, you know, Nick Khan's not going, Britain's Shane's greatest serial killer. <laughs> as, as far as we know. We mean he killed know. 150 contracts last year. No. Oh. He kills oh. dreams. Three, two years, yeah. He kills dreams. Yeah. There we go. And we should preface this, as Tom pointed out. It is the eve of the annual, what is it? I'm getting this right. The quarter? It's, it's the quarterly... The quarterly... Uh, annual. Yeah, it's, quarterly, the, it's the uh, quarterly investor's call. Investor's call. So ah. this is where they'll say how much money they've earned. Yeah. Oh, um, God. Oh, God. Is that... Yeah, that is... that. At the, at the time of recording, that is happening in 25 minutes time. So by the time we've done this, we're going to find this out. Be released. This is no, when no, typically no, people have been released. No, so. No, no. so we may... Can they hire Shane just to release him for this? Mm. <laughs> Do we put a little pause here where we can roll what happened? <laughs> yeah, like maybe. you know how how, yeah. a, how a sitcom will do like executive producer yeah and everybody pauses as long as so we, we all pause in a wacky we, in no a wacky no pose. in a serious way I was going to say because we don't want to make light of it no no old jokes are but I think true. yeah but maybe we could leave that for an update if anything's happened now and it might not have so I'm not going to leave that gap too long yes that's but, a good shout yeah. it's there in case we need yeah. it and we can I would add, like are you in in the morning yes we can always just record a little thing yeah, we can always do that thing. Right. As long as uh, it's not wacky. Make it really wacky. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Shane McMahon, like it seems unheard of to think of a McMahon will never return to WWE. It does, doesn't it? The amount of times I think where he has gone, f I think twice now he's gone forever and <laughs> then rocked up again. Like he left. Um, but he left of his own... Yeah, he left, to go, he left to go and pursue other things. He go went do to other... China, business in China or something? He did some stuff for other sports. He did some stuff for like mm. um, mixed martial arts and things like that. Yeah. Um, he got hench. He got hench, yeah. didn't he? He became the best in the world. He appeared for three seconds in Rollerball. Oh, he did he? He did. That's okay. a good shout. And a nice acting credit as well. I, film. I oh. do think we haven't seen the last of Shane McMahon as part of WWE in some way, shape or form. Without being too morbid, 
do you think that'll be before or after Vin- Vince? S- Vince is no longer in charge yeah. anymore. Before, before, I think Vince yeah. will get back. Okay, I think well, and I don't think I don't think they will consider him in a professional behind the scenes role anymore. Mm. I think if he comes back, it'll be as part of maybe a, maybe a one-off bit or a story. Okay, Shane may try and go. Actually, while I'm here, let me work with all these people, uh, and they'll just go. Now, nah, cheers, bye, bye. Yeah, <laughs> get yourself away. There's your paycheck. Happy well, because days. you've gone for that one, I'll then opt for Shane will be back, but not until. However. Vince is no longer in charge of the company. Okay. Because then, mm. surely, it'll pass to Stephanie. Yes. Or Nick Khan, <laughs> if he manages to... If, if Nick Khan becomes... If Nick Khan somehow is in charge and then sells WWE, then I don't know what will happen. I feel like Nick Khan but, is already whispering in Vince's ear like Voldemort saying, Stephanie isn't doing a very good yeah. job. Oh, I thought I was going to go with uh, like Worm Tongue from... Oh, even better. Worm Tongue from Lord of the Rings? Even better. A second Lord of the Rings reference on here. Yeah. Oh. But uh, I, I think that... If it goes to Stephanie and Shane, possibly, then he'll be back, obviously. But if it's Stephanie, she'll get him back in. She she'll bring him back. Yeah. For a main event with Triple H at WrestleMania. <laughs> uh, <sighs> I feel bad for Triple H, man. He's had a bad year so far. It's a rough time. He's had a bad... Triple H is bad year. Triple H, <laughs> yeah. Because he, he was... It's like karma, isn't it? He was undoing all of the... He was writing all of his prior wrongs, burying everyone. Now he was being really selfless and booking well. And it's all been taken yeah. away. It's actually quite... It could be a Shakespearean play, that. There Triple is H. something in it, isn't there? Levesque. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen McBeth. Yeah. 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 Like that. Yeah, I think Shane is only going to do WWE. Only. Literally impossible to imagine him doing anything else at this point in his life. Yeah. It re- really is one long episode of succession now. I need to watch Who that. is going to take ownership? Mm. Of, uh... I think if anyone... If any McMahon was going to try and cut, put a cat amongst the pigeons and turn up on AEW, Shane is the most likely to. Yes. He's the wild card of the McMahon family. But I don't think he will either. I don't think he will. But imagine if he... We talked about it at the start. Imagine yeah, if he there's something quite tantalizing about that. But you know what? At least he got to finally see his dream. He tried doing an 06 of having the Jackass crew involved in the WWE <laughs> in a non-embarrassing fashion. <laughs> Did he want that? Yeah, that's mm. his idea. It was the Jackass. Uh, the maybe two. Yeah, then the Marga happened. They went, get F. No, they're not going to be involved in this because they already did the SummerSlam poster with them buried in the sand. Mm. The Marga. They went, uh, no, we're not going to do that, yeah, Shane. How, that was a horrible idea. How, and here he is. It's last appearance of WWE Maybes. There is a Knoxville and the, and the crew. Yeah. Wee man in a broken table. Ha. Ah. What do we think? Because um, it's okay. There, there's lots to, to laugh about with Shane McMahon. There's lots of little moments that make us cringe and curl up a bit inside. What is a favorite Shane McMahon moment in WWE? uh, For me, it's the match with Steve Blackman when he climbs the scaffold and then falls off. What a bump. What a moment. I know he didn't land on the floor, but what a moment. Uh, Mine is test, lover or lever. Mm. SummerSlam 99. Mean Street Posse coming out, and I think it's Pete Gart. No, it's a big guy. I think it's Joey Abs, actually. Joey Abs going, hey, me and Stephanie, we used to date. You know, why don't you come up back with me? And J- Steph's like, it was one date, and I did it as a favor to you. Hey, I'll, 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 I'll probably Rollins, take you back. <laughs> you know, and all this stuff there. And Tess like, no, I love her, and I'm going to get a huge push, and nothing bad can happen in my career uh. after this. And just wonderfully worked. What if he put together Tess going, wow, I can't wrestle, but I can fight you back when he knew what he was capable of doing. Fantastic. Such That's a great character. Great X-Punk work. shirt they used to have when he was fighting with oh. X-Pac. Oh. I've thought of a better one, but I'll let Tom go first in case it's his. Because I was stuck between two. Uh-oh. Potentially either, and you mentioned it briefly there, uh, the Shame Man X pop match from WrestleMania 15. Okay. Because as I was yeah. coming back into wrestling, I was a lapsed fan for several years. And I came back around February of 1999. Ah. I said to Al Snow, we were, we were there chatting the other day, I said the one thing that brought me back was watching Al Snow and Harker Holly fight in the Mississippi yeah, yeah. River. And I went, I love this. I want to stay for this. Fair. Got to tell him on Desert Island Graps, which is available on the podcast Ooh. feed now. That's um, lovely. And did you say, yeah, then, and WrestleMania 15, maybe not watch for a few more months. <laughs> I stayed with it because like 15 could do no wrong in my eyes. Obviously, historically, it's different. But yeah. that Shane McMahon x pot match... I remember the build to that, and it was when Shane McMahon was like this just cowardly champion. Like he 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 was he was 
he ran re- like he stole the European title from from X Pac, and then was just like parading around with the belt, running away at the chance of every fight, and then just getting his comeuppance. Hopefully, getting his comeuppance at WrestleMania 15, and then obviously the the the, the turn that that shocked my mm. world and Triple H pedigreed X Pac mm. um, was just all beautifully done, yeah. beautifully done. And then he gifted the title to Midian. Because he retired it originally, didn't he? And then he oh, gifted it yeah. to Midian. Midian, well, found, Midian it found it. Hey, look at this. I can mm. have it if you want. All right, what great. was your other one? Um, it was going to be Shane McMahon, Kurt Angle. Yeah, quality. Oh, that's yeah. probably his King best of the Ring match. Two thousand one. It? It's probably Shane's best match. Maybe he had a that's few. Good. He had a few. Oh, you best know. match. His one with AJ Styles mm. was good, mainly because yeah. of AJ, but it was still good. I've, I've, why did I choose anything else? I've seen him jump off the cell in person. I was there when he jumped mm. off the cell. But that, but that Steve Blackman, That's Shane McMahon one is a special one because that was the first biggest fall. Oh yeah, okay. That Shane did, and then Blackman followed him after, and that was like a yeah, big, yeah. that was a big moment for Blackman oh, as and well. And he did uh, Big Show. Yeah, he did. Uh, and then Judgment Day. They did to everybody. Pretty Unfortunately, well. I'm going to have to go thing. for the the Undertaker one just because I saw it. I remember mm. me and Sam always say like we looked around, everyone was filming it, and we were as well, but. Not looking at it through well, everyone wants to see it with their own eyes, so everyone's filming it, but looking under their phones because it's like you've got to capture this on video, but can't miss what's actually gonna mm. happen. But it was genuinely scary. I was like, this is high, like he's actually gonna hurt himself. It was class. Um, then it all went downhill from there. Um <laughs> but he's had some moments, like definitely. He yeah. really, really has. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna pretend that he's like, oh he's rubbish, he's rubbish. It's just him coming back and going, Yeah, I'm that's right. I'm hard as nails, Shane, mate. Mm. But command's like, no, no, we liked you when you were he didn't think you were, you know. When he was, when he was like a coward, yeah. there was yeah. a, when there was a cowardliness to him that he just kept, but he just kept surviving. We liked you when you thought you were Laurel and Hardy, not Tom Hardy. Oh, nice. Come on with that. Good shout. Like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, and 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 like with with so many of them, like the Blackman one especially, like that was a that was Steve Blackman feeling with a McMahon, mm. and it weirdly felt like an elevation for Steve Blackman. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. There's a lethal weapon, and Shane's like, I can take you on. He gets the sticks out. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Some good moments there. Yeah. Some good moments there from yeah. a man who may probably very yeah. likely be back in WWE. Leave the point. muck memories over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he can come back and do a little poo in the ring and go, oh, You've heard of Shane McMahon. I'm Graham McMahon. <laughs> 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 really disappointed. Oh, really disappointed in myself. That is definitely the way we are ending this Thank lengthy, you. girthy podcast. Special shout outs to the patron producers Mark Leslie, Reno2200, Noah Anderson, and Akajua. 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 Akajua 2. Thank you very, very much for your wonderful support. If you also want to be a wonderful supporter on the patron of the producers or vote in the mailbag, you can of course go to patreon.com forward slash mail. Oh, no. I've said the wrong thing, haven't I? Oh, I said Hall of Fame. I said Mailbag. Yeah, I, I'll stop myself there. You've got this. Oh, you've got it. Don't I worry. I screeched like Sonic going near a cliff. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash. Patreon.com forward slash. The Hall of Fame. Mailbag. Mailbag at colleague.com. Yes. I was so close. No, you've talked. You did all right. You did all right. You know what? Me me and you have basically been outscorched by Jack this episode. Oh, without a doubt. We'll take a worthy second place there. Ten points to Griffin, guys. So, Jack, when you're... When you're not rinsing your colleagues, what else are you doing <laughs> this week? What are you going to say? Uh, I will be... <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a new series in the works, which I've done two Ooh. episodes of now, but they're both currently being edited. Um, but hopefully they'll be good. They're kind of more standalone type things. It's not like Wrestlers of the Week. It's going to be a little bit more focusing on one particular thing per mm. episode, but there's a common theme. Um, so look out for that whenever they're up on the channel. I'm not quite certain when. And um, apart from that, just general stuff. Uh, Twitch with Owen at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. Ooh. Up the Fabes. Up the Fabes. Absolutely. What about Tom? Uh, the uh, classic SmackDown review drops tomorrow. It's Matthew and I talking about yeah. uh, SmackDown from 2001. We're back. We're on the way to No Way Out 2001. Uh, if you haven't done so already, do check out uh, Al Snow on Desert Island Graps from mm. when, last mm. Wednesday. Uh, coming next Sunday, uh, a wrestling, wrestling Curiosities is back. Oh. And, and I was just intrigued to go, who was one of the first wrestlers to use like a steel chair? Oh, so I did some digging. Were we able to find out. I've been reading about a guy called Wild Bull Curry, who was okay. one of kind of the like like he was around roughly the same time as as the Sheik, probably predates him just a little touch. Kind of considered and, and almost forgotten in time as one of the first hardcore wrestlers, and his life is incredible. Mm. So I have had a real deep dive into him, and you're going to get a podcast all about this guy that just caused riots everywhere he went, uh, in in just turned wrestling upside down. 
uh, back in the day. So that's coming up, Wrestling Curiosities. It's an audio podcast documentary, and that'll be on the podcast feed next Sunday. Otherwise, wrestling news throughout the week, classic Raw review with Jackins, classic Nitro, with, or Jackins, our writer from coldholic.com. Mm. He is a, a, a beautiful soul. Uh, the classic Nitro review with Sam Driver is back as well. It's It's all steam ahead. Woo! On the Cultaholic podcast. We're on the feed. road to WrestleMania. On the road to WrestleMania. We're on the road to WrestleMania. Yeah. And hopefully a working leg next week. We oh, can only yeah. That'll be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All How that about to you? come. How about and you? Not, uh, that. And also, <laughs> me and Mama Muscles. I've done a little thing. Not sure when it's going to be out yet, but we're discussing the Tekken live action film. Oh, oh, good. oh that's nothing but the good. best for me. Like <laughs> only the best will do the lose. Exactly. So until next time, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Take care. Make sure you drink plenty of water, sparkling or otherwise. This has been Jat. This has been Tom. This has been Matthew. Going to end the show by pointing out the world famous sign and saying that expression that we all know and love. One, two, three. Graham, Graham did a poo. <laughs> Graham did the poo. <laughs>